Oh man, that's intense. That's intense. I feel like I should be starting a song or something. Jeez. Well, hello. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening? That was that was crazy. I usually only play that before the thing. Oh, I got the mic right on my mouth now, so you're gonna hear it all. Yeah, there it is. Hey, I, I I think I got everything worked out for uh being able to go over stuff like cams and everything like that. Everything always gets weird, but whatever. Figure it out. Anyway, how's it going? Thanks for coming by. Hi. How's it going? What's 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 happening? First question of the night. Did you check did you did you check Steam? Yes, I did. Thank you, Runison. Appreciate that. I've been very interested in that game. I like the trailer. And I was checking it out. I very much appreciate it. Keeping the dream alive, I see. Very much appreciate it indeed. Okay, I assume I'm coming in loud and clear. Oh, I was gonna start some music. How about this? I don't know how long this is gonna go. Faster than I remember. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna slow down the videos. Oh well, I'll do that next time. There's always something. So yeah, tonight I just kind of wanted to just hang out for a few minutes and say uh, hi, and maybe just talk about some of the stuff that I've I've done in the new setup in terms of uh, what's what's the, what the biggest differences are, and I want to be able to walk around and and show you some stuff. So I'm thinking I should be able to do that with this camera. We'll see. This is one of the guitar cameras right here it's a uh, it's a c920 web camera and then uh what i did was i just took the usb cable that is the camera and i cut it and then soldered it shorter because when i first started using the guitar neck wireless cameras i used the whole cable and i i can't even believe i did this but what i would do is i would run the cable down the headstock and then down the whole neck and so, like, I would actually change the shape of the neck of the guitar, and uh, it it was ridiculous. And I and I taped it. I taped it on the guitar neck with electrical tape, so that that wonderful uh, sticky uh, electrical tape residue uh, over time uh, got on that, and it was great. Wait, hold on. Hold on one second. I, there was a cable. Hold on. I don't even, dude, where is even, hold on. Hey, I'm going to take you with me. This is awesome. I need my phone flashlight. I lost signal to something. All right. <clears throat> Let me see here. So... I know. Yeah, it's plugged in right there, and then that right there comes out here. Oh, well, I guess that's what happens when you don't pay attention to what cables you're plugging in and whatnot. So where does this cable go? Well, it definitely goes this way. Okay, could it be this? No, that's something completely unrelated. I guess this is turning into a tech stream. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, so it's definitely... Yeah, it has to be this one then. Guess we'll see. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, sorry about that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Uh, so anyway, so... Uh, this cable, uh, it, it, it now stays on the headstock, and then this cable plugs into this, which is a, uh, I, sh I should have put a light on here, huh? Here, maybe I'll just turn the, uh, turn the strobe up and blast myself out. That'll be fine. I think it's this strobe. Nice. Okay, as you can see, this is a cable here. God. Uh, what was that? Hey, motion, what's going on? What am I even doing? 
56 months. Check that out. Motion, thank you so much for the 56 months in a row. Much appreciated indeed. Make sure that I'm going to the right, the right place here. Where even am I going? There it is. Hey, what's going on, Motion? Thank you very much for that. <laughs> what's up, Kid Vet? Long time no see. Other, what's happening? PJ, what's up? Skeleton, hello. Murdoch is back. Audio file, hello. What's up, four and four and four and four? Can I say hi to Audio Geek? Oh, we got two audios in here. That's what's going on here. Eastland, what's happening? Hello, Linux. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyway, so this, this, <laughs> this, this camera is a C920, and it plugs into this, which is... The, oh, I was going to actually turn it up a little bit. Here. Oh, you know what I could do? This is so funny. I actually... What I did do was... Uh, I... I unplugged this light because I was worried about that wasn't TOS, was it? I hope not. I have to follow through on this or I'm gonna not know where anything is anymore. TOS There it is. Okay. Let me let this guy come on over and then I'll I'll just move it over because I'm not using it right now. And it'll its light will turn on, but that'll be or its fan will turn on, but that'll be fine. Ha 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 and it would plug into this. Now, this is the USB to air. Now, I have three of these now. You can have up to four of them. Oh, my God. Wait a second. Is this not going to be a q stream? Monarch Spirit dropping a giftage to Travesty. Hey, Travesty, what's going on? Welcome to the GM. I've just been gifted to sub by Monarch Spirit. Monarch Spirit, thank you very much for dropping that very generous gift itself on the jam. Feels good. Much appreciated indeed. Much appreciated indeed. What's happening? What's up, Darth? What's up, Sawed Off? Uh, thank you, Monarch, for that. Appreciate it. Roberto in the house. Dauntless, what's happening? Bald, rare apple in the house. What's happening? Premix, what's going on? What's going on? Ant Funny, hello, hello. Uh... As you can tell, this is all very organized. That what, what I was going to talk about. Anyway, this is an H. This is a USB to air. U, USB to air. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, you can have up to four of these running at a time. I have three running. And if you were here last night, we discovered with the help of one of our community members that uh, the camera was messed up actually on the on the guitar headstock, and I changed it to 720, and that totally fixed the frame rate and stuff. But it is wireless, and it has the thing that I like about it is it has very low latency. It's only one millisecond of latency. And it uh, goes right on the back of the headstock. And so what we do is uh, we plug the camera itself into one side of the USB to air, the little plug deal. And then the other side is the actual transceiver antenna. And then it needs power. And this is just a standard USB to, um, I don't even know what this is, like a 1.5 millimeter or something uh, power cable, 1.2. And this is just your typical, uh, where am I going? need to be in the spotlight there there your typical you know cell phone charger battery deal and plug that in and now if everything's working correctly i should be able to go to the video pc screen and here we are so now we're looking at the video pc and what i do with this one is uh wait no I still wanted to be on the stream PC because I needed to move the screen around to show you. We're doing it live, you know? Okay. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so up here is where I have that. And you can see now that I've plugged it in. Here, let's try it again. So I'm going to unplug it, and it's going to go away. It won't be connectable at all. Not at all. Even though it says, okay, it says it's still connectable. 
why it's saying that. It takes it takes a little time sometimes. There's a little a little lag. Why why do you possibly think that you're still connected? It's kind of weird. Hey, it's grayed out though. Well, this is new. It usually there we go. Okay. Now it's gone. All right, so I'm going to plug it in in real time. Plug it in live. We're doing a live exclusive plugging in of battery to transceiver. And then it should show up. All right. And then you just hit uh, you hit connect on this. This is UWB Connection Manager. And it connects it up. Cool. Now it's connected. So now we can do... I need to move the screen again. Back down to here. So. Now what we can do is uh, turn the sucker on. So this is the AJ7 cam. And then uh, we'll go into the properties here and deactivate it and then reactivate it. And it should show right up. And there it is. So as you can see, it's all weird looking though. It's like super bright and the frame rate's really bad. And so I have a fix for this. I have this script that I set up and it's called the uh, camera fix script. And watch this, check this out. You're gonna, you're gonna love this, it's gonna be awesome. Wait, yeah, you should see this on the screen. Okay, cool, check this out, this is awesome. All right, so I click cam set on my stream deck and then I hit uh, guitar and watch this. Did you see that? It just fixed all the settings. Like it did the, uh, I wonder what's up with this lag. This lag is new. Let me try going to uh, 720. That's good, but uh, yeah, the frame rate's much better now. But um, now the, the exposure is still strange. So let me see if I can fix the exposure real quick. Normally you have to go in here, you have to click configure video, make sure you know, you gotta like go down here and be like, okay, yeah, there's my exposure. That's not right. And by the way, this is the uh, this is the uh, configure screen for C920s. If you do not install the software, because if you install the software, what happens? Oh yeah, if you install the software for, from Logitech, you can't control more than one camera at a time. You have to unplug each camera and and do the, and redo the settings. The positive to that is that you can, uh, it, it'll save the settings most of the time, except sometimes autofocus will bug out. So if you don't want autofocus, it's, it can be a problem. And sometimes the uh, white balance will, will reset itself and stuff will just get messed up with that software. So if you don't install the software or if you uninstall the software, this sort of like standard, I don't even know what this is, like a standard Windows driver configuration for a USB camera thing, if you, if you just use this, the uh, negative is that on C920 cameras, this isn't for all webcams, but for C920 cameras, the negative is that this, the camera settings don't get remembered. So you have to go set them every time. But you can have all your cameras plugged in. So if you're using a lot of webcams, or a lot of C920s in, in particular, you can leave them all plugged in and then do each of their settings. So what I do, so we've got the guitar camera going now. So now what I do is I have a few more C920s that I use. One is the, uh, let's see, well, I have the Strat and the V, but those aren't plugged in right now. So I got stage left rear, and you can see this is totally screwed up. So I'm going to hover over stage left rear, and then I'm, I'm going to hit my main camera setting fix, and then it just does it. And that one's done, and then I go to the next one, hover over it, then I hit my button, and that one's done. Yeah. And I got a couple more of these. And used to, I mean, this used to be such a nightmare because not only would you have to reset every one, but then you'd have to, you know, it would just, it would just be horrible. Here we go, last one. Hey, look, it's a buck cam. TOS! Uh, and that's it. That's all my C920s. So, uh, so that's the idea with the, what's up socks. So auto auto hotkey, yeah, auto hotkey. I definitely recommend it if if you're trying to automate anything. It's also how I start up my system because uh, if we go to the uh, we go to the uh, go to the guitar cam here, 
can see, man, the frame rate's weird. I wonder if I need to move where my antennas are, because now it's all good. Anyway, so you can see the, the streaming PC over here. All this stuff automatically starts up with auto hotkey. Same thing with the video PC. I've got everything automatically starting. I don't automatically start the other two PCs, but uh, it's good enough that the video PC and the streaming PC does it because it opens up all these windows and puts them in the right place. It signs into everything, does everything. Auto hotkey is super bomb. Definitely get it if you don't have it. Uh, so anyway, let's. I wanted to do cameras. Let's do cameras. 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 Okay. I think what I want to do is make this, bring the exposure up just a little bit on this guy. Or maybe just add a little gain to it. Still pretty dark. I mean, it is a webcam, so it is a C920. This is cool. This is cool. All right, we're walking. We're walking. Here we go. All right. The first, you know what I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get a light. We need a light for this. We need a light and I have just the thing. I've got my Atom Cube by Pilotfly. When you need lighting on the go, you need to fly with the Pilotfly. All right, I'm literally just going to let all this hang. Yeah, perfect. Hey, it's still working. Right on. Good enough for me. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Uh-oh, were you disconnected? Okay, so now I can actually turn the gain down a little bit again. Oh, yeah, that's nice, dude. Sweet. All right, here we go. All right, we're walking. Still, We still have the feed. I think we have the feed. I'm I'm going to put the light right on top of it. All right, first stop. Hmm. Let me open the antenna. Let's make sure we've got a... Okay, that looks pretty good. we got good frame rate. All right, sweet. First stop. Can you see this guy? This is a GH5S from Lumix. It has a 7mm lens on there. And the reason it has a 7mm lens is because that's a really wide shot. The higher you go up in focal length, like if you go to like 12mm or 20mm or 50mm the more zoomed in you get with your lens. So this is a seven, I think this might be seven and a half millimeter. What does it say on there? Does it say? Yeah, seven and a half. You can see it there on the bottom. Seven and a half millimeter on this thing. And uh, fantastic lens to make the room look nice and big. I mean, it's pretty big as it is, but like it, it just really, you can really see all of it encapsulated. I have HDMI running out of this into a card in the computer, which I'll show you later. And then I have uh, a, you know, a power adapter that you got off, uh, you know, got off like Amazon for like 20 bucks. So that way, you know, no batteries or anything like that. This GH5 is the most awesome camera I've ever had. I love this thing. I got it a couple years back. It was my first like real camera that I ever got. Highly recommend Lumix. It's a micro four thirds camera. So uh, it's, it's a very small sensor. Like let's take off the lens here so I can show you. Oh God, I just moved the camera. <laughs> See that little sensor in there? That's a micro four thirds sensor. So what you do is you, what do you do? You multiply, uh, you multiply your focal length, which is your lens by, uh, by two. And then that gives you what it would be on a full frame camera. So this is the equivalent of a 14 millimeter lens on a uh, full frame camera. I'm just going to straighten that up there. I hope we're still getting good frame rate. I'm going to come back and check the chat in a minute. I haven't seen chat. Like, oh wait, chat's right, chat's right here. I'm like literally right next to chat. H5 is dope. That's right. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's the first one I got. So if we, if we stay with the, uh, if we stay with the, uh, well, this is not a mirrorless. This is a DSLR. So this is a Nikon D7000. So this is our, uh, this is our piano cam. Right here, you know, got the nice little piano. I feel like I'm in Blair Witch Project right now. So is anybody else getting Blair Witch vibes? Getting Blair Witch vibes? Oh my God! What's in the corner? Oh, it's the GH5S. Fine. Uh, anyway, this is a, uh, this is a, <laughs> this is a D7000 from Nikon. So this camera is super awesome too. The only thing is that it only puts out 720. So it doesn't do full 1080 or 4K. I'm running all the other cameras out at 1080, but it only does 720. But the thing is, when you're live streaming on Twitch, you know, if you have a camera that can give you some depth of field as opposed to just a webcam, you, you know, you're so there already. So this camera was the first camera that I used for like close-up shots because this, uh, this is a 50 millimeter lens on it. And so it gives you a nice depth of field. It's a nice uh, zoomy shot. Let's take a look at that shot as a matter of fact real quick. Because we got it right here queued. 
if we do our cam angles and we go to the Nikon. So that's that shot. And so, yeah, I mean, you just like, you got this, this incredible depth of field. It's, oh, it's nice. And that's, that's putting out at 720, but I have it, I have it upscaled. And I mean, it looks, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Oh God, I love that camera. I love Nikon cameras. Nikon cameras, they just have such an awesome color science to them. And they're really, they're really great. Hey, there's a hand. That's a hand. Uh, cool. What, what else did I want to say about this one? So this one comes out mini HDMI and it, then it converts to regular HDMI and then I throw it in the, the capture card as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, same thing with the power supply. I just have a little powered power supply there that uh, plugs in so I don't have to worry about batteries. I did have to update the firmware on this because uh, Nikons typically have a recording limit. And so I had to break that code so that it could be longer than that. I don't think I broke it in terms of like being able to record longer than that on the camera, but it doesn't shut off. You know, it, like the, the view doesn't shut off now so I can actually feed it for however long I need to. Uh, and then of course the newest addition to the uh, SOA lineup of cam rays is this gorgeous thing. This is a Lumix G9. So this is just like the GH5 except it's more geared toward, it's a micro four thirds. Oh, that's what I was going to say about the D7000. Let's go back and look at that for just, for just a moment here. So the D7000 is, uh, have I had it in the shot this whole time? Are, are we doing okay? I think we're doing okay. Yeah, it's in the shot. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'm so sorry. I'll try to do better about making sure that we're actually framed. So I'm so focused on what I'm talking about. I'm like not paying attention to where the camera is, but I think we're okay. Uh, this is a APS-C uh, uh, sensor. So I hope I don't screw it up by doing this. This, this, be, this camera behaves a little differently than the other ones because it's just different. But if I take the lens off this one, you can see this sensor. It's, it's first of all, it's a mirror. So, so the actual mirror moves. And it's not just a, the sensor that's like, you can see the sensor, the mirror actually moves and like reflects, I don't know how mirror, how mirror DSLRs work, obviously, as you can tell from me talking about it, but it's not like a micro four thirds where the sensor is just sitting there looking at you. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to say about this? Why did I pull this off at all? Oh, because I wanted to show you the sensor, but I can't because you can't see it because it's mirrored. I guess you can see it in the mirror. Oh yeah. Is that the sensor though? I think that is the sensor. Is that the sensor in the mirror? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you, see it? Can you see it in the mirror? Anyway, it's a little bit bigger than Micro Four Thirds. So. You, so it's arguable whether or not like you have better low light or whatever. The GH5S has excellent low light, though. Okay, so back to the G9. G9. So this is a Lumix G9. Same thing. I've got HDMI coming out here. And on this one, on this lens, this is a uh, Nikon lens. So I've, I'm adapting. I, I can't see the feed. I can kind of see the feed. Here, let me just pull back a little bit just so we know that we're like in the shot. So this is a Nikon 10 and a half millimeter lens and it's a fisheye. Can you see the fisheye from this side? And so it gives you a really wide angle. Like it really opens up the room and kind of warps it around, but it, it, you can see more of the room that way. I tried so many lenses on this camera before I started streaming again and I was just like, nothing was working. Like I was trying zoom lenses and like wide lenses and just, I, I have a small collection, not, not anything decadent, but I have a small collection of lenses and I was just trying everything I had. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try that Nikon. So I adapted it. This is a, a speed booster. And uh, I adapted it uh, to the Micro Four Thirds from the Nikon because this is an APS-C lens adapted to the Micro Four Thirds camera. And it just was, I was like, oh, that's exactly what it is. Like, it's just a perfect fisheye and really warps the room so you can really see uh, everything going on in the room. Same thing, HDMI out. And then uh, we have a battery pack in here. And uh, th that, that's the uh, handheld mirrorless and DSLRs. What was that? I don't know what's <laughs> Eight months rolling in. Who is that? Senor Strawberry. What's going on? Thanks for the two thirds of continued support. Two thirds of rotation. Much, uh, much appreciated indeed. Indeed. What's going on? Thank you very much for the eight months. Darius is in the house. Draven's in the house. Hot damn. What's going on? Senos. What's happening? Uh, stagnation. What's going on? What's going on? So yes. So that's so that's the G9. All right. Cool. 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 So that's those are the mirrorless HDMI cameras and stuff. So then we move to the moving cameras. So this is a PTZ Optics 20x uh, USB, and this one's pretty cool because you can control uh, how the camera moves through Visca, and this is Visca right here. This this cable. 
and there's power, and then this goes HDMI out. Now, for the longest time, I was using this camera with USB, and you can see the USB connector over here, and you can go USB 3 into a computer with this camera. And if you're only using one camera, and you want to have a stream where you just want to use one camera, and you want to have it be able to move and zoom in and have depth of field, because this camera is amazing. It has Sony glass in it. Fantastic camera. But if you want to use it on USB, I recommend only having like one camera like this, because as soon as you add any more to the mix and you're starting to use other USB ports, this thing is sending out 1080p at 60 frames and it's a lot of bandwidth and the USB side of stuff is something that is still a puzzle to me and I'm still trying to figure out how that stuff works. It's five years in, I'm still trying to like manage all that stuff. It's, it's still a battle all the time and I just found that I was having so, much, so many problems over time. Like the cameras would freeze during the shows and they, they would just lose their signal and they wouldn't reconnect. They wouldn't turn on. They just, they were bugged out. And so I started just sending this out HDMI direct. And I wasn't able to do that until I got the capture card that the black magic. And I found out about that from Sequisha. As a matter of fact, I saw him randomly tweet about it. And I was like, wait a second. I started looking at the black magic stuff and I saw their capture cards. And so I grabbed one of those and that, then I could put four of these cameras, four HDMI cameras into a, into a capture card. And of course, here's the other one. These have, I think these have up to 12 uh, internal presets. And then I control them with a, with a third-party software to do the uh, different recalls and stuff. There's so much you could do with them and so much I want to do in the future with them that they're, they're really cool. Uh, they're, they're super cool cameras. What was that? I heard that. It's driving 59 months. Oh, my God. Draven, thank you so much for the continued support. What's going on? How you doing? How you doing? Can you get bokeh shots out of, uh, out of the PTZs? Though that, yes, you, yeah, you have to be zoomed in. Like the more you zoom in, the more bokeh you get. The, if you're zoomed out, it kind of behaves a little bit like, uh, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. Like, because you can tell it what F-stop you want, like inside the software, you can tell it what F-stop you want, but it doesn't really behave like that. Like I haven't, I think I have it set to one eight and it, and when it's completely zoomed out to one eight, it's not, you know, it's, it's just, it, it's not, it's not one eight. It doesn't, it doesn't act like that, but it says it is, but it's the software. So, you know, that, that is what that is. Uh, so those, those four, is, or that's five. So the GH5S over there, pretty dark over there. <laughs> okay. Let's do a little, let's do a little quick walkthrough. GH5S. That was the first one. That was the, that was the flagship of like, okay, we're going on to another level with cameras. And then of course there's the D7000. The Nikon had to modify it a little bit to get it to work for a live stream, but it works great now. And of course, we have the two PTZs and the uh, G9 over here for the front shot, the one I'm looking at all the time. Now, we go on to the old school stuff. So you're looking at a C920 right now, which is on a guitar headstock. And then I have two more for the other uh, guitar headstocks. And then, of course, this one is looking at the piano. We've got this one that's on the other side of the piano looking at it. Right there, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a couple in the back here, so if we walk around the TV's stage left, I hope we're not losing signal here. We got this one kind of behind, behind the stage, looking in, looking over there. And then, last but not least, we got this guy over here. And I use these mostly for the piano stuff, because I've really tried to get away for the regular song performances. Like, I'm really trying to get away from doing the webcams. They're just... They were great when I first started, but just a low light performance on them. It just, it just doesn't do it anymore. All right. So now we get to the, get to the other stuff. So, so this, this one, I think it, I think the brand name's ELP. I think it's ELP. It's kind of like, there's a lot of companies, like you can find these on Amazon and there's a lot of companies that make uh, these kind of webcams. Pay no heed to the, oh, that's not dust. Good. This is sticker. <laughs> and these things are super cool, super sturdy, not that expensive relatively. And you can have zoom and focus and it has an aperture ring and it's a webcam. It's super awesome. I mean, this thing is amazing. It, it shoots uh, at up to 1080 at I think 30 frames. And so that's the new close-up cam. I used to use a C920 that I just uh, ripped the housing off of so it could fit on. And then I was like, you know what? I had this thing. I'd done some testing with this one and I was thinking of maybe using this kind of camera for the uh, ring of cameras for like the matrix matrix look. Uh, and then it just worked out that I used the other ones, but but uh, this thing's super cool. It's a really cool little, really, really cool little camera. And then finally, we have the matrix rings. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11. Don't ask me. I don't know why. I don't know why. I guess I like to make my life miserable by complicating things. <laughs> that booty dough, three months. Thank you so much for the quarter of rotation of continued support. Much appreciated indeed. What's happening? That booty dough, what's happening? Thank you very much for that. So yeah, so these guys, uh, I didn't know if it was going to work. I just got them and I was like, well, let's see. And these are, these are some wide lenses. So can you see? Does that look? Yeah. So these screw in. So you can actually change the lenses if you want. And you can get like little lens packs and you can, uh, you can, you can change it. It's pretty awesome. And they're, they're marketed as like being like different focal lengths. Like you can go from two millimeter to 12 with them, I guess, depending on how you screw it in. But then the, you got to adjust the focus with the software. The cool thing about these cameras, unlike the C920s as well, is that they save their settings with the basic software. So you could get a bunch of these for your setup if you want to start out. You know, I think these are around like 40 bucks each. I think I've seen them on, online for like 40 bucks each. So you can get these guys. They already have the USB installed. They, they, they connected this little connector right here. And, uh, and you can set these up if you're trying to do like a multi-cam thing. And you can set the settings once and forget it. Because every time I start this PC with these cameras, I just open it up and they all start up every time. And I mean, that is just such a dream because they used to not do that. Like, I mean, all my other cameras, like back when I first started, I mean, I would have to like spend like an hour to get ready for my streams back in the day. And I mean, I think I had all my cameras up and running tonight, like in the first like 15 minutes. And then it was just getting other stuff set up and ready, but that's how it goes. So moving on to the sort of like the ideas for the new setup and some of the mentality behind it. In the old setup, I was drilling holes in the ceiling. Stuff was running through the attic. I had, I had built these fake walls and I was running cables along the outside of the walls. And this time I was like, dude, I want access to everything. Like no matter what, I want access to get, to get everything going. So I found a company that makes custom uh, drapes. They're like theater drapes. And so I had them made to the, to the dimensions of, of the room. And then that way I'm running the cables out. I didn't want to paint the walls black. I mean, that was going to be... Yeah, I don't even know. But, uh, and then I run the cables down there. It starts there. That's not so bad. But then it gets over here. And oh yeah, rather than, I used to have this tubing. It's so dark. I wonder if I can turn this up. No, it's all the way up. Maybe we can get a little brighter in there. I'll get a little closer to the floor. I, I um, with the last studio, I used these like sleeves that like you could expand them and, and make them wider so the cables could fit in. But this time I was like, dude, I want to be able to like get to the cables. So this is like this elastic stuff that you can like actually get to the cables inside. And same thing with these, like I want, these are Velcro to like, you know, hold everything. And oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. There's a series of cables all heading in the same direction. Follow that. So then we're going this way. And then, uh, and then of course we get to where the actual video PC is. And uh, here, here we are. So we've got a uh, we've we've got a Black Magic deck link here. It's a deck link quad, and we have the GH, the G9, the GH5, and the two uh, PTZ cameras. And then I have a single capture from Black Magic down here that is capturing the uh, the D7000. And then below that, I have this card that I got from um, what was the name of the company? It was it was off of Amazon but it's a four port USB expansion PCIe card. Same thing with here. It's the same thing as right here. And what's great is each of these have five, I think gigabit connections. Is it five gigabit? I think it's, I think it's, I can't remember, but they're all dedicated controllers. And that's one of the things you run into with web cameras. If you use your regular HD, uh, your regular USB ports in your motherboard, or even if you add a four slot PCI card or anything else, you that's usually all running on one controller. And sometimes it's not the issue of bandwidth or ports that you're going to be dealing with with web cameras. It's the, it's the issue of uh, bandwidth. It's the issue of controllers and how much can go through one controller. Don't ask me. I'm just saying the words. I still don't understand half this stuff. But I do know that if you have a card like this, which is Star, Star Beach or Star something, not Starlink, that's the internet that Elon Musk is creating that is uh, broadband uh, low orbit satellites. I watch every one of those launches, by the way. It's amazing. Uh, but this, each one of these ports is a dedicated controller. So there's no danger of anything plugged into these ports ever going wrong. Now, the weird thing is I have tried to plug in hubs to each one of these ports and then maybe plug two cameras. I was like, oh, maybe 
I could plug two or three cameras into each port since each one has a controller. Dead in the water. I don't know why. Dead in the water. It's weird. That's why this stuff is so weird. It's like, it's very, very mystical sometimes. But uh, anyway, if you're looking for multiple webcams, I definitely highly recommend. It's a little more expensive. It's like 80 bucks instead of like, you know, 20 bucks for the PCI card that has a dedicated controller in each one. But these all work. And like I said, every time I start the uh, computer up, and I open up OBS, every single camera turns on when I do that. And that is just such a huge, awesome thing that's ha that happens ever since, ever since the, the old days when uh, that didn't happen and it was a nightmare just to like do any show at all. I heard that. How many was that? Three. Character Rias! Hey, uh, Tia Goes, uh, you just got a uh, gifted subscription. Character Rias. Welcome. Star Tech, yeah, that's it. 13th Nile, your second month seal has just been destroyed. Characterize! And Shadowhawk, five months for you. Characterize! Andreas, thank you so much for dropping that three subscriber gift. Much appreciated indeed. Thank you very, very much for that. How you doing, man? It's been a minute. Been a minute indeed. This is a mouse pad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just to, just to recap there. So that's the video PC. And yeah, it's dedicated with all the video cameras. And then I send over NDI, which I'll show you in a minute. And then over here, uh, this, is the, um, this is the PC that has those 11 cameras. Those 11 uh, deals. And this is a PC I built in the spring in anticipation of this. Uh, dedicated, for these, uh, dedicated for these cams. And this is a situation you can see, I have those PCIe cards at the bottom that have a bunch of empty slots, and it's the same thing. It's like, sometimes you can put more than one camera in those, sometimes you can't, because those are not the StarTech ones. Those are just typical four-port expansion cards. Now that one on top with four plugs in it, that is the StarTech. So that works great. Each one can handle it, no problem. Then I have a couple in there in the motherboard, a couple in there. And of course, I've tried other ports in there, and then they didn't work, because I originally was trying to do 16 cameras. I wanted to do 16 for this uh, matrix type deal, but um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't happen. Unfortunately, it just didn't work, but Hey, 11 works fine. But uh, yeah, that's basically the, uh, that's basically the layout of the cameras so far. That's kind of like what I, what I use to actually capture, capture uh, video and stuff. Does that, uh, does that make sense? Any questions about any of that? Anybody curious about any of that? Me, uh, let me turn the spotlight off here. Decklink, uh, the quad Decklink 600. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was like 595. And uh, I almost picked up one that was like three something on eBay. And then I was like, I don't need that. Because I'm because I'm thinking about in the future of maybe adding some more HDMI cams, and I I would prefer to eliminate every webcam in the setup except the headstock cameras. That's kind of the end goal. Because once I mean once you get a taste of like actually having a high quality HDMI mirrorless camera, I mean it's just like with the lens options and everything, it's just it's just no comparison. I mean the low light performance, the frame rate performance, just just the quality of the picture is just so staggeringly amazing compared to. Uh, to a C920 that it's like, it's just, you get to this point where it's like, oh, when I started hooking everything up and it's just like, man, the, the G9 and the GH5, it's just, they, they look so good. And the 7,000 looks so good. And then I turned on that rear camera. That's a C920. And I was like, ah, oh. and it ended up, you know, it's fine. It's like fine. It's like, there's nothing wrong with using C920s, especially if you're starting out. I mean, I use C920s for three years before I, before I did another, got, got another camera and started upgrading. But once you get that taste, man, it's just like, oh, they're so nice. So hopefully over time, I'll continue to just slowly but surely eliminate uh, one webcam after another until I get down just to, head, to headstock cameras. You know, that's another thing that's super interesting, too, is that uh, I used to, I mean, I think I used more cameras before. Like in the last studio, I had more C920s. I was, it was, it was kind of one of those things where it was such a grudge match with the computer back in the day in terms of getting cameras to actually run that once, once I was able to figure out how to get like 12 cameras or 14 cameras, it was like this addiction where I was like, okay, le like, let me put another one on there. I'll just, I'll put it over there in the corner. I'll, I'll put it, it'll be a knee camera. I'll put it on my knee. Oh, you can look at my knee. <laughs> it was just like, it, it just got a little egregious. And, uh, you know, you, 
for what I'm doing, it's like five cameras, maybe six, especially with the two cameras that move. I mean, I'm doing those cameras have I'm using a close up, a mid close up. I'm using a guitar one and a guitar two. And then I have two piano presets and then like the Gloria preset. So I'm like two, four, six, seven. I'm using between like seven and nine presets on each of the moving cameras. So you can really think of that as almost like seven or nine cameras each. And then plus the other cameras that are just static shots. It's like, it gets to a point where it's like, dude, I mean, really how many, honestly, how many, you know, angles of, of the world do you really need on your stream? But uh, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe five or six is pretty much kind of where I'm at. And then, oh my God, look who it is. 61 months. The real C. Miller. What is up, dude? 61 months in a row. Holy moly, dude. Thank you so much for the continued support. Payback bills, four months for you. Thank you very much for the third of a rotation. Much appreciated indeed. Oh, I see what you all did there. I see it. Computer, it's giveaway time. Um, that was weird. Why, uh, why did that do that? Let me try that again. Computer, it's giveaway time. Oh, that's right. I know why. Because this mic is not hooked up. So let me see here. Computer, it's giveaway time. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. All right, hey, if you want Circles, Hype, Home, Hope, Hype, Fire, Album, Unknown, Fine, or Piano Pills Volumes 2 or 3, get in on this giveaway as soon as I put the keyword in for it. That'll happen at some point in the future, trust me. There, just key, perfect, yeah. That's right, Circles is now available. Piano Fuels Volume 3 now available. How's the volume on my voice, by the way, compared to the music? Is my voice too loud? Is the music too loud? Is anything too quiet? Is anything too loud? Is everything perfect? Perfection? Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Excellent. Stagnation says voice slightly loud. Do we have a second on voice slightly loud? If we have a second, we can go into preliminary discussions about voice possibly being too loud. It looks like the majority say fine. <laughs> Music is too loud! Oh no! <laughs> uh, Alright, we'll leave it for now. Now the music- oh gosh! How do I even turn that down? Let me think about that for a second. I guess I could turn- yeah. I guess I could turn that down just a taste, but the thing in the deal, but of course that means that my voice is too low, meaning that I should probably just turn my voice up a little bit, maybe? Like that? You make your voice more purple. You can make my face more purple. But the camera's not on you. It's just too loud. <laughs> Alright, good luck. Computer reward. Oh, pfft. I'm so used to the voice commands. This is crazy. It's getting ridiculous. Alright. <clears throat> Computer reward. Man, this is really weird. This is really weird trying to go between the other mics. And the winner is Stag Nation, congratulations. You just won yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Go ahead and click the link I just sent you, and the rest will be taken care of. Thank you again, everybody. Coming in with that new returning sports. Make this and all the giveaways possible. Much appreciated indeed. Take over! All right. Uh, so, here we are. Here we are indeed. Um... Uh, was it Sunbun? You were asking about uh, dealing with NDI. Yeah, so I'm using the low latency. Um, there's like an experimental low latency mode for uh, for NDI that I use with everything. But what I did for that was I'm I have my audio PC that's sending audio to the streaming PC, and then I have the video PC that's sending video to the streaming PC. 
those two meet at the streaming PC. And then I'm pretty sure what I do, which I did this like a while ago and I just left it. So I can't remember exactly what the number is. But then what I did was I basically started performing or I did claps. I like clapped on camera and then I recorded it on the stream PC and then I just watched it. And it was like ahead or behind the video or it was ahead of the video. Yeah, because there was a little bit of a lag. And so then I added a uh, video delay on the main video feed from the video PC. And I did that continually until I was able to uh, sync them up. And the only reason I was able to sync them up so easily like that is because all the video is on the video PC. There was a day back when I had, uh, I had video on the stream PC as well. And then that got weirder because I had to like delay some of the video feed and then the cameras on the actual stream PC. I didn't, but I think, I think the audio doesn't delay at all. So I think I just, yeah, I think I delay, I, I think I just delay the audio that you guys get by like, you know, it's just like 300 milliseconds or something like that. It's nothing crazy, but I do see that. Yeah. When I, when I clap, it's pretty much instant on the video PC and then on the stream PC, it's just, I mean, it's just right behind. It's just a couple frames behind. So then I just adjusted the audio back to, to sync that up. So I think it works now. Do you have any tips on balancing low light scenes against shots where all your lights are full blast? I don't, I don't run my lights full blast. I very rarely run them full blast. I think like Glitch in the Times is the only song that actually has full blast lights like at the very end of it because I kind of wanted to blow out all the cameras. But see, this is another thing going back to the webcams because the webcams are so inefficient at low light. I've had to sort of have this weird compromise since the beginning because when I, when I added in the, uh, the GH5, it was like so incredibly bright because the cameras were... Uh, all the other cameras were so, it was so hard for them to pick up low light. And so I had the lights pretty bright in Studio 3.0, 2.0, Studio 2.0, the studio after the box, between the last one and the one in the box, the one where it was kind of just in the room. That one I had, the, that, that was my debut of DMX lighting too. So that was kind of like my first foray into DMX lighting. And so I think I just ran everything full blast and then I was able to adjust the web cameras to to work with that. And then I introduced the GH5 and I had to kind of like artificially darken the gh5 with uh with the i think it was with the f-stop I, I had to basically close the iris down so that it wouldn't be so blown out and then i wasn't able to get very good depth of field but i was still so ignorant to like camera like to to photography and videography in terms of like lenses and stuff like that at that point i'm just lucky anything worked at all but now that i'm much more familiar with like you know focal link and iso and uh shutter speed and all that stuff now i'm more I'm sort of in this weird middle ground now where I'm trying to more light everything for the cameras that are better in low light and then sort of just adjust the webcams to that. And that's actually, you know, an ongoing thing, especially in this new studio, since it's so dark in here now compared to the white reflective walls of the last studio, I'm going to have to continually kind of find the sweet spot for the webcam settings because as I'm sure many of you know, the higher you go on the exposure on the, on the web cameras, the worse the frame rate gets. And there's a point where you just can't continue to go up or it just gets unusable. But then it, as a, at the same time, if you up the gain to so get more light sensitivity, it's just, it's a, it's just a mess. It, it becomes like a noisy mess. So it's, it's just difficult. I mean, you know, it's just really difficult. Those, those web cameras have such a small sensor and they're just, they, they just can't compare to, you know, a camera that has a sensor that's five times the size or 10 times the size, 10 times the quality. It's just, it's just no comparison. So it's just definitely a compromise that you just have to constantly kind of be going after but the but the short answer to that is i typically just light very uh conservatively and then kind of adjust the cameras that aren't handling it very well to that because the low light cameras are so good at picking up low light but as i move forward and i kind of try to evacuate more and more webcams out of the situation then i'll be able to play with that a little bit more and experiment with it but i can do that here which is i'm so stoked about this room is because it's like it's completely modular and set up so that i can do that as opposed to like setting something in stone and building stuff into the walls and stuff like that, you know? What is going on here? Wait a second, did I, did I miss by Coastal Gaming? Gaming, did I miss your sub? Your five months? Holy moly, sorry about that. I guess I got a little preoccupied with the giveaway. Payback bills, thanks for the four, and by Coastal, thanks for the five months of continued support. And then check this out, we got Hazy 
rolling in with 52 months. Hazy, thank you so much for the 52 months in a row. Unbelievable. Thank you very, very much for the continued support. 52 months in a row. Whoa. <laughs> nice job cutting off the video, Montego. Senor Strawberry dropping a 20 spot on the jam. Pretty ashamed that this is the first stream I've caught after, four, after a four-year gap. So I'll sponsor CD giveaway, I guess. All these updated sub notifications look super dope. <laughs> Thank you so much, Senior Strawberry, for that very generous support. Much appreciated indeed. Can we get a bit droppage? I don't know why. I just wanted to see that. Uh, computer, it's giveaway time. Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm bringing the mic up. This is too embarrassing. Computer, it's giveaway time. There we go. All right. This is in honor of straw. Straw is the keyword in honor of strawberry drop of the dodo on the jam sponsoring this giveaway. Iceman coming in with the raid. Thank you very much. Your perfect timing is perfection. If you guys want to get in on this giveaway, Circles, High Poem, Hope, High Fire, Album, Unknown, Fine, Piano Fields, Volume 2 or 3 is what is up for grabs. If you win, you'll be able to choose any one of those. It'll be signed, shipped anywhere in the world where you are. It'll go out with all the other CDs tomorrow. I got everything uh, packed up, so I think we got something like 53 CDs going out. So thank you so much again to everybody with that incredible support from our return show last night. Everybody coming in with the giftages, subs of your own volition, so many giveaways, and very many uh, orders from madebymonty.com if you want to pick up the CDs there, you can go there, but thank you to everybody coming in with the orders from there. Everything is going out tomorrow. Be looking for that as early as the end of the week if you're in the States, and a little longer if you were international. But right now you got a chance! Care of Seymour Strawberry. Good luck. Computer award. An association with Senior Strawberry. This is just precious. It's no real. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Congratulations to Tim Holic, you just want yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Can't win if you don't play. Can't play if you're not here. So thanks for being here, Tim. And congratulations on winning a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Go ahead and click the link I just sent you and the rest will be taken care of. Thank you again to Senior Strawberry coming in with that very generous dono sponsoring that giveaway. Much appreciated. Indeed. Indeed. All right, I'm getting rid of the mic. What is going on, Tim Holic? Congratulations. It's not rigged. It's not rigged! Uh, what were we talking about? I don't know. But uh, anyway, yeah. That's how, I do, that's how I deal with that thing. If there's any questions I missed, definitely feel free to ask them again. I would be happy to uh, answer any questions about the setup, any changes, anything new that's going on with the stuff. I've, I, I was going at this from... A, a modular perspective like for instance for instance this desk so with the with the last studio i built this like nine foot long hollow tree <laughs> trunk basically and uh, i was running everything to the desk i mean i had the i had the key, the the yamaha 88 key keyboard inside the desk and then I wanted to be like Mr. Studio guy. So I had the, I had the, you know, the pad, you know, like you put the thing on top of the keyboard and it's got like a pad for like leaning. It's like, look at me, I'm a Mr. Studio producer guy. And then you take the pad off when you're ready to like play some keys when you're recording and stuff, you know, and it was horrible. Ergonomically, it was like the worst thing ever. Cause like having this keyboard in front of me and then like having to like reach over it to like control everything. Oh God, it was just such a nightmare. And then the, the pad was like super tall. It was like four inches tall. I was like, that looks so awesome. And then I'm sitting here like this, leaning on the pad. I mean, it was, it was, it was just bad. Like for live shows, it was fine. Like it, it's definitely going to take some getting used to. We're having like the control center right here. And then like playing piano over there is going to, it's going to take a little getting used to. The stream deck, the stream deck thing is, it's a very long cable that I got set up now. So I could, I can walk it over there and put it there if I want to. So that's, 
that may be something that I do in the future. But in the, at the old desk, like the stream deck, I could, I, the stream deck setup, I could kind of move it like this a little bit, but, but that's about it. Same thing with everything pretty much on the desk. Nothing is like set in stone anymore. I didn't want to like permanently install anything. Like, and that's why I'm super stoked about getting the trust that I saw Miller just mentioned. Yes, the trust is so awesome. Cause like what I did with the last setup was I, I, I went to Home Depot and I got these like half inch thick, like, um, what are, it's like MDF, I think is what it's called. It's like this, it's basically like particle board. It's really flimsy, like four by eight. And I, I built like a, a two by three frame around the room so that I could have like a backstage so I could walk around everything and cable everything back there. And then I drilled holes and stuff and it was like fine, but oh my God, it was just such a pain to like do anything like to like adjust something or change something. I would have to like patch holes in the wall or drill new holes in the wall and like walk around the whole thing to like get to like one little cable that I wanted to plug in. And it was just like, dude, for the, if for the next situation, like I don't want to have to like be going on mountain treks to like try to plug in a cable and feed stuff through. I mean, I was climbing in the attic like on a regular basis, like running cable. And I mean, it was just like breathing in insulation and it was just amazing. So I was like, I, I really, I really don't want to, I, I just don't really want to do that. And so uh, I was able to get the truss and the truss has holes drilled in it at every like eight inches or something like that. And it came with a ton of bolts. I mean, it must've come with like a thousand bolts so I could do that. And then also there are these amazing clips. I got one right here. I've, I've, I found them, uh, they're, they're pretty much everywhere. It's like one of these things where it seems like a bunch of companies like make the same thing. Like there's a bunch of different brands that make it, but it's these clips that they're, uh, oh, can we get, uh, let's, can we get, can we get the spotlight again, please? We need spotlight. We need the uh, spotlight, please. You need to be able to show what I'm doing here. So this, this clip, it, uh, it has these like little plastic inserts in it that come out and there's different sizes of them. And so you can use, uh, pretty much any diameter you need for clipping stuff onto and you just click it in there and then it goes around whatever the thing is. And then it's got this, this deal that locks on and you just lock it onto the pipe or whatever you're putting it on. And then it's got a, it's got a bolt right here and you can just connect whatever you want anywhere. So awesome. I mean, and it's just like, they're just so heavy duty. Like they're, they're just, they seem so quality. They seem very strong and super high quality. And that actually was just on the trust there from where I had originally put the G9 and it ended up not working at that location. So I moved it, but I left the clip on there. And that's the great thing about this setup rather than, you know, being like designing it in my head, maybe writing it down on paper and being like, all right, that's going to be the studio. It's like, I was, I got the, the skeletal structure figured out and now it's like, I can just kind of experiment and move stuff around and do stuff. And I mean, I spent, I think like two days, two or three days in here moving the uh, hexagon around. That's like a steel a uh, hexagon truss that's on two bases. And I was like moving that around. I was moving the truss around to different places and kind of just fe- seeing like, how can I maximize the space in the room and like have everything positioned? And it was, it was just great to be able to do that and to not have to like set anything permanently, just trying to like think about it and then having to just deal with that for like the next two years or whatever, you know? So I, it's, it's, that's, that was the biggest motivation for this whole thing. It was just like, I want a situation where I can like the only thing impeding my movement forward is my own psychosis. That's sort of what I wanted. I, what I wanted to put myself in the position. <laughs> that sounds really negative, but it's true. You know, you procrastinate. You're like, I don't want to do that, and it's really hard because I have to like get the ladder, then I have to climb up in the attic, and then I have to get the drill. And what size drill bit do I need? I'm gonna have to compare it to the bolts. Do I even have those bolts? Am I gonna have to go to deep Home Depot? Am I gonna get coronavirus? Oh my god, I don't know, man. So now it's like it's just not an issue now. It's like now it's like. Do I really want to do that? Well, do you want to do that? You lazy sack of beans. You're a sack of beans. If you don't want to do it, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be a sack of beans. I guess I'll do it. And then I do it and I, and I, and I cut all the snap tights and then I just re, rerun the cable and then I, and then I can just be done with it. And that's what I did. I moved a bunch of the stuff around and just tried it in a bunch of different ways and angles and stuff. Is that a custom stream, stream deck setup? Uh, yeah. So I, I made the, uh, I made the box out of, uh, a very thin ply, I think like eight, eighth inch ply. And then I seal, I sealed it. How did I put it together? I think I, did I glue it? I think I glued it. And then I got, uh, in the old, in the last studio, I used a uh, vinyl adhesive to wrap it. And then, uh, I just put that over top. And what I have now, this is a secret. Okay. Don't, don't tell anybody that I did this because you can't really tell when you look at it on camera, but this is the reality of show business. What I used this time was I left the white adhesive vinyl on it because it kind of keeps it sturdy. 
and then this the black material around the, most of the body is the same sort of material that you get. I, I originally got it to make uh, the cloud I had in the last studio, the uh, sound absorption cloud. It's that like, it's sort of like um, porous uh, material, but on the top, the top was still open. So it's hard to see, but this is literally, uh, <laughs> this is literally just weather stripping. It's that sticky weather stripping, but it's very plush and, and soft. And, uh, and, and you can just, it's, it's, it's very nice. You want, you want the spotlight on it? You can get the spotlight. Here, let's get the, can we get spotlight on the weather stripping, please? You can see this is just, it's just weather, it's just weather stripping. And, uh, and then I, and then I wrapped the weather stripping around this part so that, so the the cable cover won't come out. A little less. There, there, that's, that, that's good lighting on it. Weather stripping. Yeah. Quality. And that's what I call custom. Anyway, I ended up really liking the Stream Deck setup. Uh, I take personal responsibility for the uh, Stream Deck XL because I did tweet at them and I said, you guys need to make this. And it was a Photoshop picture of the Stream Deck, X, Stream Deck XL. And then they made it a year later. But by that time, I had already found out, found out this method. And so I wish they would have actually made one that's like this, that was like five across as, a, as opposed to the XL. Because the XL is like a giant box that kind of sits upright with a bunch of brains in it. I'm just kidding. I'm not that... I'm not that self-absorbed to think that I actually was the reason they made the XL. I'm sure they already had it in development. <laughs> oh, that's fun to imagine. New people coming by, who is this tool man? He thinks he's like affecting the corporate direction of business practices. What's going on here? No, yeah, I mean, the XL looks awesome. And if it's, if it's what you're looking for, for what you're trying to do, it's perfect. But it's one of those things that I just, I put, I had these, you know, and then I, I put them in this line. I was like, oh yeah, this is exactly what I want. This, this works perfect. Right above the keyboard. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, I don't, I always ask myself, like, could I, do I need more than this? I don't think I do. I, I, I use three of them for the stream PC, one for the audio PC. Like, this has all my song projects and everything for the audio PC. This is the video PC. It has all my camera angles. It has, like, when I need to fix the guitar cameras, all that stuff, that, all that's there. And then all of this is the stream PC. Like, this is all my scenes for the stream PC. I've got, like, all my sub vids and all that stuff here. And I've got, like, audio cues and uh, other just other various videos and stuff like that on the third one. And it works pretty well, especially when I get back into the groove. It feels, feels pretty good. What are the arms you have the uh, cameras on? Hold on a second. It's getting hot. The arms. Oh, those. Those are... Um, oh, are you talking about... Which, which arms are you talking about specifically? I mean, I could go over all of them, but I guess, you know, a lot of, a lot of the cameras use different things. Like uh, for the PTZ cameras, these guys, I just have these L brackets that, uh, I don't know what they, I think I got them at the hardware store and I was doing something completely unrelated. And of course, after all this time, I just have this box of stuff. Oh yeah. And Miller, you were asking how much weight I, you know, I don't really know, but not that much, not that much. I'm, I mean, I've got a few DMX lights on this stuff and I got a, um, can't see it. It's too dark, but, uh, I, the microphone has a six foot steel square pipe that I got at Home Depot. That's like, I think it's an inch in diameter. And that's like weirdly, it's like, it's strong, so it doesn't bend, but it's kind of strangely heavy in this weird way. Cause I have it bolted on the back of the truss. The truss is super cool. Cause the truss has plates on each connecting piece. It has plates above it with three bolts that are, that are uh, welded in. And so you can, it's, totally modular. I mean, you can put all kinds of stuff like this truss is built. This is a hexagon truss. So, uh, it's very structurally sound. Like if there's not any danger of anything falling or tipping over anything like that, it's super strong. I've actually started doing pull-ups again because <laughs> it's legit, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging the, uh, I'm hanging the mic bar off of, off of one of them. And, uh, and I used, I, I uh, have, a, have a bench press, so I had, the, I had this really flexible, like I don't even know what you would call them, but they're, they're like very, they're sort of like all-purpose little steel plates, but they're very thin, like they're easy to bend, and they had a couple holes, and I, and I drilled a hole in there so I could, I kind of strapped it over the mic arm 
and then uh, bolted it down, and it like kind of like melt it. It formed to the to the bar that it's going on to really snug it in there. So the mic is actually pretty sturdy. I'm really stoked about that. The last studio, I had PVC pipe coming down from the attic, and in the attic, I had put two little brackets and the PVC in between those brackets with a PVC cap on it, so that as because I I could push it into the ceiling and make it go away. Like if I, if I was doing VR or something and I didn't want to hit that. And then when it was showtime, I could just grab the pole and pull it down from the attic. And then it would catch on that cap. Like it would come down and then the cap would catch on the two um, brackets that I had up there. So it would stop. But it was, I mean, it was ridiculous. It was PVC and it was all taped together and stuff. So I was like, you know, that, that was like one of the other biggest things in this new studio. I didn't, I didn't want it just to be modular. I wanted it to not be sticky because I, I used tape everywhere in the last one and like when i was disassembling it and just even when i was using it i mean on the keyboard itself i had put on the bottom of the pad that that armrest pad that i had put on it to cover it because mr studio producer guy that's what you do you get your pad to put over your keyboard and uh i had put a piece of velcro in the front of it because i had stapled the um marine vinyl onto it i used a bunch of orange marine vinyl in the last studio which marine vinyl is so legit by the way if, if you're looking for a really sturdy um, like material for like that can take a beating as far as like, you know, just a lot of friction and stuff like that. It's awesome. It's a marine vinyl is a super awesome material. Very, very strong and sturdy. You can spill stuff on it, obviously, and it cleans up really nicely. And it's awesome. But uh, I put uh, a strip of Velcro on the bottom of that thing. And then for, you know, a year I'd been picking it up and pulling, putting it down, picking it up, pull, putting it down. And that stickiness from the Velcro like had absorbed into the top of the piano. And I mean, it, I, it took me like one night, I spent like two and a half hours just trying to clean it off. I was using like WD-40, wasn't working. I was using hand sanitizer, wasn't working. Soap. I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. And like, I don't think it's all off. I, I got most of it pretty much like 97%. I think I got off, but there's still a little, there's a little bit here and there that I notice every once in a while. Goo gone. I definitely, I should try that. Uh, old man, what's happening? I'll answer that in just one second. Do I plan on streaming VR? And funny, the, the plan for now is while nothing is ever out of the question, because one day I may just be like, dude, I want to stream VR tonight. And I, and I may do that. But the focus right now is I'm trying to keep it very, um, I'm trying to keep it very dialed and succinct, just like the old days. And in the old days, when I was, especially when I was working full time, before I, before I went full time on Twitch, and it was like, I'm trying to like set the mind space of what I was, what it was like back then. But there, I was talking about this a little bit last night. There was such a, there was such a sense of urgency just simply because I didn't have much time to do anything. And now it's like being full time on Twitch. It's like, it's more like, okay, well, what do I want to accomplish now? You know, rather than being like, oh my God, I don't have much time. What do I have to do? Because I don't have much time, you know? And I'm, I want to try to get back to that a little bit because so I got so much done weirdly enough. Like, contrary to ironically enough is that is that irony is that irony i didn't have any time so i got a lot done but in two, in 2016 i i produced four albums and for half of that year i was working full time so i mean i'll never forget it i could tell the story a million times about how i used to get up at 5 a.m in the morning i used to get up at 4 30 i would stream from 5 to 7 i'd go to work i would sleep for 15 minutes at work during my lunch break because i was so exhausted that I needed to like try to sleep a little bit. I was basically like on a biphasic sleep kind of thing because then I'd come home, I'd eat, I'd stream, like do a night show for like four or five hours. And then I'd go to, go to bed at like 12 or 1230. And then I'd sleep for four hours and get up and do it again. And there, like I fell asleep, I think on stream once or twice because I was just so exhausted all the time. But I was like, I was so motivated to try to get to streaming full time that I didn't care about exhaustion. It didn't matter. In retrospect, it was extremely un unhealthy and I don't recommend anybody do that because you, you, you need, I I've changed my opinion or I've, 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 I am more, uh, what, 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 what would be the way to put it? I, I have more information now and I've seen, I've seen many interviews with sleep doctors and professionals who have a lot of experience in that field and polyphasic sleeping, although super interesting and such an awesome idea, it does not seem to have, it doesn't seem to have the benefits that we wish it would if it would work. And it actually, on the contrary, can be extremely damaging to your health because there are certain parts of your sleep cycle that you really do need that 
are not just for rejuvenation for your mental ability during the day, but actually are very important physiologically for the health of your blood system and stuff. So I wouldn't recommend you do that, but that's what happened. And that's, that's how it went down. And the, 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 the two cents of, of the whole thing is that what I was focused on then was what do I need to do like this week? Like it was like, what is happening this week? What am I doing this week? What are we doing this week? What am I doing? What, because I was always working on an album. I was trying to get more stuff out. Because you got to remember, this was, the, this was the time when I didn't have very many songs that I was playing during live shows. So I would play like all my songs and then maybe I'd play a couple of them a second time or maybe I'd play some piano or whatever. And so I was constantly needing new content. And then after I went full time and I had like eight albums that I had produced since I started streaming, it got to, it got to the point where I couldn't perform every song during the show. So then songs started getting, started dropping off. That sense of urgency kind of dropped off because I had enough material that I could play multiple shows before I had to repeat anything. And I started thinking about so many different things. I started, you know, doing more game streaming. I started doing uh, less production and sort of, I don't know, like, I don't know how you put it. Cause I mean, I definitely feel like I got a lot done in, in, in that intervening time, but like there was just this hyper focus that I had, especially at the beginning in terms of production. And last night I was talking about that too, where I made piano feels volume three this year, which was a lot of work, but it wasn't a lot of time. I definitely spent a lot of effort on it and I'm really stoked with how it came out, but it wasn't a lot of time. It was about a three week period. And then of course I did holding on and the music video for that. I learned a lot about blender this year and stuff like that. So I definitely did some things and I accomplished some th things I wanted to do. But last year I made piano feels volume two in 2019. And that was the same thing. I think I spent about two weeks on that. And I, did, I had a lot of starting and stopping with trying to do new albums and stuff like that. And then that, that was it though. It was just Piano Feels Volume 2 really as far as like actual work produced in, in terms of music. And then in 2018, it was fine. And that was the only thing that year. And uh, I mean, there were a lot of other things like TwitchCon and, and a ton of other things were going on. But when I'm, spe I'm speaking specifically about like new music, I was like, man, like it was, it was so, I was so prolific back in the beginning and I was so hyper-focused on that. And then it's like over time that it's just, that's that kind of fell away to other things. And it's like, I mean, I've learned so much about like lighting and cameras and, and film and, and I've, I've learned so much and I don't feel like it's been time wasted. I just really, really want to get back to music like really, really badly. Like I, I, I feel like so much of the, the stuff that I've worked on over the past couple, like couple of years now in terms of music has been, has not really been very like, like I've, I've definitely like improved as a songwriter and I've improved, I think definitely in terms of like vocals for sure, especially on the piano stuff, but in terms of actual production work, like technical production, like using Reaper with many, many tracks and many, many different sounds and exploring that and trying to master more sides of that stuff. It's, it's been, I, I haven't really uh, pursued that very much and I want to do that now. I heard that. It takes me a long time to finish a sentence sometimes, but we got six months rolling in from Kagero. Hey, Gary, thank you very, very much for the continued support. Six months. Much appreciated indeed. So to answer your question, if I'm going to do VR streams, it's totally not out of the question that I could absolutely do one here or there. But back, you know, like say two years ago, that would like thinking about VR and thinking about being set up for VR, it like it would sort of start to consume me where I'd be like, oh yeah, I need to set up a VR thing. And then I should start doing like VR streams, like maybe like, I could do like a hour a day or something, or like I could do like three or four VR streams a week. Or I started thinking about that. And then it's like, I would do a few and then it kind of fall off and then just something else would come up or happen. And I, I just want to refocus back in and lock totally back in on producing music. And so that's going to be, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my best to try to keep that really, really locked in because it's such a, it's such a, it's such a cyclical thing. It's, 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 it's self, it's a self propelling thing. I mean, the more you do it, the more you want to do it and the, and the better you get at it. And the, and the more it's like when, when, when you, when you create a habit, you know, you do something once you're, you're flubbing around, say like when you're learning a new piece of music or you're writing something new, you're kind of flubbing around, you, you do it more and more, and then it gets a little easier. And I've, I've seen interviews talking about like brain scans of people who are like learning a new skill or, or new, learning a new song or practicing or whatever. And it starts out when you first start out, you have a ton of brain activity going on. And then as you get more familiar with it, it like it gets smaller in a smaller part of your brain. And then it moves like to the back of your brain and it actually begins forming like a physical part of your brain. And like your brain actually commits matter 
to that thing that you did. And so like muscle memory, it's not just your muscles remembering. It's like an actual piece of the physiology of your brain that has been built around that thing that your muscles are remembering. And that's why muscle memory exists. It's because you have like a little piece of hard drive that is actually dedicated to that thing that you've done. And it's the same thing with music production. It's where the, I just, in those days, like in 2016, especially it's like, I was doing it so regularly and so much, it was just a self propelling thing. Like every day I was moving on, keeping it moving, keeping it moving, making a decision. Okay. Do I like that? Yes. No. Why not move on Do that? Okay. Forward, go, 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 go. And like, there was a lot of force in that in terms of like, I couldn't stick around something and EQ a drum for three hours, but the, the payoff of that, especially now years after that, looking back, it's like, that was so much more valuable in, in terms of the whole, like keeping a movement, keeping accelerated toward that, that main goal of like finishing a record was so much more valuable than getting mired down in the details. If you remember, if you were here for fine, you remember that like for fine, I was like, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to make sure it's perfect. I'm going to make sure I don't want to change anything else about it. And it, I don't care how long it takes. That, that was sort of my attitude with fine. And I think that was a fine attitude to have. And I think that record came out great. I'm really stoked how it came out. But now I want to have a marriage of those two things. Yes, I do want to have the same standard as I've always had. I want to make sure that it's the best possible work I could be doing. However, I don't want to get mired down. And I definitely feel like in the last like year and a half, two years, it's like I'm getting like hung up on like the ideas of things. And like, that's, that is what I wasn't hung up on in 2016. In 2016, there, there was no, there was no grand, like master stroke idea. And I don't think for anybody that's creating any kind of art that that works. I mean, maybe it does for some people, I don't know, but speaking for myself, it's like trying to think of some overarching idea, trying to think of like, I mean, there was a time where like I spent a whole, whole streams talking about like the hero's journey and like, like plotting out this like outline of like a story that I was going to do this like 12 song epic. It was like these like rock operas or something like that. And it's like, it just didn't pan out. And it's like, did it pan out because, because I couldn't do it or does, did it not pan out? Because that's just not the way that I've ever worked. And I don't know. I mean, those aren't the only two options obviously, but like it, it doesn't seem, it, it, I, I don't seem to get very much work done when I have this like overarching goal where I'm like, in the next six months, I'm going to create something so epic that no one has ever the like seen of it ever before. And it's going to start this way and it's going to end this way. And all of these things are going to happen in between. That's just not the way it works. So I'm going to try to lock back in to the beginning phase where it's like, okay, we need to start this thing. We need to start it as soon as possible and we need to get moving on it and we need to not get stuck. Like that, that focal point is where I'm kind of like coming at it from. But yeah, totally. I could totally see myself doing a VR stream for sure. For sure. I could <laughs> absolutely Cillian and act known and oh wait we did Kygera six months <laughs> act known coming up with a 15 thank you very much for the 15 months of continued support act known via twitch prime and Cillian coming in with 19 months what is up Cillian thank you very very much for the continued support and never apologize for interrupting to continue the support of the channel I wouldn't be able to talk at all if it wasn't for you guys thank you so so very much that both of you <laughs> dingus khan coming in with the 43 months what's up how is it going man thank you so much for the 43 dude crazy 43 months much appreciated catastrophe what's happening the command is still there uh now that you're working with trust in your lighting can't recommend one of these enough will you will you whisper that to me or throw it in the discord and i will absolutely take a look at it uh is actually a class in how your brain works. <laughs> just what I heard. Just what I heard. I'm no expert. I know, right? Amp funny, fine attitude. Indeed, indeed. The puns, they just exist everywhere at Scene of Action. Blue, what's happening? Yes, a roadmap. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I remember uh, for Hope, which is always that record where just this perfect storm happened of like creativity and direction where I knew I wanted it to be like a sci-fi story and the story was being written while it was being made and it was chronological and it just kept you know, one song after the other and I just kept moving on it and God, that record was such a blast to make. I, I just can't even, I can't even begin. And I think the power of that process was the fact that I wasn't looking forward. I was always focused on the, on the now. I was always focused on, okay, where are we now in this record? And like, I wasn't ever like, how many songs is it going to be? How long are the songs going to be? What kinds of songs are going to be? I remember I would finish a song and 
we'd listen to it because that's, you know, listen to stuff over and over again. And then I'd say, okay, what do I feel like right now? Where do I feel like this is going to go? And I would literally start the beginning of the next song after the end of the last song. And it was just, it was such an awesome process, especially after working on a record like Fine, where it was like writing songs out of order. None of the songs really had anything to do with each other. They were all all kind of their own one-off thing, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. But I just love that process so much of kind of everything's connected, but you don't have that pre-planned. It's not, it's not some sort of like formula that, that you're, that you're thinking of ahead of time. And that's what I want to get to. So the immediate focus, while typically I'm, I'm set with all these goals and all these plans and these things I want to do, I definitely have some plans, some like technology plans that I definitely have for this year. I have some definite goals that I'll talk more about in the future of like some for sure things I want to do this year. I wanted to do them this past year and just with everything that's happened, I just, it hasn't, it hasn't panned out, but hopefully in 2021, I mean, there's, there's, there's a few things, not, not a crazy amount of stuff, but like, there's a few very select things that I really do want to accomplish from a technical perspective for the stream and the live shows. But the, the main thing is definitely just start, start working on stuff again, start making music, start making songs again. Like piano feels volume three was so, I don't know. Like, I think cathartic is really the right word. Cause I was just, I, I had most of those songs. I've been, I had been writing that all year off stream, just kind of like here and there. I like write little parts and lyrics. And I was thinking about making that into a full album. And then as I was talking about, if you've heard, excuse my redundancy, but like, it just, it just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. Cause that's just not the way I work. I typically don't write like a whole song and then like try to go produce it. Because if I write a whole song, it's typically like on the piano or something like that. And then it's, it's a piano song. It's, it was written as a piano song and then it kind of becomes a piano song. And all the songs that ended up on volume three, some of them were going to be like full production songs. And it's like, I don't even remember what they were going to sound like in full production because they just, they, they are what they are on the piano album. Cause that's, that's really what they are. They're those songs. I can imagine maybe some sort of twist on some of that stuff made for a production thing, but it's like, I tried it and it just didn't work. It just, it just didn't work. And so rather than, that was super cathartic for as, as far as like songwriting and lyric writing. I mean, I, I just, I really went deep down on that one. I did a really deep dive into like lyrical writing and, and harmony and chord structure and stuff. That was a, a, an excellent exercise. I had an ex, just an awesome time doing it. But, uh, what was that? Oh my God. Hey, thought contagion. Thanks for the, uh, picking up the CDs, by the way. I can't remember. I mean, last night was kind of crazy, but I saw that you picked up some CDs. Much appreciated. Indeed. We got are those some donos rolling in. Got some, we got some donos rolling in. Hey, Stig, thanks for the drop of the 10 spot. Much appreciated. Indeed. Indeed. And Thought Contagion dropping a 10 spot as well. Thank you very much, Thought Contagion, for the drop of the dono. A 10 for and a 10 for. Thank you both. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Um, have thought of ever releasing instrumentals or even full on stems? I do have some instrumentals from some of the stuff. Um, you know, if I'm being completely honest, it's, it's honestly unacceptable that I don't have instrumentals of everything already out and released. I, I really should have that for everything. I do know that there are instrumentals for fine. And I believe there are instrumentals for hype um i'd have to i'd have to check but i think there are but yes i I, there should be instrumentals for everything and moving forward i need to be much more focused on that i i have a huge problem with like once i finish a project i typically it's like i can get cds ordered i can get it on digital i can do the final mixing and mastering and get mp3s done and waves and flack but uh it's so it's, I just have always had such a problem with going in and opening up every song and muting the vocals and then rendering them out. I don't know why, but that's just, it's always been an issue. So I, I need to do that. I, I, it's unacceptable that I haven't. And actually for fine, it was kind of ridiculous because, uh, a, um, uh, the, the dude that I work, that I've worked with a couple times for some licensing stuff he had a uh, music supervisor for a TV show who was interested in some songs from Fine and he needed instrumentals and I had to like, I had to do them because I didn't have them. He's like, do you have instrumentals for Fine? And I'm like, I will in a couple hours. <laughs> I, I just need to do that. I just need to do that. Was there any, uh, was, were there any in specifically that you were thinking of Thought Contagion or were, you, or were you just thinking like generally speaking, it'd be cool to have access to 
scene of action instrumentals and stems. Full on stems, I'm not sure about because that would be even more uh, involved. But I could see it happening. I mean, I could see it if if I'd say I'd, I'd want to focus on getting instrumentals done first and kind of see where we go from there. You know, oh, Blazing Rainbow dropping how many months? 20 months. Hey, I think that's the, uh, that's the, uh, doobly doops. Rainbow, thank you so much for the 20 months of continued support. Much appreciated indeed. Audio file. I'm almost back to that point myself, just trying to write, not because I had any set idea I'm getting templates put together and it makes the process easier. That is so important. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of, I get hot and cold with, uh, David Lynch and cause he's such an eccentric dude, but I saw an interview with him a few weeks ago, which was super, he was just, he was so right in that, um, for the creative process, you need a setup. You have to have your setup because having ideas is one thing. Everybody gets ideas and everybody can be creative and the, the difference is being able to take your ideas and get them out into the world. And I mean, I've talked about that many times, but it's so important that you have a setup and you have a situation where if you do have an idea, that you can just sit down and start working on it. That's so, so, so important. And um, yeah, it's, it's something that it, it took me a long time to realize because if, if you don't have that, then it's so easy to procrastinate and then you just forget. And I've, I mean, I, there are tons of songs that I've forgotten over the years that would have been great songs, but they're just gone. They're just gone. I'd like to hope that maybe some of them have revisited and maybe sparkles of them have shown themselves through other projects or whatnot. But there are definitely some songs that are just there. They've just disappeared. Sometimes I record it on my phone. If I have an idea that can't wait and I don't have access to like the setup, but for the most part, it's like when you have an idea, it's really important for you to have a setup. So you can just go sit down and start working on it. Even if you just get the idea down, you got to get the idea down. Yeah. That's why now when, even when I'm just kind of just messing around and playing around, I usually have piano and vocal recording so that if I do come across something that I, that I want to revisit and, and mess around with, I think, um, or so I'm told, the first song on Piano Feels Volume 3, I think the chorus was like that. It was sort of this weird fluke where I was just kind of messing around. And then I, I don't think I played the, because it modulates, it goes from G to C, and then it modulates to from, um, uh, I move up, and then B major becomes the five of, uh, e flat and it's like it's it's not an unheard of modulation but it's something that i never did before and then when i heard that kind of in my head i was like well, what and then i figured that out and then i had to go back and like listen to it and kind of figure out what i actually did and then i was able to write that chorus on top of that and if i would have just been like kind of improvising and messing around and would have gone right past that i would have been like oh that was cool what was that and i may have not even figured out what it was i may have not noticed it at first and then it's like it would have just been gone and that's happened so many times so setup setup is super super important very very important to have yourself set up and ready to go nine months from honking goose honking goose thank you so much for the continued support tell us the name much appreciated indeed what's going on how you doing Piano feels is almost instrumental. Almost. Totally. Just release the full sessions. I don't know if I could bring myself to do that. They're so messy. That phone recording you did while you were here in the car. I don't remember that. But that's happened a few times, so I'm sure. I'm sure it did happen. Oh, that sounds familiar now that you're mentioning it. I don't think I've very many times played on stream a recording I did on the phone, but I think there was one that I did. Yeah. Do you remember what song it was? A 300 gig hard drive designated for stems and instrumentals? Oh my God. That is large. Murdoch. That's definitely something I'm starting to learn. Is, uh, you just don't think, get things done if you can't work easily. Yeah, exactly. So important. It's so important in everything, every, every part of your life. I was talking to a friend of mine and he was saying there's this new thing with like, with uh, kitchens and people are like not getting ranges anymore. They're just uh, getting like they have their kitchen and it just has, it has an oven, but then it has a bunch of outlets and then they just have electric heaters like in the cupboards. And so like when you want to, when you want to boil something or cook something on like the stovetop, you just pull out one of the, you just pull out one of the burners and then plug it into the wall and then you can put it anywhere in the kitchen, like where you're working. And then it, I was just like, oh my God, is that, that is the most brilliant, brilliant thing I've ever heard of. Like, 
that's so modularly perfect. Like anything, anything just clean and anything you need to cook at any time, you can do whatever you need to do. When I was engineering and mixing back in the day, I always saved minus uh, ones before moving on to the next song. Uh, minus main vocals, of course, back then, using actual keyboards and brain silver call isn't really an option. It was only recording vocal to tape. Oh, yes, I'm sure back in, yeah, in that situation, that would be a totally different situation. The only experience I had with that was when I started recording, I was using a Tascam 4-track and imagining trying to do that. And then, yeah, if I would have wanted to do instrumentals, that would have been, yeah, it's basically like you get one shot, I guess, pretty much. I'd never cook if I had to pull things out and play them in. <laughs> Are you looking for the new diet sensation? How about not having a stove? <laughs> That'd be Danny what's happening. 23 tracks of vocals, one for time code. That is something. That reminds me of uh, Album Unknown. Yeah, totally four. That's the way it's got to be. Matayo's coming in with that second seal breaking month. Two months. I don't know if it's in a row, actually, but I said that, so I'm just going to roll with it. Mateos. Mateos or Mateos? I don't want to say it wrong. Anyway, thanks for the second month. Appreciate that very, very much. I feel like Hot Pocket sponsors somebody to do that made it real. <laughs> I could totally see that. That's hilarious. That be Danny coming in with three months. Whoa. Danny, thank you very much for the quarter of a rotation of support much appreciated indeed yeah the first time i actually used time code was for twitchcon i think two years ago they were asking for twitchcon for uh lights they wanted to run lights off of my setup and they wanted time code with my backing tracks and then they ended up not doing any, any of it <laughs> but that's how you do it when you do it live you usually have all these ideas and then you kind of do what you got to do but uh, that's like the only that was like the first, I mean, at my last job, we did use time code for some stuff, but you know, I am not really familiar, like that was one side of the, of, of the shop that I never really got much experience on was time code and like, um, SDI and stuff like that. I never really used any of it. I just haven't really needed to, I guess. Um, I know that it was, it was more of an issue for keeping sync with stuff back in the day because stuff wouldn't sync right. But I don't know if that was, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I can't even continue to speak about it because I literally know nothing about it never really used it an induction cooktop we don't really use the microwave much anymore so induction that just means electric right or does that mean something beyond just just a plug-in 30 drop frames and we're off it's like heatless electric I am trying to understand what that means. That sounds amazing. I know, right, Sox? A lot of the 2019 clips are gone. Yeah, all the clips are gone. I, I, I just got rid of everything with all the craziness going on right now and everybody getting removed. But uh, I do have the whole library, though, so we might go back and revisit some of that stuff and kind of pull out some of the old gems. I didn't, I didn't straight up delete them. I, I downloaded them first. Thank you so much to whoever built that tool where you could download your whole library. That was awesome. The only unfortunate thing is none of them are dated or anything. So they're all just a random, just a random conglomeration of old clips. Is induction when you're, when it only heats metal, but your skin won't feel it? That sounds like magic. That doesn't sound like induction. It uses magnetic fields to heat metal pots. It's an electric burner under a glass top that only transfers heat when a pot or pan is on it. No way. That's real? It excites the molecules in pots and pans like a black iron skillet, not actual heat. After cooking, you can just wipe the cooktop off. No way. You can put your hand right on the burner? That is crazy. Right throughput? That is magic. Wow. That's crazy. How have I not heard about this? I got to check this out. That sounds amazing. Talk about safety. It doesn't have a cancer sticker on it, does it? <laughs> Maybe only in California. 
do not use if you're pregnant. <laughs> Boils water in less than 60 seconds. Are you for real? No way. How am I just hearing about this now? This sounds like some sort of magic that they were like working on at Area 51 or something. <laughs> I can ruin all your wireless setup. Yeah, I bet. Oh my God. <laughs> the flag will never cook on anything else. That's amazing. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> What's up, Starch Face? I can't remember. Was it Gaflag? I can't remember. I saw in the Discord somebody posted uh, a video about that wireless, or not wireless, about the MIDI microphone. And that dude was doing drum beats. He was beatboxing and turning it into drums with the MIDI microphone. Like, that was, like, such a pipe dream. Like, I mean, as much as, like, what, five years ago? And now it's, like, literally here. Like, I was, that was mind-blowing. So crazy. Like, it, I, that was crazy. You can do, it basically just transmits your voice to MIDI. You can do drums, you can do keyboards, bass, like, you can do anything. And you can adjust uh, the pitch, uh, the pitch sensitivity. So if you're, like, bending or anything like that, you can make it really strict or really, really fluid. And he was showing both on the video and, like, it was crazy because the really fluid stuff, like, I don't know, because I know that, you know, with MIDI, if you're changing the note, then that's a, that's a very specific change and you're going in half steps. So that would be very obvious if you're going up and down, but the way he was using it, like, I think he was transmitting like his pitch into like a filter or something like that. And so it was this, it was a really bizarre sound. I mean, it was very unique. Like, I don't know if I've ever heard anything do it before because it sounded like a voice like it sounded like a voice but it was a synth and i know that that doesn't sound crazy but it actually sounds crazy it when you hear it it was like this is the weirdest thing because it it sounded like a voice but it was a synth where you, you could hear like a it was almost like a voice with an effect on it but it wasn't because if it was a voice with an effect on it, it would be a voice with an effect on it but it was like a voice with an effect on it but it wasn't it was super weird and awesome i'm i definitely gotta look into that it's super neat but yeah the the most I guess not, like, the, the drums, the drums that he was doing, it wasn't that, it wasn't that it was amazing that it was happening, it was amazing that it was so low latency. Like, he was literally doing the drum beat, and I don't know if he was listening to it, and if it was actually real time, or if maybe he laid on the audio afterward, that I'm not sure about. I'm not sure how real time it actually was when he was recording, but it seemed on the video like it was real time and he was listening to the drum beat while he was doing the beatboxing and it was like basically no latency and really really accurate i was just like dude like i mean that's it. it if you get your if you get your input set up correctly i mean you can the kinds of because you think about like really good really well-performed unquantized drums are like the best. And so if you get really good at like beatboxing and then it really translates really well and you're doing like seriously complicated syncopated rhythms and stuff and it's like really translating well and then it's like got that human fluidity to it. I mean, you're talking and you're, and it's like you're, you're doing like an electric drum kit or something like that with it. I mean, you're talking like a new frontier especially in terms of speed of production i mean yeah i gotta take a look at that it's super awesome what was that i heard that hatriot coming in with 30 months that's a triply dubs oh it's giveaway time computer it's giveaway time hey hey look at that well, if you weren't here last night or for our giveaway earlier, then you would be not familiar with the current screen you're seeing because two albums have been added to it. That's right. You can now get circles on physical. I changed the keyword. I got I still got to switch that. I got to write that down. Really? I'm going to write that down on my notes here. 
I gotta fix the keyword thing. I gotta fix the lights for with no one else. I gotta move the wireless guitar transceiver. Somebody asked a question about the wireless guitar. Go ahead and ask me that question again. I, I, I breezed by that and I forgot to answer it and I forgot what the question was specifically about the wireless guitar stuff. So if you're still in here, ask that question again. Uh, move wireless guitar. Was there something else? I think that's it for now. Um, so yes, you can now get circles. Hi, Pope, Hope, Hi, Fire album, Unknown, Fine, Piano Fields, Volume 2 or 3. All you have to do is enter to play. If you win, you'll be able to choose any one of those, and it'll be signed and shipped anywhere in the world to where you are. And it'll be going out tomorrow with all of the other CDs from last night's show. And again, thank you again to everybody so much for coming by last night, and the incredible support was absolutely ridiculous. Thank you so much for keeping this channel going. I cannot do this but for you. Thank you so, so, so much. Good luck. Let's do this. Computer award. Computer Award. Come on, computer! Computer Award. There we go. Was I supposed to be talking this whole time? I was reading the chat. <laughs> It's a Never Me Afraid Award. And the winner is... Shaggy Shane! Congratulations, Shane. You just won yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Go ahead and click the link I just sent you and the rest will be taken care of. All right. Thank you again, everybody, coming in with that new nurturing sports. Make that and all the giveaways possible. All the giveaways possible. Um. Uh, you were asking. Somebody was asking about the um about the wireless, the headphone and mic setup. Is that what it was? Is that what it was? Uh, old man Matthew says, "What is your headphone mic setup?" Uh, right now I'm using um the Sennheiser E300 in ears, which I use for my live shows. But I wanted to be able to walk around with the microphone. So the microphone setup I'm using is the, uh, what is it? It's Line 6. It's the Line 6 wireless uh, mic setup. I don't use it usually, but uh, I pulled it out just for this stream because I was walking around showing the cameras earlier. Was that an organized camera pr presentation or what? You can tell I worked that out for hours in advance. That's going to be great on YouTube. Camera tutorial, sub videos. <laughs> Hey, Adrian, what's going on? Let's see if this works. Let me see. Yeah, 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 there it is. <laughs> Thanks for dropping the crew on the jam. What's going on? I hope you had a fantastic stream. Welcome, everybody coming by with Adrian. My name is Bonnie. It's a scene of action. I was going to say we're kicking out the jams, but we're not. This is sort of a Q&A uh, uh, presentation rig rundown kind of a thing. But uh, what is going on? How you doing? How you been? What's happening? Hope you're awesome. Grand Theft Auto Five. Hell's yes. Hell's to the yes. I have not played Red Dead. You just made me think of Rockstar, and then that made me think of Red Dead. I haven't played Red Dead since I streamed it, like, in December, or whenever that was, or November. Man, I missed that game. You guys like in Cyberpunk? I've been watching a few reviews and a few things about Cyberpunk, and I feel sorry for anybody who has it on the old consoles. I guess that's kind of a problem. But on PC, it seems like people are having a good time. I don't, I'm not hearing too many complaints. I mean, I hear that it's sort of a buggy mess, but that's kind of regular for uh, CD Projekt Red, right? But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to play it at some point, but it seems typically like right now I'm kind of waiting like six months or something to play games. I waited a year on Red Dead. However, there is a caveat to that. I did try to play Red Dead on day one for PC launch, and it was an absolute nightmare. Maybe I got burned. Maybe that's why. You know, I did play something while I was gone. I played uh, Detroit Become Human. And uh, I, have, I have a secret. I, I have a secret I got to tell you guys. It's a little spoilery. So if you're, if you're planning on playing Detroit Become Human ever, uh, just don't listen to me for a minute. It's not a huge spoiler. It's not like a game breaking spoiler, but it's just a little it's a little it's later in the game. But here it goes. When you're when you're meeting so so you know the main 
if, if you're if you're not familiar with, with Detroit Become Human, it's it's based it, it's by the same developer that made Heavy Rain. And so when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, how did I not know about this game? I got to check this out. I loved Heavy Rain. I loved Heavy Rain. I, I really enjoyed that game back in the day. PS3, quick time events, all about it. Great story. I still think about the brothers. Do you remember the brothers from uh, Heavy Rain with the construction site and the water pipe? You, that still affects me deeply to this day. I think about that regularly. I don't mean regularly, regularly, but every once in a while, I think about that. Woo, woo, gets me every time. Woo. Anyway, so I loved uh, Heavy Rain, and so I got I got Detroit Become Human, and uh, and yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's it's one you know it has its things and stuff like that, but it, all in all, I enjoyed it. Anyway, there's a, you, one of the characters you play have as is a, is an is an android that's sort of working with the police department, and it's in sort of like a near future where androids are becoming more human and they're becoming more integrated into the society and some of them become sentient and it you know it's kind of a story about that and it's super it's interesting it is thought provoking it was fun but <laughs> so in your investigation you you end up going to talk to the CEO who made all the robots and the whole game the argument is uh god this is going to tell like I'm so sorry list whatever you thought of me before now just please just just understand it's just a video game okay i just i did what i thought was right in the moment okay and it's a game it's just one of those games where we make choices you know and the choices affect the outcome and i just you know what i said i'm gonna make this choice right now because i think i think i should make this choice and i went to talk to the ceo and and they were and they were talking about you know are 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 our android sentient are they are they real people like do they exist like what, what's the deal and uh and I, I still hadn't really decided who this android, who this character was going to be. Was it going to be a good guy? Was it going to be a bad guy? I had been mostly being a good guy, but I had kind of thought of him as being really concerned about solving the case. And since he was an android himself and he was going through some stuff where was he becoming sentient? Was he becoming like kind of human or was he not like, it, it was sort of like you made that decision and, and it, it didn't feel to me like he was really becoming human. It felt, it felt like he was, he was more experiencing like almost like malfunctions in his programming. That's what it seemed like to me. So I went into it kind of with that idea and uh, you go in and you talk to the CEO and the CEO is just what you would think of like a tech company CEO. And he had all the same copies of this Android that was his assistant. She was like all over the house or like multiple copies of her all over the place. And so I was like, Oh, this guy, you know, he has multiple copies of the same Android. So he, he doesn't value Android life as individuals because they're all just copies of each other, you know? They're like all clones, basically. And he goes, uh, and he had some information I needed. So, so he goes, uh, all right, listen, I'll tell you what. If you really don't think that androids are real people, then you kill that android, and I'll tell you what you want to know. And I was like, <laughs> and he was like, and he was like, oh, so androids aren't compassionate. And he's like, all right, what do you want to know? And I was like, what's the deal with this ship? And he's like, all right, well, the ship is this thing over here. And then this little thing comes up. This little, this little box comes up and it says, achievement. You have gotten the kill the Android achievement. 6% of players have this achievement. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, no. <laughs> I'm one of 6% of players. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was a great moment. I should have streamed it. It was, it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, anyway, that game was fun. That was a good game. I ended up, uh, now this is an actual spoiler. This is the end of the game. I actually probably should stream that game at some point because uh, at the end of it, I, uh, at, at the end, you know, there's a lot of different endings, but basically they kind of come out and there's a twist. <laughs> this is so horrible. Why did I start talking about this? This is the worst. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of forgot about this. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, the, the spoilers will be over in just a minute. This is it. I'm going to say it right now. So you go through the whole game. You've been playing as this one guy. And, and at the very end, you find out the twist. And it's like, and it's like, you've been duped into like doing this thing for like the greater purpose of the evil androids. And it was like, had the couple options and it was like, kill yourself. And I was like, <laughs> my head off. And it was like, credits start to roll. And I was like, no, I was like kind of testing the game. I was like, there's no way like this. Is, this is going to be some kind of twist where you don't actually kill yourself. And like, 
it's like somebody stops you or something like that or like the the hive mind doesn't let you kill yourself or something and nope nope I, I blew my head right off and the game ended and then at the at the end of it 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 showed the um it showed the uh uh it showed like it shows you like the mission schematic of what of what you of what you did in that mission and like all the characters I had like their project their like whole thing and then for that character there was nothing like the whole mission was just gone because I apparently like just I just stopped it I just stopped the whole thing like apparently I could have done like a whole mission of that guy if I wouldn't have killed myself but I was like that's obviously the only thing I have to stop this this is obviously out of hand and evil and I have to do the 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 right thing and that I have to sacrifice myself anyway that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> But yeah, that was good. It was it was fun. But that that was I don't I don't think I've played anything else. But uh, I definitely want to play Cyberpunk at something. I've definitely been as excited as everybody else has. I've been kind of keeping up with Star Citizen a little bit here and there. But I, I I've mentioned many times that with Star Citizen, I'm kind of like I teeter with it because it's like for like a few months I become like really excited, passionate fanboy, and I'm like thinking about the possibilities of this of this futuristic universe that we're all going to live in and it's going to be amazing. And then I spent a couple months being like, why are they still not done? Why, what is stop telling jokes? Why, why are you, why? What? And that's, that's basically my two, my two kind of states of mind with it. And right now I'm kind of in the, why are they still not done. That's kind of where I am right now. And I'm sure soon in the next month or two, I'll think about it. And I'll be like, Oh my God, this, this universe is going to have your own plot of land. You're going to be able to like build a place. You're going to have like ships and like, you're going to have a thing and, like a complaint corn. Then this is going to be solid in the space station. It'll be amazing. But you know, we'll see how it goes. What's up, sir. How's it going? Marathon. What's happening? I can't name. Did I say hi? You've been hanging out. What's going on? <clears throat> I'm pretty confident it'll come out before 2040. I hope so as well. It kind of gives me hope because it said, uh, I guess CD Projekt Red has been developing, uh, have they been developing uh, Cyberpunk since, since 2012? Is that what it, is that, am I correct in that? So it's kind of the same thing. They said it's kind of buggy and stuff. So maybe that's just what Star Citizen is. Maybe they just have a couple bugs. They got to you know, get out of there or something. I don't know. You know. I don't know. Uh, did you talk about that cam setup already? I mean, sort of. Sort of. I went over all the cams and how I get them ingested. Oh, I did want to show you guys one other thing. Thanks for reminding me. Back on topic here. So if we go to... This. No, that's not where I want to be. I want to be back here. And then I want to do... This. There we go. Okay. Now, ah, yes, and then I go down here. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so now we are at. Okay, actually, let's go back. Actually, if I go to that screen, can you see? Yeah, you can see down here. So you can see all my scenes. These are all my cameras for the ring camera down there, the 11 cameras that go. Uh, from each one, and I have them all hotkeyed to the keyboard, so I can go through the eleven cameras with with the keyboard. Hello, I can go fast or whatever. But I was thinking about you know I don't want to have to um, I don't want to have to go through uh, I don't want to have to go through every song and like program these movements. So what I did was. I set up an auto hockey script and I need to bring OBS back real quick. Okay. Go here. Okay. So I set up an auto hockey script and I'm just going to go over it for you real quick. So this is one of the amazing things about, uh, about auto hockey. So this single instance means that I only want this file to be running by itself. I don't want you to be able to run this file multiple times. When you open it, it only runs once. This means that when you press buttons and stuff on the screen, it's going to follow the exact coordinates of the screen. It's not going to follow coordinates of a window or anything like that. It'll follow exactly where your mouse is. I don't think I needed that for this file, actually, but it's there just in case. Okay, so check this out. So this means... 
These are all hotkeys. I think this is Alt and Shift. I think it's Alt and Shift. It might be Control Alt. I don't know. But if you go to Hotkey, if if you go to their website, they will give you an overview of uh, what the hotkeys mean and stuff like that. But this is just basically like I think it's Alt Shift and Q. So that's a hotkey. And then we have like Alt Shift W, Alt Shift E, or it might be Control Shift R, Control Shift T. I can't remember, but it's it's a hotkey anyway. It's a it's a it's a multi hotkey thing. And so those are like the five hotkeys, right? And then what I've set it up is if I hit the letter B on my keyboard, it's going to cue randomly any one of those five hotkeys. It's going to start with the first hotkey and choose one between the first hotkey and the fifth hotkey. So it's going to choose one of these hotkeys. When I hit B on the keyboard, it's going to randomly choose one of these hotkeys and it's going to strike one of these hotkeys. And then here's what these hotkeys do. So I told you that the cameras are set up to my number pad, right? So when you send something, that means press. So press three and then sleep for 75 milliseconds. Press two and then sleep for 75 milliseconds. Press one and then sleep for 75 milliseconds. Yes, I had to go through and type every one of these things out. It was fantastic. Although now if I want to change the delay, I can just do find and replace. Then I can replace all the milliseconds with the new time that I want to do. But I was playing with like 30 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, you know, just kind of playing with it to see what it would, what it would do. And so I did that forever hotkey. So like on this one, control shift W, it's like I go up in the cameras. I go like five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and then come back down zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And on this one, I go five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And then this one, I go three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so they're all just different sort of combinations of the camera presses. And since they're set up for hotkeys in uh, OBS, if you go into the settings in OBS and then you hit hotkeys, you can see, uh, here you go, scene one, which is my camera one, switch to scene, you press one, press zero, press hyphen, that's a hyphen, right? Yeah. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So all those hotkeys are set up. So now, if I go back to my screen, I have that, I have that uh, auto hotkey file running, and I hit B, and nothing happens. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you hit B and it just randomly chooses one of those things. So it's just running, it's running through the scripts now. And then I hit it again. So now this is technically my low camera angle. So every one of my songs has the low camera angle. And then I have a foot switch up on the stage that only hits B. It just, it's, it's a foot switch to B. And then it hits B on that computer. And so if I see the camera in this camera mode and I'm like playing a song, and I see that it's in this angle, I could say, oh, this is an opportunity for me to do the thing. And then I, and then I do it, you know, and it, and it does it. I feel like I should probably speed them up a little bit. Like maybe instead of doing, here, let's do that right here on the fly. So what we can do is um, minimize this, and then I'll do find and replace. And I'll do 75 and replace it with, uh, well, you can't see it now because by hitting 75, it changed the camera angles. But I'll replace that with like, let's do 20 milliseconds. And I'm going to replace all. And now they've all been replaced. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go back and show you now. So we'll go back to capturing the desktop. And so I save, I just save the file. And then if I go back in here and I go to awk, random sweeps, I just started it, single instance. Now it's running by itself again. So now it's in the new file running with the saves. And now if we go back to one, and now if I hit B, it goes much faster, see? Now it's like 20 milliseconds in between the changes instead of 75 like it was. That's a little too fast, though. I think it should probably be maybe... So now we're at, what did I say, 25 or 20? So we should probably move it to like... Uh, maybe, yeah, it's at 20 now. So maybe move it back up to... Let's try, let's try 45 milliseconds. 45, replace all. And then I'll save that file. And then I'll go back to that file and I'll restart it. Come back here and then hit B. Yeah, see there, it's a little more fluid. That's actually pretty good. 40 milliseconds seems, seems nice. Maybe I'll just leave it at that for now. And so now whenever I see this camera angle, I could just hit that foot switch and it'll, it'll go right to it. Anyway, so that's, that's the cameras that, uh, that's the cameras that are on the, um, in that ring right there. That ring. Right down there. So yeah. Uh -uh. 
a bit more light. You're probably right about that. I did have this. I was carrying this around with the camera. It was great. I hear a story. Yeah, I was thinking of like for uh, future songs motion, I was thinking about uh, setting stuff up more like timed. timed. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the other tough things too about every time I do a new variation on the setup is I have to take into account that there are already 100 songs that are finished. And I would really prefer to not have to go through and like recreate lights and cameras and all kinds of stuff for 100 songs every time I update something. And so it's, it kind of puts you in a, I wouldn't say it's so much of a bind, but it definitely, it, it, it qualifies some of the parameters that you have to work in because I don't want to do anything so erratic that I have to, you know, redo stuff. And so that's kind of how the camera angles worked out. And I definitely wanted to go from that, from that side. I knew that the lights were going to be different somewhat just because the room's so much darker and the black absorbs so much more light. And in the last several editions of the studio, I've always had white walls. And I did that because when I started streaming i was using webcams and so i needed as much light as i could get and having stuff reflect all the walls was the best way to do that by having white walls but in my last job uh all the like the ceiling everything was um everything was was dark because you wanted to have as much control over the light as you could so if you want something to reflect then you could put up like a white poster board or something like that to have the light reflect if you needed it but other than that it was best to have the the set completely blacked out so that Nothing would reflect and, and affect what you were trying to shoot. And I wanted to go with that for this, for this time and try to have more control over the light. But I knew that was going to be a little weird for, for some of the camera angles and for some of the DMX lighting stuff, depending on some of the songs. And that's exactly what happened last night with no one else. It's way messed up. Like, it's basically a very simplified kick and snare beat on the lights, and the lights don't shine on me or the guitar. And so for like the close-ups, since there's no reflection coming from the rest of the room, it's like you get a little bit of brightening up during the beats and stuff like that but it's nothing compared to when the room was full white and everything was reflecting and it was just really like bright in the room and i didn't need to shine directly on me for the most part i fixed the dmx lights when i did this when i did this setup and i went through every single cue i've got i don't know let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine times 10 20 uh like so I, i've got close to about 200 cues and so i went through each one and made sure that the ones that were like uh, headshots or guitar shots. I made, I made sure that they were in the you know vicinity of those shots for that stuff. But there were still a few missed opportunities as far as that for like with no one else. And I'm sure some other songs will come up like that too. So I'll just have to write them down as they come up and then I'll just have to fix them during the week and get everything going good. Yeah, the fog looks good. I don't have the fog machine on right now because it's really loud. But oh, another cool thing that happened was uh, I was hoping that I was thinking I was going to have to run more circuits because there was only one circuit coming in here. And I saw this electrical box up on the ceiling and it, nothing was coming out of it. And I, and I opened up the cap and there were two electric cables in it, but they weren't live. I tested them. They weren't live. And so I went to the breaker box and I opened it up and there were two cables coming out of the top of the breaker box. And they said extra from, from attic. And I was like, what? And I tested them and I followed the line. And it was those lines. And so I literally only had to run the line from the ceiling in here down around the sides. And so I have one circuit over on this side and I have one new circuit over on that side. And then I have the circuit that was already in here. So I've got all the DMX and the fog on one circuit. And then I have half the computers on one circuit and then the other half on the other circuit. And so it's like, I mean, there's been no problem. Like back at the old studio, I mean, it was, whew, we were talking extension cords. The fog machine would like kill stuff every once in a while because it was on the same circuit as some other stuff for a while. And then I ended up running an extension cord from another room into that room just for the fog machine. Turns out it was actually on the same circuit as some of the computers the whole time. So who knows what that was doing, but it was awkward. It wasn't working out so well, but now we have dedicated circuits for all that stuff. And I'm really stoked because whoever put the electrical in was an angel and set it up so that I only had to run it from the ceiling down and then hook it up to the circuit board. I had to get a couple breakers, but... No big deal. YouTube for the win. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. And worked out first time, first try. Got to be careful with that stuff because, you know, you could kill yourself. So got to be careful. I, def I definitely don't recommend doing that. Don't try it at home, kids. But it worked out really well. I'm stoked. It, the electrical in here is top notch. Awesome. 
So that's the cam. Anybody got any other questions about like setup stuff related to the cameras or anything like that? I'm happy to answer any questions you guys got. I mean, there's so much going on. I, I, I don't even know. I didn't really want to like try to set up some sort of curated scripted thing or anything like that. I kind of just wanted to kind of roll with it. I might make it a little bit more organized for next time. But because, uh, yeah, there's so much to talk about. I definitely want to talk about the DMX stuff for one of the shows. I want to talk about uh, audio for one of the shows. I want to talk about how the stream PC and how I sync everything up with that. And then I definitely want to talk about software because there's a lot of little uh, third party pieces of software that I use that uh, make everything come together. And I definitely want to share that because there are a lot of things that I've discovered that I wish I would have known earlier that uh, could definitely help some people out down the road. Oh, where the flag go? What was that? Space muffins? Coming in with 56 months. Space Muffins, thank you so much for the continued support, man. 56 months. Holy moly. What is up, dude? How you doing? White Quill in the house. What's up, White Quill? Uh, <laughs> Rip on. What's happening? Do you use let or color correction? <clears throat> I don't. I, that's one of those things where, like, I kind of just roll with the punches. Typically speaking, like, I tried... With, with the webcams especially, I've tried in the past to kind of like adjust and kind of just gave up. <laughs> like just trying to get the stuff to work at all has been such a hassle that I kind of gave up with that. As far as the other cameras, I mess with the white balance and try to get them kind of synced up similarly, but they're not, you know, they're not. I, that, that's sort of like a long-term continual goal that I have is, is to try to get everything kind of a little bit more color matched down the road. And I think that, you know, that's just one of those things I'll continue working toward and playing with. I think it's just like anything else in terms of like, if, if you're talking about like ISO or, or depth of field or frame rate and everything, it's sort of one of those things you just continually learn and get better at that stuff. And rather than go through some sort of like scientific procedure of trying to get everything matched and then like setting everything up that way i mean maybe i'll do that it's it's also weird with different cameras because like the ptz cameras the way that their white balance works is weird like it's got these two sliders on it where it's like it's got red and green and you can go in between zero and like 255 or zero and 500 i think it's 255 it's like dmx interesting but you can go between zero and 255 and you have to control it inside the camera and you can only control one at a time. And so trying to like white balance off of that and change the color. And it's like, it's just no matter what I do on it, it seems like it's more blue or more green or it's just, it never gets like just a nice level balance, you know? And so it's like that kind of thing. When, when that kind of thing happens, I'm just kind of like, I'm not going to be too hard on myself to try to get everything perfectly color matched. I'm going to try to make it look decent. Like I'm going to try to give myself sort of a skin tone, like on this camera. Like even tonight, I changed the white balance on this camera because I noticed I looked a little bit pale last night. And so I was like, okay, well, let me just play with it a little bit. So I, I put it on like cloud, you know, I didn't go into like the actual, you know, into the, into the specific numbers and start like messing with stuff like that. I mean, maybe it's sometime, maybe someday I, I'll learn more about that and then be like, how could I have done that for so many years? I didn't know. But that, that's kind of just how I've done it so far as I kind of just wing it. I look at it. I'm like, does that look decent? And also I do have a hundred uh, percent RGB uh, monitor. I got one of the, Whoa, what's the brand name? Oh, it's, it's a great little monitor. I got it a couple years back for this very purpose. It's a, um, it's like the, it's the, it's the, so it's the monitor brand that's cheap, but really good. You guys know which one I'm talking about? It's cheap, but it's really good. It's like off brand, but it's good. What's the name of that company? I'll, I'd know it if I saw it. I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's a, no, it's not AOC. It's, um, <laughs> ben Q, yeah, cheap, but really good. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Super, super expensive, like the most expensive ever, and also really nice. Um, I can't believe I can't remember their name, but it was like 200 bucks for a 100% RGB monitor, which for 100% RGB monitor, like those are usually way more expensive. No, Spectre is not that. I mean, maybe Spectre's gotten better now, or Scepter. Yeah, Scepter? Scepter, yeah. Scepter, I, I, those are the two TVs that you see. I, I do have separate TVs, so I, I feel like I have a little bit of an ability to talk about my experience with them, and yeah, that, they're, not, they're, they're not the best. But hey, you know, I got the separate TV. One of these I got, I think, actually it broke, so I don't have that one anymore. But the first one I got, it was a 4K TV, and it was where the budget was really slim, and I was able to get a 
4K 52 inch TV and it was like cheap. And so, you know, they came through and it was awesome. But no, it's not Scepter. Uh, God, what's the name of that company, dude? Let me see if I'm, if I got it handy here. Cause I want to tell you, cause it's good stuff. I'm not signed in. I don't want to sign in right now. Oh man, I wish I could remember it. It'll come back to me. But uh, anyway, super good monitor. But it wasn't it wasn't as expensive as a lot of the stuff is. Anyway, so I got I got that one and uh, had 100 RGB. And I thought, well, yeah, if I get that, then I'll totally do it. And it's like I was sort of using it. I don't have it in this setup right now currently. And uh, it's got it is a gorgeous monitor. I mean, it really shows you what you're looking at. But I just didn't find myself really using it from like a technical perspective, but maybe I will at some point. But um, anyway, I really don't think there's much I can really add to that answer. It's just, yeah, I, I, I kind of just wing it and I look at it and I say, does that look decent? Does it look at least kind of close to the other cameras? And then try to just do it from there because all the cameras are so different and their setups are so different. If I had like seven GH5 S's and no other cameras, then for sure, I would, I would just make sure to set them all up. I'd, I'd, I'd find the best look on one of them and then, and then I would just copy that to all of them. But because all my cameras are so different, I kind of just try to wing it and try to make them at least look comparable. And that doesn't always succeed, but it, you know, it is what it is. There was another question I saw. I mean, there were a few questions. Let me see if I can catch up here. Um, is there a way to show outside the truss, like a roaming cam? Is this thing still hooked up? Let me see. We hooked up here. Yeah. Let me see if I can get us hooked up. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, it says it's connectable. Let's do it. Connected. We are connected. Oh, sweet. It kept its settings, too. Sometimes if it's still plugged in, it'll keep its settings. But not always. The outside of the truss. Let's take a little tour here. So if we go, if, if we go straight left from the desk... Uh, this is where all the setup is. So I've got, so I had, I had built this original rack that was specifically, uh, it, it, it was a, it was a nightmare. It was beautiful, but everything was in there and I couldn't get to the cables and stuff. I wanted something where I could get to all the cables and now I can get to all the cables. Then I got the, uh, some of the PCs over there and then the other PCs over there, got the router and stuff. And then I got these drapes that special ordered from a company off of eBay that makes cannabis drapes and stuff. Super awesome. We had these at the, my last job, but now we're outside and we're walking around here. I don't know how well you can see, but there's the fog machine. Pay no, he pay no heed to the cables. And yeah, this is the hexagon truss. We've got all the strobes here on it. And then there's the, one of the sweeper beams. Here's the other TV. Go back over the PTZ. And then, of course, here's the uh, slider, the Ditto Gear Omni slider with the GH5 on it. Here's the uh, piano and, and the other monitor with, so I can reach out and snap. I got the guitars here right now. And now we're behind the setup and you can see everything's modular. I've got all the cables. I've got them Velcroed. Nothing's running into walls or anything like that. Oh, and I got this, this super awesome stuff. So these guys, this is a Velcro carpet, like cable cover. And, uh oh, are we disconnected? And uh, you can cover cable and stuff so you don't trip. And it's Velcro to the carpet. Love that. And then most of the, as you can see, a long line of cables and pipes all going in the same direction. And uh, you can follow that. And it all comes over here. It's all behind there, going that way and stuff. But anyway, yeah, nothing's hidden anymore. Nothing's like, nothing's hard to get to, you know? It's all, it's all accessible. And that was one of my big things about this time, is I wanted everything to be really accessible. ViewSonic. That's what it is, KidVet. ViewSonic. It's a, it's a ViewSonic 100% uh, RGB little monitor. It's awesome. Love the thing. Did I get rid of the C920 sliders? I did. I, I still have them, but I, don't, I didn't put them in the setup just because I, really, I didn't really have a place for them. You know, I, Like I was mentioning a little earlier, I want to try to get away from the webcams. And, so, and, and I only have, I mean, I do have the two that are over here by the, by the piano, and those will, those will stay where they are. 
and I don't really see a place to put the sliders where they where they are on the piano. And then of course I have the two in the back where I could potentially maybe like put one of the sliders on the on the truss or something. And then I don't know. But like I was just thinking about it, and I was just like, you know, those things they're yeah. There were there were just a lot of there were just a lot of things about it. I just the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, powering them and and maintaining them and the way they were put together, they're they're for lack of a better word, I mean, they're kind of, they were kind of flimsy. So it's sort of like a matter of time kind of thing. I mean, it's cool. It's cool to be able to have a slider, but it's like, I already have the GH5 on the slider. I have some other plans for 2021 in terms of that kind of a thing too, that I really hope that we can do. And uh, that will sort of make any kind of other slider obsolete in the first place. And I'd like to try to continually eradicate the webcams from the setup. So rather than make something, you know, more involved like that, I just kind of have a couple C920s back there that are hopefully for the meantime, and then we'll see how it goes. Three-point trust. Yes, it's a triangular. Super cool trust, by the way. Like on the website, I wasn't sure, and then it got here, and I was so pleasantly surprised at the quality of this trust. It's absolutely fantastic. It's like trade show trust, but it's perfect for what I'm doing. I mean, and I shouldn't have said but. I mean, it's just, it's trade show, tr trade show trust, so it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's not giant, you know, it's not giant and overly heavy duty. It's like just perfect. It's perfect for what I'm doing. I love this trust. It's awesome. So stoked. Uh, it is black. Yes. Uh, the wireless webcam. Oh, the wireless webcam. This is a, uh, this is USB to air. It's, uh, from huddle cam and huddle cam is a company that does a lot of webcam type stuff. I'm trying to find the light here. Is this it? Yeah, there it is. So the camera comes in. I uh, I cut the web camera cable down and then soldered it back together shorter so it would just hang out at the headstock, and then that camera comes into this side of this side of the box. It's just this little box right here, is where both the the power plugs into this, the transceiver plugs into this, and the camera plugs in. So the camera plugs in on one side, and then the uh, the transceiver antenna plugs in on the other side. And then the power, which is just a cell phone battery, uh, plugs in here, the side of it. And then uh, I all of this is on the headstock. So this part, I uh, put it like that on this side of the headstock. Is this right? This doesn't seem right. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, it's like this. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So the power plugs in like that. And then the camera plugs in here. And then, so it kind of wraps around like that. It's sort of like a docking station for a spaceship. The headstock of the guitar comes in like that. And then the whole setup kind of sits like this. And then the, the antenna angles down. So the setup is kind of like that on the headstock of the guitar. And it's all contained. I was talking earlier, I, I used to run the cable all the way down the headstock, all the way down the guitar neck. And it was a nightmare. Stickiness from the electrical tape. I could hardly play the guitar right because there's this bulb of wire coming down the whole length of it. It was a nightmare. It's like, hey, why don't I get a soldering iron and I cut the cable? Maybe I can solder the cable closer together. So that's what I did. And here we are. Yeah, it's okay. The USB to air is all right. It's 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 definitely the weakest part of the setup. I know that um Sushi Dragon uses some wireless camera stuff and I'm so irritated that I don't remember what he called it because we were we did a panel together at TwitchCon last year, and I asked him, I was like, what do you do for the wireless stuff? Like, what's your wireless solution? And he told me, and I cannot remember. It was like, uh, it's like two syllables. It was a two-syllable word, and it sounded like, uh, like sharp and hip. It was like squeeze, or cyclist, or something, or squalor, or something. Yeah, squalor. That's what it was. Oh, I use squalor. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, H30, what's the size of the trust? It's, uh, what is it? I think it's, I'm not familiar with that terminology, but I think it's an inch and a half. I don't think it's two inches. I think it's inch and a half. Would it be in a stream info? I mean, it might be. I haven't looked, but it, it possibly could be. Does he have like a gear list and his tech list in his uh, info? A 360 cam in the middle of that not for a show or anything, just like a 360 YouTube video so we can spin around in VR and see all the fun stuff. Yeah, I should do that. I got to think about how I would do that. 
but that would be super cool. EW500 G3s or what series had the blue stripes on it? Uh, the Sennheiser R300s, i.e. 300. That's what the Sennheiser in-ears are. And they're also okay. I get a lot of interference in them, and it's not interference that stops the show, but it's like definitely audible. And I look for new frequencies all the time, but I think it's just, I don't know if it's the, if it's how tight the space is in here or what, or just interference from other wireless stuff going on, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, it works. They're fine, but, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'll never go back from wireless. Wireless is the best. I love being able to be wireless. I mean, do you, how many OGs are in here that remember the days back in the beginning where I not only had the guitar cable running up the side of me into the guitar, but then I had my headphone cable coming up and then like, what did I do with that? Okay. The headphone, ca- the headphones, I'd wear them and then the headphone cable would go down the side of me to the left. The guitar cable would come down from my right. And then the C920 on my headstock, the cable would go around the machine head of the low E string and then hang down to the floor. So my guitar was cabled, my hip was cabled, and my ears were cabled, and I was in the little 6x6 box. Oh man, those were the days. Those were the good old days. And then yeah, with the second version of the studio, that was the first time I went wireless with my in-ear monitors and my wireless guitar camera and my wireless guitar uh, cable. And it was like, dude, never. Like, the first time I was able to like have everything plugged in and take the guitar off and like set it down. Cause I remember like to take a break or do anything back in those first days, like I would have to like remove so many things and like untangle myself and like step over stuff. Oh man, that was something. Those were the good days. Do you have anything for counterweight? What do you mean by counterweight Miller for, for what specifically? Oh, Murdoch. That's right. The arm. Uh, yeah. What is that called? It looks like it says like Pangoni or something like that. If you go on Amazon and you search for like a uh, camera arm, you'll see them. They've got like a, they've got, uh, it's got like a little metal clip and it's, it, it bends in the middle and then it's got a red tightener and there's a bunch of them. Like there's a bunch of different third parties. It's like, I think Manfrotto makes like, is that how you say the name Manfrotto? I've, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say Manfrotto out loud. So I think that's, I think that's how you say it. But it looks like Manfrotto, but it's like there's a ton of different third-party brands that do it that are a little cheaper than Manfrotto because all the Manfrotto stuff is super high quality and super expensive. And this was like 15 bucks, like, but it's great. It's like now it's mostly great. On one of them, the clip, the tightener, uh, if you tighten it enough, the way that the handle tightens onto the part that tightens, it's opposite of how you tighten. So like if you tighten too much and you're really trying to get it tight, then it'll start, it'll go pop and it'll start like unscrewing itself from the top of the bolt and it won't get any tighter. You'll just unscrew the handle. And so then you have to screw the handle back on and then like untighten it to get the handle. It's like the, the handle is backwards tight. Weirdly enough, I guess they did that so that if it ever gets so tight and then you try to untighten it and the handle comes off that way, you would never be able to get it off because you wouldn't be able to untighten it. So I guess that's why. But anyway, one of them broke. But uh, for the most part, they seem to be really good. Yeah, it's like Magic Arm. That's right. That sounds right. A drum cam? Oh, yeah. It'd be great for drum cams. Yeah, the little handle on it would be probably... Yeah, that'd be great for drums. Yeah, that probably... You could almost do it like... You wouldn't even have to do it tight. You could kind of just use it like as a hook on the rim of the drum. Or you could do it tight on like the legs. Or if you're doing it like on your... Um, if you like have a... Uh, what, what am I trying to say? Like a... Uh, you know... You know what I mean? Yeah, no, they'd, they'd work great for a drum cam for sure. Pengshi? I don't, maybe? Yeah, 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 it is. That's what it is. It's kind of artistically written on there, so I couldn't really tell, but yeah, that's it. That's what that one is. I got a, let's see, where's the other one? I have a couple of them. I have that one. Oh yeah, and then I have the one that the G9 is on right now. Let me see if that's the same brand. I think it is though, because I think I just did like a buy it again thing. Uh, I can't see this one doesn't have a brand name on it because it's on the clip, and I think that clip was broken, and this is a different clip. 
but it looks the same to me. I mean, yeah, but yeah, they're great. They're great. I highly recommend those things. Super, super awesome. The same uh, super clamps, Manfrotto clamps. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I was talking about this clamp earlier. That is super awesome. But these, there's all kinds of different brands that make these. Some of them are ADJ. Some of them are like not branded. But they all seem the same to me. This one's an ADJ one. God, I love these clips. I don't know what it is about these things, man. I just love them so much. They're just so heavy duty and like just awesome. They're just so awesome. You always got to appreciate your hardware. Come across some nice hardware. You got to appreciate that. That is some nice hardware. I love those clips. Uh, yeah, Omni slider, the PJ, the, this, this slider right here that it's on right. Whoa, that is out of focus. It's because I took the lens off. Let's get that fixed up here. I didn't get behind it. I have peeking on this camera so I can just see what's in focus. It's a little setting on there. That looks like, that looks, that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. Nice. Anyway, yeah, that's the Ditto Gear Omni slider. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping to uh, elaborate on this year. Super stoked. Uh, let me see if I can go to that. I do not have any of those, no. Not have those. I think. I guess I could just do that. Uh oh, are we going to get audio right now? No, I don't think I have audio feeding to this. Oh, I'm not signed in over on this one. Okay. All right. Should make a note of that. Just sign into all the stuff on all the PCs, just so I'm can get to the stuff easier. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Joey, what's happening? Indeed. Uh, what's up, Beansy? Yes, this this is five. I've been using five, so. I wasn't intending to just get five and use them, but on studio version two, I had the desk. And then if you were here in those days, you'll remember that my piano was sort of like, it was stage left way in the back. And then I had also like that little stage platform thing that was in the corner. So it was sort of like I had a three point system, kind of like I do now, except not anywhere near as laid out as well as, as this is. And, uh, and so I had a stream deck up on the stage with me. I had a stream deck over at the piano. And then I had the stream decks for the stream PC that were set up specifically for that. And so uh, it was out of necessity more than anything that I wanted to be able to control stuff when I was far away from the uh, desk. But since then, it's, I think I've just worked out the systems that I don't need to be. Like I have some, of the, I have some control up, up at the mic for stuff that I need in terms of like songs and stuff. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Now it's coming back. Like I used to not do albums. So I think like, would I open up songs on stage and would I do like sub stuff at the piano? Cause I was so far away from the desk that sometimes like a sub would come in and rather than like run to the desk and like do a sub video, then run back to the piano. I just had like a stream deck there. So I think I might've had more than one stream deck at the piano. I can't remember. It's been a minute, but anyway, it was sort of out of like a necessity thing. And then with this last studio that I did, I was like, I had, ergonomically everything was set up to be so much closer that I was like, Oh, maybe I'll just put all the stream decks together. And once I did that, I was like, Oh, that's the way to go for sure. Just having them all together. Studio version two. So I started out with a, with a six by six box that I built in the garage, uh, because I built it in April of 2015 and I wanted to be able to record vocals and play video games in there without disturbing the neighbors because I had neighbors right on the other side of this flimsy garage wall. That wasn't even a garage. It was more like a glorified shack. And so I built the box in there, not even really thinking about streaming on Twitch. 
I knew about Twitch, but I wasn't really thinking about streaming it. And then my buddy Mojo was like, dude, you should do some of your music in that, in that box and stream it on Twitch. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I was like, I'd have to get some like GoPros and I'd have to figure out how to like make it work. And he's like, or you could just get a webcam. I was like, well, maybe I could just get a webcam. <laughs> and then, so I started streaming in that in June and I did that for until, let's see, I did that until 2018. So I did that from mid 15 to 18 was in that box. And I went from one camera to eight cameras in there. I started in X split in black and white at 720. And then I ended up at 1080p full color once OBS Studio came out. And then I started controlling the angles and foot switch it with foot switches. And I used for lighting, I used two scepter TVs that I got that I did the words on the TVs. And then I did white, white circles on them to make it seem like it was lights. And then those were like right next to me and behind me because the little box was so small. Like I was basically like right in front of them. It was almost like a video wall or something kind of. Uh, and then did that till 18. And then I, st I introduced, I, I broke the box out and I kept the bottom floor of the box as the stage. And then two of the box walls became the light walls behind me for the DMX lighting. And then I got, I got rid of the rest of the box except the desktop. I kept that around because that came in handy later. And that was when I introduced DMX lighting and I got this keyboard, this Yamaha keyboard and had 88 keys. So I had its own little dedicated spot and I kind of made it similar to uh, TwitchCon uh, 2017, I think. In TwitchCon 2017, they had all these like blocks on the stage at TwitchCon that I thought was really cool. And I think that influenced me or I thought about the idea that around the same time, yeah, I think that influenced me to, to I was like, dude, I want, that looks super awesome. I want to do that. So I got like, I ordered like a hundred mug boxes, like those white cardboard mug boxes. And I made a hundred of those boxes and I stacked them up and glued them together around the keyboard. <laughs> so I had this like a little box keyboard thing. It was awesome. And then I had a bunch of other little DMX lights that I don't use anymore. They were, they were these really cheap lights. With DMX lighting, you got to like get quality or just not do it. That's my recommendation because DMX, if it's not quality, is such a pain. Like programming them and dealing with them and like the, their refresh rates and stuff like that. None of that stuff is like, set the instructions are horrible but i i got a uh, adj sent like my adj lights i've had those since the beginning the ones that i've had since the beginning i kept those around because they're so quality like adj makes such quality stuff like like because a lot of the stuff is like motorized and moving and i mean it's like you, you need to have quality stuff by the way anybody who remembers that the sweeper being one of the light bulbs went out in it i ordered a light bulb from adj and before i started streaming like a week ago i was like i gotta i gotta replace that light bulb i forgot and i had a little led that they had sent me and i opened it up and the cable was disconnected. The cable had worked itself free over the past like two years. So I was like, doo, 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 put the cable back in and it lit right up. So I was like, oh, nice. But that was easy fix. But I do have the LED still. I had, uh, since the top light went out, none of the other lights went out, just the top light. I just, I put gaff tape on the other one, on the other side of the stage, on the other light. It's, it's, it's twin. I just taped the top light so it looked like it didn't have, <laughs> it looked like there wasn't even a light there. And that's how I, that's how I dealt with it for like a year and a half. If I would have just taken off the outer thing, I would have totally seen that the cable was out. But hey, you know, sometimes when you got gaffer's tape, that's, you know, that's what you got to do. But what was I talking about? DMX lighting? Okay, yeah, so that was Studio 2.0 was where I introduced DMX lighting. I broke the box out into the bigger, wider room and uh, I had everything kind of out and open and, and around. And that was cool, except uh, the, what I didn't like was how messy it was because there was cabling everywhere and it was just, it was just messy. Nothing was clean. And that was the cool thing about the original box was that I had, I had built sort of like a hollow desk while my cabling and stuff was in the box. And then my interface was off to the right in, in on a piece of plywood inside, like inset in this piece of plywood that I drilled a hole out of. And so then everything was, it was beautiful, white, reflective, uh, like white glossy paint in the whole room with monitors and just a couple interface interface stuff and like the alpha sphere, which I do have the alpha sphere. I, I it's set up and ready to go. I just knew I wasn't going to use it last night, so I didn't have it set up, but it's, it's ready to go. But, uh, and like, it was super cool looking and all the cabling was clean. And then it all went outside of the box and all that stuff was outside. But the problem with the box was it was so small. It was six by six that, I mean, I was dying. It was like, it would turn into a sauna within five minutes. And because I didn't want the neighbors to hear me screaming and doing music and stuff, I, didn't know how to build doors. So I got a, a, I got a, I got a door from home Depot, like one of those doors where it's like just a plate. It's like not even drilled out or anything. It's just like a plate basically. And then I put these hooks in it and I put a rubber thing around the opening of the room. And I put these little like other hooks on the other side of the room and I would pull the door in. I mean, God, I'm amazed I'm alive. I would pull 
the door and I would seal the box, completely seal it because everything was inside the box at the, at the beginning. I had insulated the box and completely sealed it. I would pull the door in and then hook it. And then I would snap tight it shut and lock myself in completely sealed with computers and monitors and interface interfaces and everything. And within five minutes, I mean, we're talking death level. Like it was, it was excruciating. And so then <laughs> in my brilliance, I got one of those, uh, like, um, ACs that has like, you know, one of those, uh, mobile ACs that has like the tube coming off. And so I drilled a little hole in the side of the box and I put the AC unit, this lab <laughs> AC unit right under the front of the desk. And then the tube would go out the box. So I would have AC blowing on me, which is great. But then it's like when I was trying to produce, I'd sit on this stool and then my knees would be hitting up against the AC unit in there because the room was so small. And my God, my, my legs were like feeling like they were going to fall off before the end of the streams because I couldn't stretch out my legs or move at all because I was completely like crunched in there. And I recorded like four albums doing that. Pretty crazy. But I was like, dude, I got, I got to make a change here. This isn't working. So then I, then I broke the box out into the, into the greater room and, and uh, used two of the walls for the DMX lighting, put the piano in there, built a the little box thing and had everything up. But it was really, I mean, it was just so hideous because I, I had these like desks and like the cables were just everywhere. It was just such a mess. Like it was half cool and it was half just hideous. And the box was like really cool on the inside, but just an absolute death trap. And so it was like, you know, both had pros and cons, but there was more space in the room. And so then I was thinking, okay, I want to build like something more permanent. After, after version two version two was cool and it, it looked pretty cool like i still have some of the videos and stuff on youtube and it's like i i like how it looked it was it was kind of neat but you could really tell that it was like in this room you know it was like in a room and like you know it, the ceilings were pretty short and like it just wasn't very it wasn't very purpose built that was sort of like the overall feel of it it's like there was some stuff in a room and that's kind of what it was and so then i was like all right i want to build something that's more like purpose built i want to build a purpose built studio and the twist on that was i wanted to make it acoustically good I wanted to build something that I could like mix a record in with like actual monitors rather than just headphones. I had been recording and mixing on headphones for the longest time. And I professionally worked with monitors in the studio that I worked in, but like in my own work at home, like I didn't have anything really set up for that. And I would use monitors for like mastering and like to check stuff, but I wouldn't ever use it to work on. And I was like, I'm going to make this acoustically mathematically great. And that was a fail, a complete and utter fail. I am no, uh, I am, I am not a clinical, uh, audiologist to to say the least i had all these grand ideas like i was going to build a wall and put the, build the speakers into the wall like you know all the cool stuff you see but i was just like no it just didn't work at all but i did try to kind of treat the room maybe a little bit sort of and i built these like monitor stands and i had my fishers in there which are these i think 10 inch monitors that i got at a garage sale for five dollars and then painted them white they were in the second version of the studio i love those things I still have them. One of the tweeters got broken. I got to replace it, but those speakers are pretty legit. So I still have them, but I put those in there. I got these, I got these, uh, uh, Yamaha. I, they're like, they're like an NS 10, but they were, they were bigger. I forget the name of the model, but I had seen on gear sluts. They were talking about, uh, if you don't want to spend the money on NS 10s, but you want that same kind of sound, you can get these speakers. And they were like 60 bucks or 80 bucks for the pair. And I was like, well, that's a no brainer. And I got them and they really did sound very similar to the NS 10s. I mean, not exactly, but it's like, they were definitely that kind of like Yamaha flat dry sound. So I got those. And then I had my equator D fives, which were always my go-to that I used. And then I got the uh, mini cubes. Is that what they're called? Mini cubes? the little mini cubes that are super flat, kind of like a, kind of like a phone speaker kind of monitors. And I set them all up and I built this desk and I ran all the cabling from like the, um, rack mount box that I built purpose built with like a grade. And I put the Marine vinyl all over it. Beautiful thing. And I built this like umbilical over to the desk and I drilled a hole in the bottom of the desk. It was just this beautiful orange umbilical that was really clean with all the cabling in it. And it came into the desk and all of the balanced cables came from over there in the interface and all the amplifiers I had an amplifier for each one of the pairs of monitors. And I ran it in there and all the wiring was in the desk. And then it came over to these, like to this splitter and it had a splitter for each channel and each channel, one went out to the headphone amp and the headphone went out to two sets of headphones and my sub pack output and then another output went to the equators another output went to the yamahas another equator uh, went out to the fishers and uh, another one went out to the mix cubes and i had these two line selectors from manly is that the guy's name finley this guy made these like selector boxes for multiple inputs that was passive and it had all these switches on it so i could choose each input and then i had my kvm selector so i could 
use any computer and I had the keyboard built into the desk and I had all the cables coming out from inside the desk up to where the like monitors were. And then I had the monitors on the stands behind there and the monitors behind there. And I, and I had everything set up and I built it all purpose built and I hung them. I hung the monitors, the visual monitors from the ceiling with these electric um, powered motorized uh, movers so that when I was like mixing and mastering, I could move all the monitors up so that they were flush with the ceiling and then I could have the room all open with all of my sound panels around the room. I put sound panels in the front. I put them in the back. I put them on the sides where they reflected from your ears, where like the speakers would hit the walls with the sound and then come back and hit your ears. And I measured it and put all the panels up and I got everything done. And I spent like weeks building everything purpose built and like got all the cameras set up and everything set up. And I was like, I'm finally going to be able to mix and master and produce with like real monitors. And I turned everything on and I hit play and it sounded like absolute garbage. And I was like, wow. That was a lot of effort. And it was really packed too. Cause like the Fishers are big speakers and the Yamahas are kind of big. And like, I had built the speaker stands out of these like PVC pipe with like a, uh, like M- MDF board on top. And so it's like, you would hit the Yamaha and it would go like, and it was like, all right, I won't fall this time, but watch yourself. And then next time I'd come by and kind of slip and I'd hit it and be like, free. <laughs> and then there was the night where I was leaving or coming or something and my shoulder hit one of the fissures and it went boom into the wall. And it put this gash in the wall that went like, I don't know, at least an inch deep into the drywall and created this like triangular cutout in the wall. And I was like, my gosh, thank God that wasn't my face. And I was like, okay, this isn't working anymore. And so I took all the monitors out because I was like, I'm not using them. It doesn't sound that good. So I took them out. But then I had this, this uh, setup in there, this rack mount with like three really heavy mo- uh, amplifiers in it for each set of monitors and all the cabling for all the monitors and stuff. And then I ended up never even using them. And I still had the equators on there, which I used and it was great. And the desk was awesome. I really liked like I liked the feel and the atmosphere of that studio, which was Studio 3.0. And we had a lot of great shows in there. And it was a really good time. But anytime I wanted to like adjust anything or change anything, it was such a nightmare. Just because crawling in behind the walls, I'd put up all these fake walls to like kind of make it like an enclosed studio with like space in, outside of it, which acoustically speaking was kind of interesting because the bass would escape out of there. So like there actually wasn't too much bass reverberation that would, that would bother you too much. But if you would go outside and walk in the hallway on either side of the room, it was like this pocket, like around the whole room. And if you would walk in there, you'd get about like six or seven paces in there and the bass would go like, and it would just like, you'd stand there and be like reverberating crazy. And so that was, that was interesting. I don't know mathematically what it means, but like you could definitely tell that the way I'd built it, it definitely made the bass collect outside the room in the hallway in two specific points. So it's like, I guess if you want to get rid of bass in a small room, you could build like a fake little shell inside the room to try to siphon the bass out of it or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that would, if, if that would work if something, but that's what did happen. The, the bass definitely siphoned out, but still all the other frequencies. I mean, it wasn't, it did but it by no means made the room flat or anything like that. It was, it was not a good sounding room, but uh, so I done all that work. And I mean, I, that studio was awesome. I mean, I, I had a really good time. Ergonomically, it was absolutely not awesome because I had built the desk very purpose built and I hadn't tested it out or knew what it was going to be like. I just thought like, Oh, that'll be cool. And I'll have the keyboard here and I'll have this stuff here. And like, I'll be able to control everything. I'll be able to reach everything. So I just built it that way. And then it was permanent. I mean, it, I had to like cut stuff and like I used a router to like get everything perfect and set in and everything. And it looked awesome. Like it looked sick when, when I was done with it, but then actually using it was just, it just was a nightmare. Cause like, you know, if you're not using the keyboard, then this huge pad was there and I was all leaning on it all weird. And like, it was hard to reach stuff. And then when the pad was off during live shows, it's like the keyboard, the piano keyboard is like right here. And it's like to reach everything. I had to go way out there. Like I couldn't like lean and I couldn't like just be comfortable or, or do anything. And I was like, man, I, I just learned a huge lesson that, you know, sometimes you can make stuff that like looks really cool and gives you a really good feeling vibe and, and the atmosphere feels awesome. But then physically it just is, it just doesn't work. It just like, doesn't work at all. I mean, the hanging monitors, when you go in there, like my biggest engaged tweet ever in history of scene of action was a tweet that showed a video of the three monitors on their, on the electric ceiling hangers coming down motorized all together. And it looks like, that scene from star Wars 
where his, uh, where Darth Vader's like little pod where he sits, like comes up and it's like, and like he turns around to talk to dude and there's like all the memes about it and it's absolutely hilarious. But uh, it kind of like looked like that. And I think it, it had some crazy amount of likes. Like it was my most engaged tweet. And like, it was just, it, cause it was awesome looking. Cause like these monitors were like, and they come down and it's like, oh, that's so sick. But like, I never, I never put them flush with the ceiling. I mean, it's like, it was, once I got them kind of set to where they were, that's where they were. And they were like just high enough hanging from the ceiling that it's like, you just, it just was just a little too uncomfortable to like look at, you know? Like it wasn't that bad, but it was like just enough to where it's like if you're streaming multiple days a week, multiple hours per stream, and you're constantly like looking up at the stream or like looking up at the audio stuff, you're like looking up doing that. And then like I had the camera stuff like down here. And so it's like it was just enough to where I was like, oh, this just isn't, it's just not right. Like this stuff needs to be a little lower. So I was like, okay, for the next version, no matter what I do, no matter what happens, it has to be a situation in which I could change it if I need to. If I want to, if something's not working, it has to be a situation in which stuff can move around and nothing's going to be set in stone. I want to be able to like track down a cable. Like if a cable's broken or if a cable's not long enough, or if I need to move something four feet, I don't want to be like, Oh my God, I already ran that all the way back through the attic, out the door, down the street to the McDonald's into the basement and out to the other side over to the wizard of Oz. It's no, this, I can't do it. You know, I didn't want to have that feeling. <laughs> that it was going to be an absolute nightmare. And it's already close to that. Cause like some of the wires I've run, I'm like, it's literally like 17 snap tights. And I'm like, Oh God, I'm going to have to wire cut those snap tights. I'm going to have to pull the cable. I'm going to have to run somewhere else. I'm going to get more snap tights. Oh God. Like just, that's enough. So it's like, I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure that this is more modular. And so that's what I did with this setup. All of the monitors are on wheels and I can move them anywhere I want. They're all set up to sort of like a base level and they angle so I can angle them up or down. So if I'm sitting down during production, I can just angle them and like they're right at eye level right now. It's great. They're like angled up a little bit at me. I can like look right at them. Everything's great. Everything's right in front of me. If I can move the stuff back forward to the sides, I can do whatever I need to do. The desk goes up and down. I mean, it always did. This is the same. These are the same legs as the old desk. It's just not the same desktop at all. It's just a very simple Ikea desktop. Like it was like $9 or whatever at Ikea. It's just a very straight desktop. And I put like the little cable holders behind it because I didn't want to like run things through holes and drill holes and like have stuff all clotted. And like, uh, for instance, the audio cabling itself, I was like, what do I do? Like when I'm actually producing, like when I'm actually need cabled audio, what do I do? Well, nine times out of 10, I use one set of headphones and I was like, okay, <clears throat> well, I definitely want my headphones. So I've got the headphone amp and I'm like, well, do I want to have the headphone amp over here? And then I'll like run the headphones out of it. And like, what do I want the headphone amp like on the table? And then I mess with, up with that or mess with it. Like, do I want the headphone amp somewhere else and I'm running cable over here? Like, do I want to have it like, do I want to build another hollow desktop and like have stuff inside the desk and then whatever? And I was like, no, I'll just have the headphone amp near the interface over there and I'll just run a cable over here that the headphones plug into. And I'll have one for my headphones that I use for tracking and singing and stuff. And I'll have one for the HD 800s that I use for mixing and mastering and stuff. And then that'll be great. And I'm like, well, what about the monitors? And it's like, how often do I use the monitors? How often do I really use like... This is what I was asked. These are the kinds of questions I was asking myself when I was designing this place. I was like, how often do I really use the monitors? Like I use them if I'm like doing something off stream and I don't want to have headphones on. Like I'll have this, them, the speakers turned on while I'm walking around the room or something and I'm listening to music or a podcast or something. But how often do I really use them? I use them to spot check mastering. Like that's, that's like pretty much it. I don't use them when I'm producing. I don't use monitors when I produce. I always use headphones when I produce. And then when I'm mixing... I've been making every album with headphones for so many years now that it's like, it'd be kind of weird to like use monitors for actually like mixing, like from the whole, from the whole thing. I only use it to spot check. Do I really want to run a bunch of speaker cable and power cable and then put two good size monitors on a desk and take up more real estate? No, no, I don't. I don't. I predominantly do live shows and then I do production on the headphones. I don't need to do all that. I don't need all that real estate and all that cabling, all that stuff. Like, why? And then I was like, okay, well, I'll run the headphones for like my production headphones or my mixing. And I was like, wait a second. I was like running the cables. This is like a few nights before I, before I was ready to announce that I was coming back. And I was like finishing up all the cabling and I'm running the cabling and I'm running it. I'm like, okay, I'll put one headphone cable here and I'll put one here. I'll run it along the truss. Then I was like, wait, hold on a second. How much, how much do I switch between headphones? I was like, I use my cans, my clothes backed for production, which is predominantly what I'm doing. I'm mixing way less time than I'm producing. And when I'm mixing, am I using both headphones? No, obviously. I'm switching between the two. So am I switching? Do I need it? I, do I need the switching to be so efficient 
that I can pick up one headphone and take the other one off and it's already playing and ready to go. And like, I have no, I have no weight. And it's like, do I need that? It's like, no. So why do I need to run a cable for it? Just unplug the headphone, plug in the other headphone and put them on. Like that's literally all you have to do. There you go. You just, you just eliminated another cable that you have to run. And it's like, it was that kind of stuff where I'm like, yeah, why would I do, why would I run another cable just for another set of headphones? When it's like, it's going to be such a rare thing that I'm going to be switching between headphones. The vast majority of the time I'll be using one pair of headphones. And then for a, a short to medium amount of time during the end of a song for like a couple hours, maybe I will, I will switch to the other headphones. So I'll just switch the headphones. I don't need to like have all these cables and stuff. And that's, that's kind of what happened with a lot of the stuff. I was like, do I need to run that? Do I need to do that? Do I need that? Do I need that? Or do I just want to do it? Cause like, it'll look cool or, well, I'll do anything cause it looks cool. But like, do I need it because I actually need that to work? That's, that's really the question that I was asking myself a lot. <clears throat> and, um, and that was the answer. Does that answer the question though? That was the question about elaborate on the different studios. So yeah, that's how this studio came about was I wanted it to be, I wanted to have more light control. So I wanted it to be darker. I didn't want to have white walls. And then I wanted it to be bigger because this room is basically the same size as the whole room was before I put up the fake walls. And so it's, it's very much bigger. It's uh, the other room was like, God, I don't remember now. It must've been 12 by 10 or something. And this room's more like 20 by 20. So it's a huge difference, which I mean, 20 by 20 is not very big, but it's big enough for me. I mean, what am I talking about? It's like really big depending on what you're talking about, but it's perfect. It worked out perfect. But uh, yeah, so that was, that was the uh, putting in a ton of work just to be 5% laser. There you go. There you go. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how the studios worked out. And that was the motivation behind this studio specifically was I wanted to have more room. I wanted to be able to use more room. I wanted to have higher ceilings because there's something that I'm going to be doing this year that is going to demand higher ceilings. And then uh, I just wanted it to be modular. I wanted to have more control where stuff is and, and be able to change stuff and move stuff around. I feel like there was another question that I, uh, that I failed to address a little earlier. Murdoch, we answered that question, right? About the arms. Uh, someone asked earlier, if you switched to Sennheiser in your monitors, thought you used to use Shure's. I used Shures years ago. Like I never used the Shures uh, on Twitch. I used Shures. Uh, what was it like? SM six hundred. I think was what was the one. It was like the entry level like in ears, and the box disappeared. The uh, the the transceiver or receiver box <clears throat> disappeared. They weren't the best either. They worked at the beginning, but they weren't the best. And then. Uh, when I was setting up studio version 2.0 and I knew that I wanted to go wireless, then I, I looked into it and got the Sennheisers. I've always, I kind of have a, I, 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 I definitely would have to say that I, I have some brand loyalty to Sennheiser. I think that they make really good stuff. I use mics. I use their mics for my dynamic microphones. I have E935s for my dynamic mics. I use their HD 800s. Uh, I've used their uh, HD 350s and their 250s in the past. Um, right now I'm using the, um, uh, 5609s. What brand is the 5609? Sony. I'm using the Sony 5609s. Randomly, I was looking at different headphones and I heard, uh, who was it? The mixing engineer who mixed, uh, he mixed a lot of the Pepper stuff. Who else has he mixed? I think he's, he's mixed some of like the indie stuff in the last few years too. Like the indie folk stuff. Uh, he has like long curly hair. Anyway. Um, he, he, he says that he mixes in the 5609s, which I, I love producing in them because they have a lot of, um, they have a lot of, uh, low end and high end. They kind of scoop the mids out though, which bother me a little bit in terms of mixing. So I use the HD 800s from Sennheiser for mixing, which those are, oh my God, they're such amazing headphones. I mean, Sennheiser makes such amazing headphones, but, uh, yeah, so I use their in-ear monitors too. I was talking a little bit about that earlier. They're not the best. I definitely get some interference on them, but I don't know if that's Sennheiser's fault. I think it just may be like all the stuff I'm running in here or something. I don't know. Andrew Sheps. That's right. Thank you, Fuzzy. Yes. Andrew Sheps. Uh, no, not Chris Lord Algae. Chris Lord Algae uses the uh, CA <laughs> or CLA 10s. <laughs> if you want the best sound, hey, everybody, 
Do you want the rockiness sound? <laughs> you, you don't know unless you know. It's, it's the best. Anyway, um, uh, what's up, Bubba? How's it going? How's it going? Uh, hold on. Let me let me get up here. I think did I answer that question? Did do you switch them via the DAW or the foot switches? I'm not sure what you're asking about, Cillian. If you're talking about the cameras, um, the cameras. I will talk more in depth about that later, but basically for the songs, the cameras switch from MIDI coming from the audio PC, and then they, they go to the video PC and, and uh, they change into uh, hotkeys and then switch the cameras that way for the most part. Kane, I'm Taser, yeah, yeah. I'll for sure watch the VOD. Do you have any plans on doing another gameplay like you did for RDR2? I, when I think about it, here's the answer to that question. When I think about it, it makes me feel good inside. So I definitely do see that in the future. I definitely see, like, I was talking a little bit about it earlier, but just to sort of like recap, I definitely for now am completely focused on making new music. I want to make a record. I want to make, I want to make a record. Like that's basically as simple as it is. I want to really, really focus and hone in on, on making some new music. Some just, I just really want to, I just really want to produce some new full production work. And, and I want to focus on that for the time being, for the immediate future, for the time being. And uh, really just get rolling on that. Now, as soon as, you know, who knows, that, that may be until February, maybe until March. Typically, in the past, when I really lock in on something and I just start going on it and I really get the focus in, like I really, really want to try to do this time, um, it takes like maybe a month, maybe two months. I'd say two months is probably a good idea, good, good average of probably how long it'll take to like just slam through a new album and just write something from start to finish. Maybe three months, like maybe late February is, when, is, is the latest I would think that it would take. I can't, I can't see it taking much longer than that. I just can't see it. I, I, maybe it would, but if I, if I really lock in, like if I really say, okay, we're doing this, which I have every intention of doing that, I'm, I'm really, I want to I wanna get moving on it. Uh, anyway, point is that uh, I could absolutely see that as soon as that's done, like I could totally see taking like a week or two weeks and just totally just taking a break from all that and doing, any, doing one of many things like, I've thought about totally doing like another Red Dead, re like a playthrough of Red Dead without finishing the story. Because if you were here for, the, for that, you, you will remember that I absolutely adored that game. I loved that game so much until the end. When, when you got to the epilogue, I was like, are you kidding me? That jumped the shark so hardcore. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but that game jumped the shark so hardcore. I was... I, it was nothing short of. I don't even know. I I don't know. I don't know what the word for it is. But I was, it was I was shocked. I was shocked at how hardcore that game jumped jumped the shark. It really did, for me personally. Granted, I didn't watch the first game. Like I didn't watch a recap of the first game. So I honestly, it's some of it's on me. I've thought a little bit about that since then, and I think some of it is on me for not understanding and realizing sort of the inevitability of some of what happened coming to pass. That was really tough to finish that sentence. So some of it, I do, I do accept responsibility for sort of the overarching position that I put myself in to experience it the way I did. Uh, but I didn't realize that you needed to, I didn't realize to get the full experience, I should have done that. I didn't realize that I should have watched a recap, but I should have, I should have watched a recap of the game, like watched a 20 or 30 minute YouTube video, really giving me an in-depth sort of rehash of the original game. And then I think, I think it would have been much less jarring for me, but I went into it super fresh and I was sort of confused. And then once the end came around, I was just like, what is going on here? So anyway, point is without kicking that horse too much more, uh, I could totally see myself like taking like a week or even two weeks and just, just just going hardcore in that game again and just really going out and trying to explore more areas of the map. And yeah, dude, God, I love that game so much. I'm, I'm, I had such a blast playing that game. Thank you so much to everybody who hang out, hung out for that. That was, that was really a good time. I could see myself definitely maybe doing cyberpunk in a couple months after it kind of settles down and a lot of the stuff, the, the preliminary stuff gets worked out. Um, I, I, I'm not sh sure if there's too many other games that I'm thinking about specifically right now. Did, did Kerbal 2 get delayed till 2022 or is that still supposed to come out next year? I know it was originally supposed to come out this year and then of course everything changed for everything, but I don't know if it's coming out next year or if it's coming out 2022, but I, de I definitely want to play that game. 
And I feel like there's like one or two other games that I might play. But yeah, I could definitely see that happening. But for the meantime, for sure, I, I want to focus absolutely on, on the music for sure. But I could definitely. It would, it would be a ton of fun to play Red Dead some more. And we definitely got to rescue Bob at some point. Or is it Jeb? Was it Jeb or Bob? Was it Bob? Space Muffin's going to bed right on. That was a while ago, so I hope Space Muffin's is having a good sleep. <clears throat> for the circuits, did you use some RCD for production or classic breakers? I don't know. I got the ones that were already there. Like, I know that you're supposed to get the ones that are already there, so I got, I got those. <laughs> Are you are you talking about the ones that like when you if it shorts out it likes it like cuts it before it shorts it's like it's like extra protection cuz I did not if that's the case I like the outlets are just like are I got uh 20 amp breakers and 20 amp outlets is a standard setting range cuz it's like the one by 8 bits 256 different values ah got it there it is You gotta get one of those cool cards with all the colors on it. Those always look pro. I do have one of those. A color checker? I, I do have one of those, as a matter of fact. And I have used it. Uh, how many PCs? So, in my live show setup now, I've got the audio PC for music. I've got the video PC for all the main cameras. I have the ring videos. This, I call it the sweeper PC because it's the camera's sweep. Uh, so the sweeper PC, <clears throat> and then uh, the lighting PC, and the lighting PC trivia, SOA trivia, that was my original PC. That was the first PC I ever got in 2012. It's running a 3820 to this day still, still going strong. It used to be my stream PC. It was my very first stream PC, and it's now the lighting PC, but that's still, that's still, still going. And then the final PC is the uh, stream PC, and the stream PC is the old audio PC. I used to use the, uh, I had a 5820 and I used that for audio. And then I upgraded my audio PC to a 9900K because I, I needed high, at the time I needed the highest IPC per core because in Reaper each track uses a core. So I needed as low latency as I could get at the time. That's what there was. I think if I were to do, if I were to get a new audio PC right now, I'd probably go with AMD because I think the IPC on AMD is really good now, right? I mean, AMD is pretty much destroying Intel on every front now, right? Uh, but so I'm using the 9900K. So the 5820, I ended up, I ended up wanting more PCIe lanes, or yeah, I ended up wanting more PCIe lanes or PCI lanes, yeah, PCI lanes. I wanted more lanes, and so I upgraded the 5820 to the is it the 6820 or the 6800? I upgraded that CPU. And that unlocked the other CPU lanes. CPU lanes, PCIe lanes. I don't know. It unlocked more lanes, so I could get more, uh, so I could get more cameras in there. I could utilize all my lanes stuff, and so I upgraded that. So I still have a 5820. So if you or anybody you know wants a 5820 for for a good price, hit me up because I have a 5820 just chilling. Uh. Is that everything? I think that's everything. And then I have a uh, I have a gaming production PC that I don't use during live shows, but I use for everything else, like for all my video productions, for gaming, all that stuff. And that's got a uh, it's got a thirty nine hundred and a uh, twenty eighty Ti and uh, sixty four gigs of RAM. I had gotten one hundred twenty eight gigs of RAM because I thought I needed that for the audio PC, and then it turns out that that was just a mistake. God, you was anybody here for that? I spent like two weeks trying to mess with the the string libraries to. Oh my gosh, that was just, that was something else. Hey, look who it is! Moonshines! 16 months, four thirds of a rotation. Thank you so much for the continued support. How is it going? How have you been? What's happening? Thank you very much for that. All right, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Uh, almost back. Is the, is the floor flame retardant? Well, it it is in the it is in the aspect that I don't have that fog machine anymore. So yes, I learned what I would call three pin trust is actually hexagonal. Well, it's it's not. Yeah, it 
is a hexagon when it's all put together. But yes, it is three pin. <clears throat> or three point, yeah. How many cams do you want to have for streams? Monty, yes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, are you are you guys familiar with Pimax? I uh Oh man, that's one of those that's one of those things where I'm like, man, it's such a decadent toy, but wow, what a toy. It's uh it has dual 4K displays and it's wide FOV. It's like the Pimax headsets are like this wide, like they're like this big. It's it's absolute insanity. I've been following them for like a couple years now and they're actually shipping them now. It's crazy. Uh Oh, is he live right now? That's funny. In the box, you never had to move anywhere, so it worked. That is absolutely right. What transmitter are you using, uh, KidVet? Uh, what transmitter are you using to transmit the video for the guitar net camera you just showed us? That is, oh, what transmitter? That's the USB to air by HuddleCam. <clears throat> thank you, Beansy. Thank you, thank you. Like sandbags on the base of the truss. Since the truss, since the truss is a hexagon and basically like a circle, I don't have it weighted with anything. It's just free. It's just basically floating. Hasn't moved yet. And that actually was really great because when I first put it together, I was able to move it around the room. Like I was moving it to all different places after I had it all set up to see like what worked best for the setup. And it ended up working best like this. So that was actually really cool. But yeah, I don't have any counterweights, no, no sandbags, nothing on it, because it's 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 freestanding under its own weight. It's kind of like a, like you could almost put like some, you could put some branches on top of it, It'd be like a roof, be like a little little shelter, be a little shelter. Oh, geez, I didn't realize I was this behind on the chat. Okay, yeah, some of the stuff I've answered. Let's see. Focus peaking. That's that. Right, 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 right. Empire interior from Star Wars. Grand use. What's going on? Uh, B and H is expensive with the clamp. I'd pay sixteen for one clamp, not forty-two. Yes, B and H is expensive, but they do have really good quality stuff. So one of my highlights of Twitch. Oh, that's awesome, Beansy. Thanks, man. The early days, Twitch, Twitch, the first TwitchCon San Diego. Tariel, what's happening? Remember a few years ago, someone asked you if you're interested in all bringing emails on board a scene of action. I think your answer was some of the effect of not actively looking to bring anyone, but who knows? I was wondering if that's still where you're thinking any interest to deviate from the solo stuff at all. No, no. The longer, the more I think about it, the more I, I come to just accept the fact that I'm, I work best doing the solo deal. It's kind of just how it, that's kind of how it's been. And I've thought about it over the years, but it's just how I roll, I guess. You're going to say 2020 proof submarine. <laughs> Especially if they have the dip switches. Oh God, that's the worst. That is the absolute worst. Oxygen is a crutch. Okay, so we're talking about the box there. Okay, I'm catch. I'm almost back. I just want to make sure I don't miss any questions. Uh, can you repeat all of that, please? Bass traps and inverting some of the speakers help with that. Yeah, I was thinking about doing bass traps, and then I just was too lazy to do it. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to cut the room down any more than it already was. It was already so small. And then I was thinking about doing bass traps. And I God, I remember now. That's reminding me. Like I watched so many videos back then, just about like acoustic treatment and people just making stuff and testing out how it worked and reading so many like Gear Sluts articles and stuff and just just getting so demoralized. The more I learned, the more I realized I knew nothing about acoustic treatment. What's up, Grid? I am indeed. I never thought about them being flat for acoustical reasons. Uh, what? Remind me what you're talking about. I thought you just did it because they look super badass. Are you talking about the TVs that were hanging from the ceiling or... Thank you, Echo. What's going on, Echo? How you doing? How you doing? 
uh, need some panels and learn how to do projection mapping. Are you talking about like those LED walls? Because I would so love to have those. Those things like those LED walls are like the most expensive pieces of gear I've ever seen in my life. It's like for like a 12 by 12 square, it's like $3,000. And I'm just like, dude, they're literally light bulbs. Like what is going on there? Yes, that is the tweet, I think, right? Yeah, that's the tweet. <laughs> God, that's so sick. It is awesome. Keynote, did I say hi? What's happening? How or where does he read? Uh, what, what are you talking about? What? What, 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 what? I don't know why I'm using this this monitor. I've got chat everywhere. I think it's because I'm controlling. Dude, so this KVM, so this is pretty cool. This KVM, uh, so if you're unfamiliar with KVM, KVM stands for keyboard keyboard video and mouse. And so it's, you, it's so you can control different computers with the same keyboard and mouse setup. And when I started streaming, I started with a two KVM, two switch. And then I went up to a four switch for the last studio. And now that I'm using uh, six PCs, uh, I needed more than that. So I found this one, which has eight. And it has a little breakout box. So another opportunity to not have to build anything into the deck, into the, the deck, the desk. Uh, because if I was going to have to have the whole box up here, the box is huge. It's over on the rack. It's like 19 inches wide and it's like an inch and a half tall. And then it's like five inches deep. And so I would have had to build it into the desk. And then I would have had to have like six cables going out of the back of it, all routing back over to where the computers are plug it into every computer for the mouse and keyboard. And now they have KVMs where they have breakout boxes like this. And it's just one little tiny uh, old mini USB cable that comes to this box. And then you just hit the button for the PC you want. The only drawback is that unlike my last KVM, it doesn't do instantaneous switching. So it literally takes like two, two seconds, at least two seconds. I would say, let me see if I, let me, let me be reasonable about this. One, two, three, four, Four seconds. That's how long that took. One, two, three, three seconds that time for that computer. So it's like I'm used to, on the old setup, it was instantaneous. And so that's the one drawback of this KVM. It's sort of like, you know, you get the ability to control more, but it's it takes a little time. So I feel like I'm kind of like, I feel like kind of locked in. Like if I'm already on this computer, it's like, do I want to wait four seconds so I can control this, the chat on that on that screen? Or do I want to just stay over here it's kind of a bummer but it is what it is because i don't know if there are any kvm that you can have up to eight inputs and uh or eight outputs and it's instantaneous that would be awesome though if anybody does know of that solution i would love to know because that's it is a bummer to have to wait that long egg i didn't see the questions about the eggs I got eggs figured out though. What you do is you, especially scrambled eggs, I can do like the Denny's scrambled egg, you know, where it's like basically like an egg pancake, like very thin and fluffy. You, you, you uh, stir it up with like a fork and like a little bowl. And then you, you have plenty of butter, not too much butter, but it, plenty of butter. And then you get the pan nice and hot, like medium heat, nice and hot. And then you put the butter on and the butter should sizzle. It shouldn't burn the butter, but it should sizzle the butter. The butter, go butter goes out and then you pour the egg into the middle of the butter. And then as the egg goes out, it pushes the puddle of butter out. And then the butter fries the edge of the egg as it goes out, kind of like you would do a pancake to make a fried edge of the pancake. And then you start moving it around. So the egg starts sliding around on the pan. And then as you see the outsides of it start to cook well, you know that you're about to burn the bottom part of it. So then you push the pan forward and then you quickly pull it back and then that flips the egg like a pancake and then it slaps down. Watch out, don't splash yourself with egg goop. That's the one problem you gotta watch out for. And then you see that it perfectly cooks the other side and then it's basically like a perfectly little fluffy flat egg pancake and then you can pour it out of the pan onto the plate. At least that's how I do it. No, this is in my own place, Eagle. That was one of my biggest things was like, I've, I've, I've had practice spaces before and I've uh, worked in studios and the only thing I was going to try to do a one, two there, but 
really all I can say is there's nothing better than, you know, getting up and going to work. <laughs> I mean, that's just really the, that's really just the reality of it. I mean, the truth is I love not having to drive somewhere to the studio and that's, just, that's basically it. That was sort of like my thing. Like, I don't want to have to drive somewhere to the studio. I mean, I could, I could probably have a bigger place and, and probably have more, whatever, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to everything, every choice you make in life, I suppose. But my choice was, Hey, if I get up and I want to get rolling on stuff, I could just go get rolling on stuff, you know, grab some coffee and let's go. Turned my old room into a studio, but I have seriously outgrew this room. Hey, at least you have something. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, you just always got to remember how, you know, I, I always try to think about like, yeah, you know, it's been one week. Since, uh Oh, band DMCA. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, no more jokes. I, I, I try to think about that. I try to think about that all the time. I just try to think about just how, how just how far, how far this has come and just how lucky I am and how fortunate I am to be able to do this. And just, I'm just endlessly grateful to the community for supporting this. I mean, the only reason I'm able to do this is because of this community. And it's like, I mean, I, I fantasized about a room like this with gear like this five years ago when I started streaming, I fantasized about it. Like maybe someday, I mean, trust, are you kidding me? Trust? Like that was just like, no way. DMX lighting pfft, out of the question, not to mention automated multicam, like, pfft, like it's ridiculous. And now to like, after, after over five years, to kind of set stuff up and then hook up all the cameras and like they turn on when I turn the computer on and like I hit play on the, on the song and like the lights cue and like the cameras switch and I'm not sitting here going like, God, I've tried everything. It's not working. I don't know what to do anymore. Is it the cable? Ah! I mean, it's just, it's pretty crazy. And it's just, uh, you know, I just try to think back and just like think back about like what it was like. But at the same time, just as I was talking about earlier, it's like, I think back to like those, those early days. And those are some of the most productive, best days. Those days where, where I was really strapped for time. Like I had to like, I had to keep moving. There was just such a pure defined goal. And I think that that's really, you know, you can really get lost in that. You know, if, if you'd kind of just, it doesn't work just to have like sort of some idea about maybe somewhere you'd like to be in the future. Maybe if everything would align and it would work out, it's like, you can't do that. That's not how you do anything. You have to like say, okay, that this is where I want to be. It has to be realistic. And you have to say, if, if I could do something that would be possible and I could do it in a certain amount of time that wouldn't be forever, what would that thing be? And I, what would I want it to be? And what could I strive for? And once you decide that and you go for it and you orient yourself toward that, there's really nothing that can stop you. And there's nothing that will stop you. There are things that might get in the way. There, might, there are things that might delay you. There are things that come up and life comes up and things happen and everything happens and everybody goes through everything. But if you, orient, if you orient yourself toward a goal and you, and you work for it, there's, there's really, at the end of the day, realistically speaking, there's nothing that can stop you. And you just have to, you just have to remember that. And even if, even if you're in a position where you can't think about you know, next year or next month or even tomorrow, just think about today. Like, what do you need to do today? What, what, would, what could I do today that will make today better than yesterday was? And how can I set myself up so that tomorrow will be even better than today was? And if you just go with that and go forward with that idea in mind, and not let yourself get hung up on yesterday and who you were yesterday, then nothing can really stop you. And it's, it's, it's just crazy to think about this. I mean, I think about uh, uh, some of my peers like that I've worked with before and we've gone different ways and, you know, different people have gone different directions and have had various levels of, I guess, what you would classically call success. And it's like, it's just so weird. You get to a point where it's like, there's this idea of what people think that success should be or, or, or what, you know, what not failing is. And it all comes back to how you feel when you wake up in the morning. Like, are you excited about what you're going to do today? Or are you not? And it's, I feel that I've been lucky to have been in situations where I feel like I know I should be excited, but for some reason I'm not. And, and exploring that and figuring out why that is, and then discovering what it is that you need to do to remedy that. And I feel really lucky and fortunate that I've gotten to do that. Cause I feel like a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to find out that, Hey, this is supposed to be candy land. Why aren't I chomping on some candy and loving it? This is weird. There's some rainbow gumdrop waterfalls over there, but it doesn't feel like I'm in rainbow gumdrop lollipop land, you know? But, um, anyway, so what I'm saying is don't, 
don't uh, don't get bummed out that you know you you're outgrowing outgrowing a room that you converted into a studio. I mean, you have a room that you converted into a studio. That's amazing. If you have a place where you can get the tracks in and you can do the work, I mean, hit songs, record breaking number one world famous songs are being made on smartphones. You know, it's like what what's so much more important than the situation. In, in terms of like gear or place, what's so much more important is your mindset and like what you want to make and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to, what you're trying to give the listener an opportunity to feel. Were you, did you guys stick around for Athos last night? Oh my God, that was so funny when uh, that song came on and I was trying to enjoy that song because it was so unique. The, the dude was singing and like the music was interesting and I was like, I was like, this is interesting. I'm like, I can't, I can't decide if I like it or not. And then, <laughs> and then the guy starts singing the next verse and he goes, and then I got into the car and I went to the mountains and Athos goes, all right, you can stop telling me about your day. And he hits stop. <laughs> oh, that was the best. Oh, I was, I was, I was, I was lurking on that. It was awesome. It was amazing. I don't know if anybody was, is in here who was in there last night, but it was, it was so funny. Cause he was like, he just, he said exactly what I thought. I was just like, yeah, why are we, why are you telling us about driving to the mountains? Like, why is, why is that supposed to be something that is worth me hearing about right now? Like, <laughs> I don't understand, but that's the whole point. Music is so amazing and it's so powerful and you can do so much with it and you can, you can elicit so many emotions and so many feelings and, and you can go so many places with it. And what, what matters is getting to those places. And if you can do that with a phone, if you can do it with a laptop, if you can do it with a full geared out studio, what matters is that you can do that. Because some people have everything you could ever imagine that you would want to be able to do the most amazing things. And it's, it's being stifled and it's being not taken advantage of. And, uh, and it's, it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. You want to see people use everything in their power to do the best things, to do the greatest things, you know? And so much of that just starts with your, with your mindset and you really just got to get that straight. And if that's, if, if you, if you know, it's just amazing thinking about meaning, what meaning is and, and the meaning of life and, and, and how meaning is really just orienting yourself toward the goals that you yourself have set for yourself. And if you do set, set those goals realistically, realistically, and you look at, here's where I am, here's where I want to be. And if you work toward that, that will, that will translate into meaning. Working toward that and knowing that you are working toward that will translate into meaning. And it's, it's crazy how technically true that is, you know? I mean, it is a deep truth that when you work toward a goal that you feel is a right goal that you need to work toward and you want to work toward and you actually do the work toward it. It's just amazing how that technically, physically translates into an actual feeling of well-being and meaning. And it's just insane. And that's, I just feel so lucky and fortunate and so grateful that I get to feel that on a regular basis. Because I love doing this so much. And I, and I love that I get to get up and do it. Uh, I'm almost caught up. I'm almost caught up here. I think I'm, yes, I'm very close. I'm very close. Are you going to show up how you set up the lighting? Uh, Four is asking. Yes, yes. I definitely want to do a stream where I talk about the lighting, uh, talk about the DMX stuff. DMX is, is it's, the DMX stuff is so insane. It's like there's this secret world of DMX knowledge that is supposed to be secret or something. I was really lucky. I found a YouTuber. I think his name is Joey or Johnny. And he had a couple uh, tutorials on an older version of my DMX, which is the software that I use, which ADJ makes. And, uh, and he was sort of like my first foray into that. And so I ended up going with my DMX, thankfully because of his videos. And, uh, I even went so far as to like, I think I wrote him an email and just thanked him for doing them. Cause it was just like, dude, like there's nothing else out there. And, uh, and then to get support for that, I actually had to join ADJ's Facebook group, which is just an absolute nightmare. At least it was when I was dealing with it and how I remember it because, uh, it was like a wall. So it's like, it's not like it was a forum where like there were, there were searchable threads and stuff like that. It was literally like a, a wall and if you had a question, you would ask it and hopefully somebody from the group would see it and answer it. I mean, it was just like, whoa. But I ended up being able to get through it and I figured it out and, and definitely I'm much more comfortable with DMX lighting and, and cues and stuff now. And I definitely want to go through a, want to go through that and how it works and how everything's queued up and, and all that stuff at, at some point, you know, and I definitely want to do these at least weekly, like maybe Sunday nights we'll, we'll do this where I can go over, uh, set up stuff 
I mean, tonight was completely unorganized. And if you're watching this on YouTube someday, my sincerest apologies <laughs> for not being more uh, succinct and clear in uh, my description of the setup, but uh, we'll get better as we go along. 650s, PJS 650s. Yeah, any of the Sennheiser headphones are just, they're great. They're great. Uh, Buyer Dynamics, I've never used them, but I would be happy to check them out. Uh, Tyler Bubbs, has anyone ever tried to give you a record deal? I did have an indie deal back in the day uh, for a couple of years for the first uh, EPs. And then I, I, did, I did a record label showcase the same year that I did the Not So Silent th Night thing with opening for Muse. Like I did a record showcase the day after I, we won the competition to, play, to open for Muse. We, we did a, like a local band competition thing that the radio put on. We won that the day before we did a record label showcase in LA. So we won that at a, we, we played that show and then drove all night down to LA to do the record label showcase. And then at 5 a.m. in the morning, got a call that we won as we were almost to LA. So I didn't sleep all day in LA. And then we played that record showcase and it was just, it was the most surreal couple of days of my life. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, but uh, yeah, that never really turned into anything. It, it was, we, we did get an interest from a couple labels, but it just, it never really panned out. And honestly, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. It, it wasn't like, I'm trying to remember it. I mean, it was a while ago now. Like I'm trying to remember like what it, what it was like. Cause I mean, anything like that, if, if any kind of opportunity or any kind of thing like that happens in your life, it's always, you know, it's, it's easy to like look back on it in retrospect and have some sort of like organized thinking on it and like, oh yeah, this is what was happening. And this is what I was thinking at the time. This is how it went down. But really everything was so crazy. And at that moment I was so absolutely ecstatic that I was actually going to get to meet like Matt Bellamy and Dom and Chris and actually like stand on the stage and play my music on the same stage as them and like getting there and actually like getting to like go look at their gear close up and just like hang out all day and work with like the professionals that actually work in that environment professionally on a daily basis like those stage crews and stuff that like work those kinds of shows and stuff like that I mean I had never been exposed to anything like that so I was so absolutely ecstatic about that that the record label showcase thing wasn't really it, it just it it was like sort of I don't know it just didn't really ever it, it really didn't ever hold like some sort of weight. Like, you know, it's like one of those things where like the Eminem song, like I don't even want to say the lyrics because who knows if that'll get DM DMCA, but you know, the song I'm talking about, it's like, you know, chance opportunity to in lifetime, you know, it's like, it's like you would think in that kind of situation, that's would be it. But it's like, I don't know. It was, it just felt weird. I've always felt weird about that kind of stuff though. I've always felt weird about like the, the more like industrial side of like the music industry. And I think that's why I feel so comfortable doing this is because there's no, there's no emails, there's no phone calls, there's no contracts, there's no like, oh, well, that's okay. What, what songs do you have ready for this? And then we're going to push this out and then we're going to try to promote it. And then uh, da, 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 da. it's like, I, I had enough exposure to that on the indie side of everything when I was like getting started that I was just like, eh, eh, I don't know. I just never was really into it. I was much more into like making music. I definitely wanted to write and record and that's why I started working in studios so that I could like start recording, but it was always because I wanted to record my stuff. I mean, I really enjoyed recording bands and working with bands and meeting all kinds of people and getting, you know, being able to like work in that environment was absolutely amazing and I loved it. But I don't know, the more I got, the more taste of the industry that I got, the less I was interested in it, I guess, if that makes any sense. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, I have friends and peers from that time who have gone off to do amazing things in the industry and have been incredibly successful. And I always wondered like, what would I feel like, you know, if like some, you know, years down the road, you know, people were doing stuff and like people I knew were doing really crazy things. How would I feel about that? And I just, I guess I'm just really lucky and, and fortunate that I'm really just happy with, with everything where I am, what I'm doing. I'm stoked about this community that we're building and it's just, it's just been so much fun. I'm just, I'm stoked. Like when we do a giveaway and there's like 10 CDs there and that's not even all of the material. Like I'm just stoked that I've been able to keep writing music and recording. And I'm just so grateful that so many people enjoy it. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to get all worked up, but like, it's just crazy. Like when I do the giveaways and like, there's just people write comments in the notes section and stuff. And it's just always just the most amazing, positive, supportive stuff. And I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. And so it's like, I just hope that I just hope that people are happy doing what they're doing. I just hope that people who, in, in whatever direction in life you go and whatever you try to pursue, I hope that, I hope that you're happy doing it. And 
And always remember that the means justify the ends. The means have to justify the ends. What you're doing in your day, in your life, that's what matters. And if you, if you go from that angle, where you end up will be exactly where you're supposed to end up. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I have had, I've had, I have had some, I have, I have had some, 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 uh, what, what, what is it? Not a ricochet, but I've, I've sort of glanced off of, uh, I've, I've had some glance opportunities. That's not the right word, glanced. I've had some, I've had some weird, strange interactions and opportunities and stuff over, over my time in, in this, in this music industry. And, uh, I could, I, I just, I couldn't imagine it going any other way. I'm really stoked with how it's gone. I'm really stoked. I, I feel really lucky. I heard something. What was that? What was that? Combo fry. 15 months. Thank you so much for the continued support, Tombo. What's going on? How you doing? What's happening? What is happening? Thanks for the 15. Uh, I found the monitor video. Oh, yes. Murdoch. Thank you. Thank you. Grid's out of here. I hope Grid takes it easy. Uh, foot switches. Uh, old man Matthew. The foot switches are, if you, if you search on Amazon for like USB foot switch, they're like 12 bucks. They're those super cheap plastic things. I actually broke one during one of the shows uh, right before uh, I started taking a break for this. It just like, there was like the little spring in the plastic thing just snapped. I didn't, I wasn't hard on it, didn't do anything, but it was like, it was that 4,000th push and it was just too much and it just snapped the spring inside and the whole plastic thing, the housing broke all off and stuff. But hey, they're like 12 bucks. So it's like I had a couple of things and I pulled the thing out. And, but the thing is the software. If you order one of those foot switches, make sure you make sure you copy that software over because the other night, as a matter of fact, I was pulling out one of the foot switches so I could program it for the new sweeper video PC. And I didn't have the disc of the software. I was like, oh my God. And like, I went to Amazon and I was searching for the software and I like couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find the website for the company that makes the foot switches. Cause like, it's weird. Like those products go in and out of stock and like they change their actual place where they're being sold from and the companies that make them. Like I, I can't make sense of any of that stuff. And I was on one of the product sites or product pages on Amazon for one of the foot switches. And I just searched software, like in the reviews and the questions. And there were all these people like, Oh my God, the software, I can't find the go to this video of the software. And like, there were so many people with the same problem. And then I plugged in one of my drives, one of my backup drives from like a year ago. And it was like, I went into this like folder that said like software, this, that, and other thing. And thank the gods. I had copy and pasted that little folder with the foot switch software. So I was able to open that up and, program the foot switch but it's just this little thing where it's like you initialize the foot switch and it tells you what it's set to and then you change it and then hit apply and then it like you know writes it to the foot switch and then it's in the in the firmware or whatever it is in the foot switch and it's done so they're awesome but uh, just make sure you have the software for them because if not you have to kind of settle with whatever they're programmed to because that's your only option i mean unless i don't know i don't know how to get in there and like actually like write the code inside the foot switch but i bet i bet uh i bet you a, a second semester computer science uh, a student could probably do it, <laughs> but not me. Uh, but yeah, those are the foot switches I foot switches, foot switches I use. Merc Raider in the house. What's up, Merc? Should make a song about remote controlled truck snow plows. That sounds amazing. Do you have one of those? You say earlier when the studio will be ready for launch, and you fully show it off, or is it ready to go? Oh uh, yeah, we did a show last night. If you check out the show from last night, you can see some of the songs performed. Uh, but yeah, we'll just, it is a first show. So, so, uh, yeah, so I'll say about that, <laughs> but it'll get better as we go. Any plans to play cyberpunk? Uh, yes, yes, I will. Um, I'll probably like, I'm, I'm focused on, uh, producing a new record right now. Like that's going to be the main focus here over the next few weeks. And I'm going to go hardcore on it. Like. I'm, I'll take a few breaks here and there just to like take some days off, but like I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay pretty, pretty, um, pretty focused on that. So I probably won't be doing game streams for the next few weeks, couple months, but uh, after that, uh, I could definitely see it being a total possibility of uh, taking a couple weeks and probably just like streaming something, either Cyberpunk, maybe doing another playthrough of Red Dead. Uh, there's a couple other games I can't think of 
off the top of my head right now, but there's definitely some other games I'd love to play. So I definitely see that in the future, but just not in the next few weeks. Tactic Ghost! Seven months. What is up, Tactic? Thank you so much for the continued support. What's going on? How's it going? How's it going? Um, another video game-based album? Certainly possible. I don't know about these days, though, man. It's so dangerous to do anything outside of originality that it's like, it's more of a risk than ever. Rasta, man, how you doing? What's happening? Uh, I've been writing background instrumentals for six years now. I've been lacking so much motivation to write music for about a year. Usually it's uh, just a phase, but it's never lasted this long. Any tips on getting back to the zone? Yeah, I know, I know how you're feeling there, Slopes. Uh, I would say just, uh, who was it? Was it? It wasn't Bach. It was somebody else. Telemann? One of those, one of those ancient classical uh, composers was saying that he would write counterpoint every day. He would do a counterpoint exercise. I feel like I remember learning that in my first semester harmony class. Like, basically, the moral of the story is just do something every day, whether or not, you know, if it's something that I, you know, that's one of the things that I've run into in the past too, is like trying to think that like you're going to do something great. Like, oh man, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do the greatest thing I've ever done. And it's going to be so great that just the greatness is, is it's going to be undeniably great. And everybody's just going to see how great it is. And greatness is just going to exude out of it. And it's just going to be so great. And that just, I mean, it just shuts you down. It's just so, it's so, it's so antithetical to, to progress and movement forward because what is great, what is great what even is that, you know? And so you have this sort of vague, fuzzy idea in your head of what greatness is, and everything you're doing is not that. You may not be able to specifically define greatness, but you know what you're doing right now is not that. But you said you were going to do that. Last night when you went to bed, you were like, tomorrow I'm going to do something great. And right now, you're trying to do something great, and this is obviously not great. So what is going on right now? What, what is going on right now? And so it's really, it's the premise that's the problem. You have to stop, you have to stop saying, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do something great. That's why I'm trying to say that I'm focused on doing a new album right now, but I'm not focused on doing something great. I just focus on doing something. I got to do something, man. We got to go. We got to move forward. We got to do something. I got to start doing stuff again. I mean, and it's crazy just the last couple of days, even like, I mean, just all the time, like I'm getting little like melodies and the little explosions of stuff, which is just, oh God, it's such a great feeling. I've missed that for so long. Anyway, so I would say my advice would be just to do something. Just do something. Just do something. Whether it's like, just, just do something. Just open up, open up the software, hit record, and just do something. Just make something. Just get moving. Because as you get moving, you get loosened up. That'll become a chain reaction, and then you'll continue forward, and then, and then it'll work itself out. It's, like you gotta, it's sort of like rehab. You just got to start working out all the joints. You can't just wait for them to heal, because if you just sit there static, then you'll atrophy, and then it'll die off and then it'll be done and all and done yet. Kerbal 2 is released, plan release is 2022. Ah, what a bummer. What a bummer. I hope they don't delay it too much more. XTK, what's happening? Cats in the house, what's up? How you doing? It's a different fog machine now. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, it's uh, Antares. I use Antares. And it's not fog anymore. It's a hazer. That's what they call it because it doesn't, it doesn't put out like the plume of fog. It puts out a haze and it has a fan on it, which is pretty cool. I want a Pimax so bad. Soldier 76 vibes. Oh my God. Seriously. Oh my God. Seriously. Uh, they have 8K now. Well, yeah. So it's, it's the 8K. I think their top level is 8KX, which is two 4K screens. So 4K per eye is their, is their top of the line model. And yeah, I mean, dude. That's just ridiculous. What I really want to do is, is go on Google Earth VR. If you, okay, so if you've never tried VR, I mean, especially right now with like everything going on, it's like, it's really hard if you don't have it to like go somewhere where they do have it. Cause like there were some arcades and stuff that were doing stuff. But I mean, with everything going on right now, I don't know. But if you have access to VR, I highly recommend checking out Google Earth VR. I mean, holy moly. Google Earth is so awesome in VR. And, and, to be able to look at it on a Pimax would be so amazing with absolutely no screen door and a total white FOV. I mean, God, that'd be awesome. But uh, the other thing is uh, Space Engine. Space Engine is absolutely amazing. They have all of the maps for all of the planets in our solar system. They also have all of the moons in our solar system. And they have all the small body objects like the dwarf moons around, like, like Jupiter. Like, 
you may not know that Jupiter not only has all of its moons, but it's got these massive asteroids going around it too. It's got these massive dwarfs on the inner, like in the inner part of like the Jupiter neighborhood. It's like got all its Galilean moons out here and stuff, but it's got these like giant, I mean, massive, humongous, like asteroids, these like misshapen asteroids that are going around it too. And I think I streamed it once or twice, but uh, what I like to do since I've been in uh, commercial airliners before, it's like my only reference that I have to like flying above the earth. And I know that they go about 500 miles an hour. So what I did to try to give myself a sense of scale, because it's so hard to give yourself a sense of scale if you can't figure out like the speeds that you're going with everything. And so I would set my speed to uh, max out at 500 miles an hour. And then I just hold the trigger and I would do these flybys of these asteroids just to kind of get an idea of like what the scale was like. And I mean, they're massive. It's just insane. And the fact that they're all mapped and like all the, geog the geo geography, geology, the geometry, the geometry is... <laughs> I mean, I guess the, all of those terms qualify for what I'm talking about. But anyway, the geometry of everything is just so, it's so awesome. Space Engine is amazing. It's amazing by itself, but in VR, it's just amazing. Like going to the moon, you could spend hours just flying around the moon because it's got all the craters. I mean, it's just got all the mapping and it's all, it's all 3D. It's, it's all elevation mapping too. So it's like, it's just, God, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. Oh, it's so awesome. I love it. That's why I want a Pimax is for Google Earth and Space Engine. Midnight in the house. It's a midnight. Pseudo, did I say hi? Hello. Uh, the fact that you my face my mind probably one of the first times it happened to makes me Mr. Mean Days had to jump off your go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Totes. Utility is pretty cheap when you put them in an MX grid then that price multiplies in both dimensions pretty quickly plus the circuitry to drive them all. That's true skeleton. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good point. You know, those are crazy expensive. The, these you just use projector and software and literally shape an image onto them. That's cool sounding. Oh, so this is like in Blender using like decals. Dude, that is epic. That is absolutely awesome. Wow, that is super cool. I didn't even know that existed. Wow. Antra, what's going on? Uh, did you explore software-based KVM solutions? I have not done that. I have not done that. And why didn't I do that? Because that's been brought up before. And I decided not to do that for some reason. I think it was because I had, I have enough monitors that I didn't want to deal with. Wait, what was it? What was it? Dude, there was a reason. I had a good reason. And I'm not thinking of a good reason right now. Because I was just thinking about the, oh, Oh, yes. Now I remember. Yeah, that's what it was. So there might be a solution to this problem, but this is the reason I used like when this was brought up before. And that is that uh, for um, OBS on some of the PCs, to be able to do hotkeys, like the hotkeys aren't global, so you have to have OBS selected. And sometimes for some of my scripting, my mouse does clicking on the screen for certain coordinates. So if I had a KVM solution that was software-based where I was moving the mouse and it was going to the different screens of the different computers, then it would, be, it would potentially give me issues for my scripting. I think that was my reason. And thinking about it now, I don't know if that would be the case entirely. With the way that I'm set up now, it would actually be really awesome to have a software solution because everything is so... Uh, it's so much more streamlined in the way it's set up to where like it looks as though it's all one PC, you know, it could be one PC. It could just be all the different softwares are set up on one PC. So that would be something to look into. I should look into that now because yeah, waiting, waiting between three and five seconds. That's just, that's a no, that's a no go long-term long-term. That's a no go. I mean, last night wasn't so bad, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. Five seconds or less is basically nothing in my opinion. <laughs> well, when I was with, with the last studio set up when, you know, it's like, I don't know what a good example is. Like, say I'm doing a giveaway and I'm playing sub vids and then I'm also getting like the next song set up. I just remember there, you know, I was, I was switching back and forth between PCs and it was just so instant that I was able to just do stuff. And it's like over the course of like an eight hour stream, if you're saving like four seconds every couple, you know, at, at least... Let's see, if you're saving four seconds, 
I don't know how to explain that because when I try to do the actual brass tacks of the numbers, it doesn't really seem like that much savings technically, but it feels like so much more. Like it feels so much faster when there's just no delay at all. And I'm just used to that. I'm used to, you know, hitting the button and there's no delay. And so now it's like, it's, it's really noticeable, but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where when I, when I hooked up the KVM and it did that, it wasn't like this moment of like, Oh gosh, I have to fix this. Like I have to figure out what's, I have to fix this. This isn't going to work. I, I definitely had a moment of like, okay, this isn't ideal, but I might be able to deal with it. And yeah, last night was fine. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal. What is this Depeche Moog coming in with how many months? 51 months, Depeche. What's going on? Thank you so much for the continued support. 51 in a row. Holy moly. Thank you very much for that continued support, man. Really appreciate it. What's going on? How you doing? How you been? How you been? Oh, I see, and funny. Thank you for clearing that up. Maybe you could ask Sushi Dragon. Doesn't he have a lot of cams monitor stuff? Maybe he knows about the KVM. That's a good point. I think I totally don't want to speak for him. The little bit I have seen in terms of his tech setup, uh, or I should more say the little I do know about it, when I, when I look at it, I feel like he's using a remote control for a lot of stuff. So it's like he's not really even using a mouse for a lot of stuff. It seems like he has a lot of scripting set up. Dude, I have no idea what he does. So first of all, I'm not going to presume to know anything, but I'm not sure if he's even using KVM. I'm sure he's using crazy stuff, though. But he might be using KVM. But yeah, that'd be interesting to think about. Somebody mentioned his info sheet earlier that he might have some information on that. I should check that out. That's a, that's a good point. Ah, that's a good point. What is going on here? We got some, we, we got some gift bundles coming in here. We got Juicy coming in with 13 months. 13 months! Juicy, thank you so much for the continued support. What's going on? How you doing? It's been a minute. What is this? A multiple sub gift. <laughs> Man, that goes fast. I did speed those up for last night. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna half the difference because that that was that was quick. Anyway, what do we got here? We got uh, Fred, five months for you. April Easter, six months. Skeleton, 16. And AWD, 32 months coming in for you. Jay, thank you so much. Coming in with yet another multiple sub gift bundle. Feels good. Computer, it's giveaway time. I think it is, right? I, I think I think so. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Coming in with that new turning support to make this giveaway possible, especially JHTM1 dropping the multi-sub gift bomb to make this giveaway possible. That is not the keyword. I keep forgetting. I wrote it down, though. I got to change that. Uh, Jafer. <laughs> I do not think... Okay, I'm going to turn off casing sensitive. Casing does not matter, so you do not have to capitalize the J if you don't want to. But thank you, Jay, for dropping that multiple, putting us over the edge, and everybody coming in with that new and turning support to make this and all the giveaways possible. That's right. If you're seeing this for the first time since I've come back to streaming, there are two new additions to this list of possible winning CDs. That is Circles, which not only has the 10 original songs from the album from 2013, but also has the newest single dropped here in 2020 called Holding On. It is included as a bonus track on that physical CD. And of course, the most recent album release, Piano Feels Volume 3, was just released a couple months ago in October. 12 new piano songs, all original, all new songs. Not not uh, not piano versions of uh, produ new songs like other Piano Feels albums have been in the past. These are 12 new songs, all of their own making or whatever. <laughs> The keyword is Jafer, J-F-E-R, if you went in on this. If you win, you'll be able to choose from any of these. It'll be signed, shipped anywhere in the world where you are. You have to play if you want to win. Got to be here if you want to play. So thanks for being here. Congratulations to our winner who's going to win right now. You're ready? Here we go. Computer award.
Alrighty, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? And the winner is... Oh my god. It's not rigged! <laughs> Congratulations, Jay. You just won yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Can't win if you don't pay? <laughs> Just kidding. That was that was pretty random. I'm sending you a, a link right now. Go ahead and click that. The rest will be taken care of. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's hilarious. I swear. It's not rigged! <laughs> Unbelievable. How dare you? Anyway, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate that. Uh, let, me, let me fix the uh, deal here. There it is. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yes, thank you for all the pickups of the CDs as well. Jay picks up uh, three, picked up three circles on the way tomorrow. Uh, so, 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 uh, let's see. <laughs> A glaze, what's going on? How you doing? Did I say hi? Hi. I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to save this. Uh, Miller. Never be too safe. I'm never, it can never be too safe. Cutie, what's happening? How are you doing? Uh, Eagle, what's happening? Did I say hi? I saw, I saw you a minute ago. What's happening? Tall set in the house. Are you still hanging out, Tall set? What's happening? I didn't say hi, did I? Gosh, so far behind. I kept thinking I was catching up, and then here we are. Um, where are you that neighbors don't hear you or is everything super insulated it is pretty insulated I mean I don't know uh, no problems yet but yeah I mean also when you think about it it's like for the most part the only thing that's really really audible is if I scream like when I'm singing uh, it's not really that loud per se I mean I don't have you know I don't have anybody like right on the other side of the wall like I used to so it's it's like there's that if I if that would be an issue if that was the case but I'm, I'm not really screaming if I don't know. Like if, if I was playing drums, then yeah, it might, it might be an issue. What's up, tall set. What's going on, man. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Um, but yeah, I have, I'm very, I'm very self-conscious about that. So that that's always been a huge issue for me. I'm always trying to make sure that I'm not bothering anybody and I don't want to be too loud or anything like that. Um, I've been on both sides of that. You know, it's funny back in the day at the practice space, that was crazy. Cause I mean, you're talking like, it's basically an industrial building, like a, a mod uh, it's been like a modified like factory almost and it's got like all these rooms and then i mean every band is playing at 11 and i mean it's crazy i just can't believe that we recorded the drums for circles in that place it's just crazy it's crazy it's crazy what you do when you got it when you know when you got to do what you got to do you know it's nuts i love that album still that album came out so good uh i think in, uh writing back writing raps and reese and making beats instead of just recording mixing other people i don't want to record myself again but create driven store songs yeah you should do it Hells yeah. That's awesome. That's good to hear. That's that's great, PJ. Yeah, you should do it. Start now. <laughs> Missing the money, TED Talks. Yeah, yeah. Produce music for 30 years. This is golden advice. Right on, Fuzzy. <laughs> Reminded me of Siv. <laughs> that's funny. Picked up uh, my DMX. CNOS. Picked up my DMX as a result of learning about it from you. I'm really enjoying it for the most part. Sometimes loading certain fixtures or settings is a little finicky, but it all works. Yeah, I, I like it. I like my DMX. And I've seen a few of the uh, solutions out there, and I feel like it's one of the it's one of the better ones, I think. Yeah. I'm I'm I don't regret going with my DMX at all. And you know, their their lights are so good because ADJ makes it and like their lights are so good. I'm happy to support their software side because I'm so I'm I've been so satisfied with their lights. I love their lights. It's funny, like DMX lights are like it's just one of those things like where sometimes it's like like the foot switch, for instance. Like the foot switches are like, you know, twelve dollar foot switches from Amazon. And it's like, hey, it works, you know, whatever. It's like you can't do that with motorized lighting, you know? It's like it's it's a different it's a different ball game, you know. I mean, you could, I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do, but like, it's just, it's just really interesting how some things it's like the quality is really, it's like, if the thing does the thing, it's fine. But then there's other things where it's like, if it's quality, it's you, you know, it's quality, you know, it's quality and you, and you see why it is what it is, you know? Hell yeah, Tombo. 
You still remember how to play any music? I'm going to try to get back into it. It's been a minute. Did the foot, didn't the foot switch break during Gloria? That sounds, that sounds right. I think that might be right. Yeah. It is all ones and zeros. That's true. If they're not distributing the foot switch software, some people would be very happy if you could provide that backup. That's a good point, Tumbo. I'm sure it's not an issue. I mean, I'm, it's such a basic piece of software. I can't imagine people being mad about that. Where do you, like, where, where do you put up, like, is, like, GitHub a place where you would put up software? Like, just, like, do they, like, does GitHub, like, have the servers that actually has all the software on it? Or are there other places where you do something like that? Is possible nudes? Oh, I saw, I saw PewDiePie's clip where he was, like, trying to change his, like, outfit or whatever and then had to reset his stream. <laughs> Oh man. Right on tactic. Thank you. What kind of music am I listening to these days? Man, I okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh artist that I just discovered recently. So uh I did not get Dirt 3, but I did uh read a couple of reviews about it. And it, you know, I'm gonna digress for a second. What's going on with Codemasters? What happened? I mean, I know that F1 is still a really great game. F1 was on sale during their, uh, what was it? The, I guess it was the sort of like Black Friday, I guess, sale or what is it? Their autumn sale, I guess is what it is. And I was thinking about getting it because it was half off, but I'm still going to hold strong that no VR, no buy. I mean, I think at this point, if F1 doesn't offer a VR option, I mean, come on guys, it's, it's, it's 2020, you know? Uh, so I'm, I still don't get that. I do buy it. I do buy the F1 games when they're like $15. So like, I think I got 19 for 15 and I got 18 for 15. Cause like, like three quarters of the way through the year, through the cycle, they, they like put it on a super sale right before they release the new one. And I usually pick it up then because I mean, I'm a, I love F1. I'm a dude. Are you guys fans of F1? Oh my God. Like I almost cried. I almost cried last week for George Russell. I'm like, I'm honestly like, I'm honestly that really, I am man. What more 2020? What more? Like I am, I was absolutely devastated for that boy. I was devastated for him. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it after so much time, after so much effort. God, God, man, that guy. Oh, I hope he gets a ride. I hope he gets a real ride someday. Anyway, sorry, I digress. So the, the, uh, the Codemasters thing. So I read it. I read a, 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 a dirt five review. I was reading about it and they were kind of talking about the mess that the dirt series has been in. Cause I, I got to tell you, if you don't know dirt three was my jam. I played dirt three for a good like year and I annihilated the competition in that game. I loved that game so much. I was, oh God, that was my, that was my go-to game for like a good long while. I loved, I loved Dirt 3. Dirt 3, oh, Dirt 3, Dirt 3 and Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 3. Dirt 3 and Battlefield 3 were like, the, that, that is like the golden age of gaming for me. Driving a tank in Battlefield 3, flying a helicopter in Battlefield 4, and driving a car in Dirt 3. That was like, oh, that was like my trifecta of golden age games. I will miss those days forever. Heartwarming melancholy anyway um so i was reading the i was reading the review about dirt five and they said the best thing about it's the soundtrack and i was like that's right the music supervisor for the codemaster games has always been great i don't know who it is i've never looked it up i'm sure you could look it up but whoever is curates the soundtracks for the dirt games exquisite genius and so i was like oh i gotta go check that out so i went and listened to the soundtrack and yeah great songs there are some fantastic songs and the, ones, the one artist that I really loved from that soundtrack, and I put him on my playlist, Noisy. Noisy. And the song is called Tourist. I think it's singular. It might be tourists, plural, but I think it's singular. Tourist by Noisy. Oh, the mixing, the production, the vocal timbre, the melodies, the chords. The lyrics, mm. beautiful. I love that song. There, there were there was one or two other songs on that album that I thought were just smooth, nice jams that I put on my list too. And then there was also I, I was I looked up the other day because my go to lately, just like you know when I'm doing when I've been doing the setup and just like listening to stuff while I'm doing stuff, I just you know, it's just the, kind of the reality of the situation is, you know, I think you get so locked in to like nostalgia. And 
I mean, it's pretty much Kid A and OK Computer. I mean, I still listen to those records regularly. I mean, I listened to Origin of Symmetry from Muse like for the first time in like years a few weeks ago. And I didn't even listen to the whole album, but I listened to some of it. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's funny, like listening to it with an engineer's ear now and like hearing like the actual production on it. Because, you know, when I first heard that album, it was just strictly as a fan. I, I had no, I was not in any way an audio engineer at that point at all. And uh, so I was just listening to it as a fan. So it's funny to listen to that kind of stuff now. But it's like weird because like a, a record like Kid A by Radiohead, it's, it, it still has the same effect on me that it did. And like when I hear production stuff in that album, it's more out of, it's more like a fan ear, you know? It's more like I hear like, oh, I had never heard that before. And I'm not trying to say like, what is that? Where, oh, how's that panning? Oh, what are, uh, I guess they use some automation. Like I don't think about that when I listen to that album. I just still, I still listen to that album like it was the first day I listened to it. And I think it's because the circumstances that I listened to it. I was at a party and I just walked over to, I, I was like, I had this incredible urge because there were, there were like people at the party talking, but like there was no music playing. And I just had this overwhelming urge to hear music. I was like, geez, I just need to hear something right now. Just please let me hear some music. And I went over to this, to the CD player. It was a CD player and I hit play on it and that do, 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 be, 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 start playing. And I was like, what is this? And I just sat down and I was just blown away. And I think that I just, I feel that way every time I listen to that record. Anyway, so I've been listening to that. I listen to that regularly still. And okay, computer. I actually, uh, I, I listened to some of some retro radio head the other day. I, I listened to the bins and Pablo honey. That was really interesting. The bins is still really good. That holds up. So I've been listening to some like Radiohead full catalog stuff lately. Uh, and I searched uh, a couple like blogs and articles looking for like the best electronic albums from 2020. And I did find some stuff that I liked and I will have to get back to you on names of artists, but I have found some stuff that I did like, but yeah, it's must've been going back to, to old school stuff, but yeah, noisy is great. I really like noisy. I, I went and listened to a bunch of noisy songs and they're fantastic. What was that? I heard something. What was that? Chosen by one? 42 months. What is going on? Thank you so much for the continued support. Hey, that's a, uh, that's a quadra dupes. What's going on? Chosen by one. What's happening? Thank you very, very much for the continued support. 42 months. Right on. Right on. <laughs> How does the hay stuff affect the electronics and stuff over time? I haven't noticed anything. Uh, I haven't noticed anything. Now, the old fog machine, the original fog machine, this isn't even the Rockville one, but the original fog machine put out such a plume that I didn't discover it until the last studio that it left this residue because after the show, I would have to wipe down the floors because there was this pool of fog fluid on the floor. So who knows what that was doing? But uh, this one, I haven't noticed anything. It's this, this is such a good, the, the Antares is awesome. I highly recommend Antares if you're looking for fog or haze. Great, great machine. And it's just really well built too. Like just the aesthetic of it, like the curvature of like the metal framing and stuff. Like it just looks, it looks really well made, you know? And it's been a great fog machine. I hadn't had this thing turned on in 28 weeks and I turned it on and it started right up and started pumping out fog. And I was like, all right, we're good. That's amazing. I mean, I've had fog machines that, I mean, they lock up, you know, if you don't turn them on for a while. And this sucker just went right back into business. I was so impressed. It's awesome. Where's mom socks? What's up, just me? How's it going? White Quill, what's going on? How are you doing? Did I say hi? All right, I just caught up to Jay, Jay's uh, sub bomb. The tech stuff is not as info bummer. A couple of handheld keyboard, keyboard controller things. That's what I thought, Eagle. That's what I was thinking too. Linz, Linz, Linz Bean, did you change your name? You've been following for almost four years? Holy moly. What's going on? Cutie, what's happening? Bike Coastal, what's happening? Oh, okay, we got all the, we got all the entries into the giveaway. Okay, I just cut up to the giveaway. Just got up to the giveaway. Uh, all this redacted water. <laughs> what was that? By Coastal coming in with a sub gift. <laughs> I 
Sierra. <laughs> My coastal gaming. Yes. It's a game where you just got your nine month, ninth month handled. Sierra. My coastal gaming. Yes. Thank you very much, By Coastal. Really appreciate that. Incredibly generous of you. Feels good. Much appreciated indeed. Kitty in the house. What's up, Kitty? How's it going? Hope you're feeling better. Uh, GitHub, GitHub hosts it, so that's where I put it. Okay. Source code, but you could distribute it there. I mean, yeah, I'd be happy to put it somewhere. No VR, no buy. No, <laughs> it's not a Bob Marley song. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's amazing. Are you, uh, do you see, still sync your lights manually to each track? Or is there software that does it? I, so when I first did it for album unknown and I'll get, I'll get way more, I'll get way, I will get more deeply into it uh, at a future uh, tech talk stream when I go into like software stuff. But basically the short of it is um, when I first started doing the lights, I did it with album unknown. That was the first album that I debuted. And then I, w I was lighting a cue for like every part or I was creating a cue for every part and then basically triggering that cue during the part. And I was writing, I was doing like basically macros where like you kind of set up a thing for the lights to do and then you hit the key and then it turns that thing on and they do the thing and then you cue it again and then it turns it off and then you go to the next part. And then at some point I realized, wait a second, I'm using MIDI. I'm doing all this triggering. DMX takes MIDI. So why don't I just like do some basic cues? I can do some unique special stuff for certain songs for special parts of songs and whatnot. But like for the for general stuff, why don't I kind of make like a baseline template of stabs and hits and stuff? And so I did that. And so you can you can set up the individual individual cues to be like basically like uh, what are they called? I think flash cues, where you if if it receives the MIDI message, it's on. But if it's not, it's off. So you it's like a it's like a keyboard then. So it's like you can hit it, it turns on. You let off the keyboard, it turns off. And so then what I what I did because I had a lot of albums to do. Like with the last studio, I had to do like eight of the albums had no lights. And so, well, I had to do every album. What am I talking about? None of the albums had correct lights because it was a completely new studio setup. So I was like, there's no way I can do cues for everything. So, uh, so I carried these stabs and then I basically just went through and I would play a song and I would just play like the drum beat. I'd be like kick cues and snare cues and blast cues. And then like I had a few set macros for stuff moving around. And so I'd just be like, like on circles, it would just be like, and then I would do a little adjustments here and there. And then for like a bridge, I might like do its own cue. And like for different songs, I might say like, okay, I've been using like this kick and snare for these songs. Maybe I'll create a new kick and snare cue for these. And then I would set that up and then I would actually play the MIDI. Sometimes I would quantize it. A lot of times I would just play it with it and then watch it and like play it back and be like, okay, that looks good. And then that was the best thing for, for time, for time's sake. So when I, when I did the very first light setup for Album Unknown, I took a lot of time to do very particular cues for different parts of songs that was all manual. And then I was, I wrote it to the MIDI and then it, it kind of cued it. And then the second version was doing it as quick as possible and creating stabs. So I could just record the stabs and kind of play to the beat. And now moving forward, since everything's cued and I don't need to do it for speed, uh, I'll probably do a hybrid of those. So maybe stuff that I can play along to, but then also do like more specific kind of like newer cues that are specifically made for certain things because I have not even begun to scratch the surface of what's possible with all of these lights that I do have already. And like all of the, there's all kinds of macros built in. You can like create new different kinds of macros and all kinds of different stuff that you can do. And all there's so many possibilities that I haven't even began to touch with this stuff. So I'm looking forward to doing that with, with new music moving forward. Kind of like, I feel like, you know, I'm going to focus on uh, getting back into production stuff. And then of course I, I also want to tie up any other loose ends I have. So, I mean, it'll probably take it like, you know, I'll spend, I don't know how long it'll take, but I'll spend every, you know, every moment I can when I get some free time to kind of be fixing stuff and tweaking stuff to make sure that everything's really set up well so that we can move forward without any loose ends. There's a few loose ends here and there, a few like weird camera cues, a few like tripped up scripts and stuff like that that I'll have to adjust. But I've got to the point now where it's like, I kind of, you know, when I, when I was first streaming, uh, it was like, it was detrimental, you know, when stuff would break, it would just be so it would be emotionally draining and so detrimental. And I've gotten to the point now where there's so many moving parts to this thing now that it's like, dude, stuff's going to break, man. Stuff's not going to work. Stuff's going to get weird. And just try to appreciate what goes right. Because um, again, the fact that I can turn on the setup and like all the cameras turn on now, like in the first try, 
and like sometimes the stage right PTZ camera doesn't turn on because it's just being weird and I have to turn it off and then turn it back on. And then when it loads up and standby light turns off, I look back over at OBS and it pops up and it's working. And I'm like, that was literally, literally just a power button. It's like, oh, that is so beautiful. I mean, I cannot even begin. God, I mean, the rage fests, the rage, maniacal nightmares that used to ensue when like I could not figure out why a C920 wouldn't turn on or something. And it's just, you feel like you have just exhausted every known excuse and reason for it not working and you cannot solve it and you're completely exhausted and you have to go to work first thing in the morning. And it's just like, just got to a point where it's like, stuff's going to break sometimes, you know, is what it is. Uh, my DMX 3.0 takes cues using MIDI. I'm sure he uses MIDI commands for me for doing structure. Yep, that's right. Four is out. Take it easy, four, if you're still listening. Uh, you're talking about Dirt 5, aren't you? The song is not under three. Yes, I meant Dirt 5. Yes, it is. I think Radiohead changed my brain structure when I was 12. <laughs> I, they, they, are, they are known to do that. Holy moly! Yes! <laughs> what is going on here? What is going on here? We've got a giveaway dono going on. Care of Web Mosby. Hey. Thanks for the drop of the dono there, Web. Much appreciated indeed. I'd be happy to do a giveaway sponsorship by Web Mosby. Did I say that right? Anyway. Computer, it's giveaway time. Did you not understand me? Is it because of the deep voice? Computer, it's giveaway time. I sound like the Borg right now. Computer, it's giveaway time. There we go. It did not like that voice. <laughs> I need to drink some water. Oh, I gotta change the I gotta change the keyword. Web. Web. Hey! Thank you so much to Webmos for coming in with that $20 dono drop on the jam, sponsoring a compact disc giveaway. Hey, if you win this, you'll be able to choose from Circles, High Poem, Hope, High Fire, Album Unknown, Fine, or Piano Fields Volume 2 or 3. It'll be signed, shipped anywhere in the world where you are. Circles has holding on the newest 2020 single. Let me go ahead and post the uh, link to that. There's a YouTube video I made a couple months ago completely in blender it's my first foray into really getting deep into blender and trying to figure that out and i definitely want to use that moving forward on some of the stuff that we do in here and uh it was an absolute blast kind of learning that and if you want to check out the results you can click on that link of course if you don't win a cd and you still want to pick one up anyway of your own volition you can always go to madebybonnie.com and check it out there there's all the cds and stuff there but right now you have the chance are you ready because it's time computer award Seed, I mean Web Mosby presents an association with Seed of Ash that feels productions. It's a never be a fan of wars. And it goes to <laughs> And the winner is Congratulations to Where is Danielle? You just want yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Can't win if you don't play. Can't play if you're not here. So thanks for being here. And congratulations on winning a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world. Go ahead and click the link I just sent you. And the rest will be taken care of. And thank you again so much to Webmost for coming in with that very generous dono sponsoring that giveaway. Thank you, man. Much appreciated indeed. In, indeed. Indeed. Thank you, Web. Uh, let's see. I'm almost caught up. I'm almost caught up. Uh, you're not going to get sick from this fog machine in the coldness, right? That's right. I did get sick. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that. Yeah. Being in the close confines of that original fog machine in the box, I got severe allergies. I forgot about that. That was crazy. I remember that. That was nuts. I had an allergic reaction that one time. I think it might have happened twice, actually. I had a severe allergic reaction. That was nuts. What's up, Sage? I had totally forgotten about that. No, that hasn't happened since then. I do get allergies about twice a year, though. I get I I I had to cancel a week of shows earlier this year because of it. I mean, it was 
it was bad. I mean, when it when it's when it happens, it's it happens. It's crazy. Um, if you already answered this, what's up, Cast Uh, if you what you got, what got you into photography? The update video you had earlier. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah yeah yeah. I've always uh I've always had an interest in photography for sure, but I never. It's funny, like. It's it's funny when you when you have an interest in something and you have no idea what you're doing because I have been taking pictures for years of just stuff like I've tried doing landscape and portraits and I tried just doing all kinds of stuff and it it's, it was always just bad you know so it's like why is it so bad I had such an idea I remember I was with a friend in college and and we we had the camera and she wanted to she wanted to take some pictures because I had this like I had this like goofy uh, I don't even remember what the model was it wasn't like a like a camera it was like one of the, it was like not it was a camera but you know what i mean it was like wasn't it was like it was a brand that probably no one would remember anymore and it was kind of like at the beginning of digital and i remember she was like she was like it was like want to do like a moody portrait for like a band thing or something and she like turned off the lights you know because it was like i have this idea it's i wanted to be like there i want there to be like a shadow and like she turned off the it was just and it was just like it was like one of those things like in retrospect was like how silly like in the beginning of the digital age with digital photography, with the worst sensors ever, we were thinking we were going to be all artistic and turn off the lights to get like a real moody feel for the picture. So the point I'm trying to make is that like, I always had an interest in photography. I just had no idea what I was doing for like ever. And uh, it was, let's see. So I got the, I mean, I had, I had the Nikon uh, for a while and I had a single lens. I had an 18 to 200. I, I didn't know anything about ISO. I didn't know anything about focal length, really. I didn't know anything about depth of field and aperture. And I had taken a class in high school where they sort of went over that stuff. And so I was like, well, I took a class on that, so I know what that is, right? And I didn't. And once I wanted to introduce the camera into the stream, I was like, this lens doesn't... Dude, I'm trying to think about it. I'm trying to really remember now how, how it happened. Because there was a point... I think it was last year. I think it was like 2019. See, it just goes to show you. I mean, you could be, I, I've been streaming for five years, but it wasn't really until last year that I actually started to understand cameras. Because in 2018, I got into like cinema and like trying to create like video and film. But even then, you're not, you know, photography is a completely different thing, especially when you're talking about lenses and stuff. I mean, you do talk about lenses and in, 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 in film and cinematic stuff too. But it's just a different, you're going from a different angle, you know? Uh, but something happened. I don't know if it was like I watched a video or it had to do with the fact that I was going to introduce the camera into the stream. I think what it was, okay, now, now it's coming back. I think I introduced, I got a cam link and I introduced the Nikon into the stream and I put that 18 to 35 on there and it was, it didn't have a depth of field. And I was like, why doesn't this have a depth of field? It's like a real camera. Isn't it supposed to have a depth of field? And then it also was like weirdly dark. It wasn't bright enough. And I was like, what's the deal? Like, this is like a real camera. It's not supposed to be dark. And so I was like, this isn't working. I just, I got to do something about this. And so I went on YouTube. I started watching uh, videos about lenses and like, what is focal length and what is ISO and what is aperture? Like, what are these things? I mean, I've heard these words. I kind of know like what shutter speed is and stuff, but really what is this stuff? And then once somebody started actually explaining it to me, I was like, oh, Wait a minute. Wait a second. Hold on. You mean like if I put on a different lens, it'll look different? Oh. So I went on Craigslist and I picked up uh I picked up a 30 that I picked up the 35 millimeter and the 50 mil, the 50 mil that's on that Nikon, and I put the 35 millimeter on the Nikon and I put it at 1.8 which is it's, it's, it's most open is 1.8 F stop. And I was familiar with ISO. So I dropped the ISO down and then I like put like a light on something like a mug or something. And I took a picture and the, the edge of the mug was crisp in focus. And then everything behind the edge of the mug and everything in front of the edge of the mug was blurry. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. This is amazing. Oh my God. And like, it was that moment where I was like, Oh, I got it. I got to get another one of these things. I got to see what other ones there are. And now it's like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it gets out of hand once you start getting into it. But during that video, 
uh, what, what I had just gotten, I had just gotten a 60 millimeter macro and I've, I had wanted to get into macro forever. Like I had tried to take pictures of bugs and I tried to like take pictures of close up stuff and like maybe taking a, a zoom lens and really zooming in as far as I can and getting as close as I could to the subject, but I can only get a few feet away. And why is that happening? I don't understand. And, uh, I, I watched a video and, and it was, um, it was, uh, Jared, Gerald undone. Is that his name? I haven't, this is so funny. I go through these, I go through these phases where like I binge watch like stuff on a certain subject and then I leave it for like a couple months and it's just gone. And, but I think it's Gerald undone. I think is the name of the dude. He's a great, he's a Canadian, uh, video, uh, content creator for on YouTube. He does all kinds of reviews on all kinds of gear and stuff. And awesome. I, I picked up so much from him because he's, he's done a lot of stuff on like micro four thirds. Cause I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go full frame or micro four thirds. That's a whole nother discussion. And yeah, it, it was just, I ended up going with micro four thirds and a, a lot of that had to do with him. Uh, but anyway, um, and, and other people, I mean, there were a lot of people that I was checking out when I was trying to figure that out. But anyway, so he was doing a review of like three or four different macro lenses. And, uh, I was going to go with one of the ones he recommended that he liked the most. And then I watched another video that was talking about some of the similar lenses. And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, I, I was like, if I've learned anything, just because someone likes it doesn't mean it's like the right one. And so I watched, uh, I watched a couple other opinions on the very same lenses that he had covered. And I landed on the 60 mil. Um, what's the brand of it? I have it right here. Let me, I love this lens so much. Let me just grab it real quick. So this is it. It's a 60 mil macro and it is a, um, oh, it's an Olympus. Isn't that great? He doesn't even know the brand names of his lenses. That's how, that's how, that's, that's when you know a real photographer, they don't even know the brand brand names. Anyway, it's this, uh, it's a, it's a 60 millimeter macro lens and you can get, I mean, you can get like this close. Like, so, so what a macro mean, what a macro lens means is that to be a true macro lens, it means that the, that the subject that you're, that you're photographing has to, the actual size of it has to take up that much space on the sensor. That's what I think the technical term that macro actually means. So when you, when you get close to a fly that's like this far away from your lens, the shape of that fly actually is the size of the fly on the sensor that you're taking the picture of. I think that's what it is technically. Anyway. So I watched another video and the guy, and the guy really liked this lens. And he was talking about like the distance you get away from it and what the picture looks like. And so I found it on eBay, this is used immaculate lens. I got it used, got a super good deal on it. Immaculate, perfect shape. I, there's, I don't know what it is, man. I don't know if it's like, because if, if, if you can, let me turn this, let me turn the, um, let me turn the light up a little bit. Spotlight, see if you can see. that pretty clear i mean i can't really get that close up i i have i have the 10 millimeter on on that lens i mean i guess i could i guess i could turn this on and i guess i could give you a little bit more light from this <laughs> that's a little bright hold on let me turn it down a little okay see it's not really in focus but it's got like this dial on it and it tells you like what focus you're at and it's got this little line it's like electric that it, it works with the micro four thirds camera when it's on there, there's just something, this is the only Olympus lens that I have. And there's just something about it that it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just so beautiful. It's just such a beautiful piece of technology. There's something about lenses, man. I don't know what it is about lenses, but like, there's just something that like lenses really are like the pinnacle of technological advance. I mean, when you look at them and you just look at this glass that has been like carved by a machine and then all these different pieces that have been like put together. And when you like move the ring and it's just, it just glides, it's just like so smooth and it glides and, and, and you just look at the back and, and like, there's all these little, like little metal pieces where it like connects to the electronics and the camera. And like, you look th through it and you see that there's all these different pieces in there and all these, like there's little screws and little like threads. And like, it's just such a, it's just so crazy that like we can make this stuff, man. It's just so crazy. And then when you see the, the images that it takes, when you see the images that come out, you see a fly, a hairy, grotesque fly that's giant. And you see like all of like the blue and purple and 
gold and like all of the stuff and all the detail on this fly that you think was just this like disgusting pest. And you turn out, it's like this beautiful creature in nature that has just detail and amazingness that you never thought you'd be able to see. And you can see it. You can see it now. You can see it. I was taking pictures of these little moths that were like, this moth was like a millimeter and a half across. And in the frame, it just looks like this massive furry beast, like a mothman beast. Oh God, it's so awesome. Macro photography is just, this, it's just the coolest thing ever. But then on top of it, this is a 60 millimeter lens at the same time. So it's actually a portrait lens. So you can like get good portraits with this too. It's just, it's an amazing lens. Uh, I think it's a, what is it? It's an F 2.8. So it's got a good, good little bokeh, good little bokeh on there as well. Love that lens. Oh my God. I wanted to use it in the setup. I just couldn't, I couldn't really find a good shot for it. I mean, maybe if I get another camera sometime, I'll put it a little farther back and then kind of use it as like, maybe like a portrait for when I'm on stage or something. Oh God. So, so amazing. So awesome. I got some other macro stuff. If you guys like that macro stuff, I could definitely show you some more macro stuff. I've, I've been taking macro pictures every here and there. It's great. You just like macro, macro photography is the coolest thing. Cause it doesn't matter. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, you don't have to go out to the mountains or out to the fields. I mean, the farthest that you would want to go for some exotic location is you could literally go to like a local park and like if you see some bushes or something or like some flowers in a local park, you just go out, you hang out. It's like you're like on a spy mission. And like what's what's super cool, like I mean, it, there, there's like something very mental about it too. And I don't mean crazy, although it's kind of crazy to be so focused on bugs. But there's something like, it's like a mental sort of experience because you have to really slow down when you do macro photography. You have to like, you just have to relax and take some breaths and you have to like look down and you have to go, okay, there's definitely some life in here. There's some life. Let's see. Let's see what there is. And like, before you know it, if you just take it, if you just relax and you take some breaths and you just start looking around, you'll start seeing stuff. You'll start seeing little like worms going around, little caterpillars, little like flies flying around and buzzing around, like little weird beetles and little bugs that you, you'd never would have thought existed. And they're so tiny. And then you, you actually get like a picture of them and then you like get back to the computer and you, you plug the card in and you look at it full screen. And when it's like that, cause like, it's sort of like, it's, it's weird. Like there's this, like, there's this like style where like it's, you have such a limited range that like is actually in focus and is sharp and the things are so small that any kind of movement, I mean, if there's any breeze or any kind of movement at all, I mean, it's, it's out of focus and the, and the shot is com a complete waste. So it's like you get into these, you get into these like modes where it's like, you're sort of like, kind of like weaving. And then like, you're like, click, and you're like, click, click, and you're like, click, click 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 and you're just trying to get that perfect shot and then it's like one shot like the butt is really in focus but the head's completely out of focus another shot like the nose is in focus but the eyes are completely blurry and then it's like you take all these shots and they're bad 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 and then you finally come across that shot and it's like the eyes are like in this perfect focus and you see like all of like the little like octagonal little shapes of like these crazy little insect eyeballs and stuff and it's perfectly in focus together symmetrical and then like everything outside of that like goes blurry and it's just oh, it's so awesome it's, I love it so much, but yeah, I started getting, I, I, I actually caught the, the bug, no pun intended, uh, when I got the 35 millimeter on Craigslist and I was like, I get it now. This is, this is crazy. And, uh, and you, you want to, you want to see the, you want to see the real deal. Now you're going to see this and it's going to look ri more ridiculous than it is, but really what it is, is it was just too good of an opportunity to pass up because, uh, so on, uh, on the Michael Four Thirds camera, which is what I'm using, the G9 is what I use for my photos. If I want to use a Nikon lens, I have to adapt it. And I have an adapter for that. And it's a speed booster. So what it does is it, 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 it kind of focuses in the light. So it makes it actually a little bit brighter. So it actually changes the way the f-stop works a little bit. It's technical. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is that I already had the ability to adapt to this camera and I was just waiting for opportunities to arise that would present themselves in a way that would be perfect for my situation. And this lens that is fitted for Nikon cameras came up, this very crazy lens. And the autofocus was broken on it. And so it was on sale on eBay for this grotesque deal. Because who wants a lens that the autofocus is broken? I mean, come on. Especially these days, if a lens has autofocus, you don't want to you don't want to pay full price for that if it's broken. And it was on this it was this grotesque deal. But the thing is, if you use the speed booster that I use for this camera, you can't use autofocus. So if you're adapting Nikon fitted lenses to this camera, you're you're not using autofocus as it is. You're using manual focus. And I love doing manual focus because it's really fun because you can really choose what you're what you're trying to photograph. Now, if you're trying to 
do like birds or like wildlife that's like jumpy, that's a little bit tougher. But uh, anyway, so check this out. So I saw this thing and I was like, I mean, this, it was like, it was the one missing, it was the one missing piece of the puzzle. You know what I mean? It was the one final thing where I was like, man, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll have a lens like this and maybe it'll happen. And then I'll, I will finally have a complete collection, which I do feel like my collection is complete, but, uh, Wait, why did this turn into like a lens, a lens show off stream? What, how did that happen? I'm assuming, you know, since you talked about focus beginner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I use that uh, on my stream cams. No, I don't use autofocus at all. Anyway, so check this out. What's the, what's the brand name on this? Hold on. I, I, of course, don't remember any of my brand names. I think this. <clears throat> this is a Tamron. Anyway check it out oh, hold on hold on let me turn on let me turn on the light this is so ridiculous i really should not be uh i should not be pumping this up so much hold on we need some actual music introducing the lens that's kind of old but was a super good deal because the autofocus is broken <laughs> the tamron 150 to 600 millimeter you want to take a picture of a bird? Yeah, you can take a picture of a bird. <laughs> you can take a picture of a bird that's two miles away. Are you thirsty? <laughs> no, this thing's sick. I just put the I put the lens cover on there just to make it look even bigger. Because you know how it is. You know how it is. Anyway, so this thing, I mean, it rocks. It's a 600 millimeter lens. So got this lock here and then. <laughs> tell, tell a photographic. That's, that's really, that's, all, that's, that's it though. So <laughs> I don't have any pictures to show you right now. But look it, it's such a crazy lens. It's got a handle on it. It has a handle on it, and then that's for the tripod. This thing is so big and heavy that you don't put you put it on the camera, and then you don't put the camera on the tripod. You put the handle on the tripod of the lens, and then the lens holds the camera in free space, like it's some sort of space station arm docking with the camera. It's crazy. Anyway, yeah, I got this thing, and I was like, dude, we're pretty good. I got the macro, so I can get the super close up, and I got this thing, so I can get the boards. I can get the boards now. I'm gonna go put this back too. Anyway, so yeah, lenses are one of those things that like, once you get a taste of it, it's, it's, it's just, it's like, yeah, that's why they make so many, that's why they make so many different kinds of them. That's, there's so many options because there's so many different distances that you want to zoom. There's so many kinds of depths of field. There's so much light sensitivity that they can do. And then, I mean, that's just talking about like the actual technical specs of lenses. I mean, then you're talking about like the different manufacturers and like the quality of the glass. And I mean, there are, there are some lenses out there that are like, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And you're like, why is something so expensive when I can get one that says it's the same specs and it's like literally thousands of dollars or less. And then it's like, oh, it's because it's like, it was made by hand over a period of six years by artisans that live in castles in Tibet or something. I hope that uh, none of you have my myophonia or whatever that's called. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I'm 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 stoked about those lenses. I'm stoked. What am I doing here? There we go. So so yeah, that's when I started to get into it. When I for, I wanted to introduce a DSLR into the stream, so I needed a new lens to do that, and I got the 35, and then that's when it started. And pretty much ever since then, every once in a while, I get I get back into it. But I do have to say, I think I I I feel like I'm in a really good spot because like I can pretty much take a picture of anything I want. You know how there's that gap. It's like you have you like you start collecting something, whatever it is, and you're like, okay, cool, I got that. That's sweet. And then you're like, ooh, well, I could use that if I wanted to do this. And it's like it just keeps going and going and going. And then you get to a point where you're like, hey, I, I can pretty much do what I need to do. And like that's pretty much how I feel. Like, of course, it's like there's always the extreme. It's sort of like when Linus talks about like 
like the new 30 series cards or something like that. It's like, there's the extreme where it's like, if you want the 5950X with the 3090 TI and you know, you're willing to pay that premium because you want it now and you're going to get it on eBay from scalpers or something like that. It's like, yeah, there is that option always, but it's like, I feel like, man, I'm in a really good spot now where it's like, I've got the close up, I've got the mid range, I've got the really far away. And it's like, yeah, these aren't like multi thousand dollars that are like the best quality glass in the world on full frame cameras. But Hey man, I could take a picture of a bird. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. I'm pretty stoked about that. Pretty stoked. All right. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm caught up to the last giveaway. I think I'm almost back. Arcadius, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing? Right on, Kino. You were overwhelmed by, by your uh, digital camera. Yeah, I was overwhelmed at first too. It is overwhelming, but really what it comes down to is, is, is it's three things. And, and at least the digital cameras that I've had experience with. Of course, there's your lens choice. That, that is always what it is. But there's your ISO, which is the sensitivity of your sensor. And pretty much the higher you set your ISO, the more sensitive your sensor will be. So the more light will show up on your picture. But the higher your ISO goes, it's kind of like a gain switch on anything else where it's like it's it's boosting the signal but it's not adding quality to the signal so it's like it's it gets noisier like the higher the iso goes it like gets brighter and more light and you see more in the picture but it gets grainy and noisy and the higher you go the worse it gets so the best situation is to have your iso as low as you can to get a good picture and then if you need light to light what you're doing and then that that'll give you the best the best uh the best quality for iso because then you'll have the, the least amount of noise but then sometimes you just don't have enough light. So you have to turn it up and then the gain starts getting introduced. The second of the three things is shutter speed. And that's how fast the picture's taken. If you're taking a picture of like an athlete running really fast and you don't want them to be blurry, then you got to up your shutter speed. But the faster the picture's taken, then the less light that's let in. So if you want to take a really sharp picture, sometimes you're going to have to boost your ISO to raise up the light because your shutter is closing so fast that it's not letting that much light in. But if you open your shutter up a lot, if you, if you, if you open your shutter speed up a lot and you make it really slow, then it's going to let so much light in that it, your picture is going to be all blasted out. And then if anybody's moving at all, it's going to be all blurry. So you have to find this, the sweet spot for your shutter speed. And so you have to kind of mix and match the ISO and the shutter speed together to make sure it's nice, depending on what you want as far as how much light you want in your picture and how sharp you want the movement in your picture. And then the third thing, of course, is your f-stop. And your f-stop is how open the diameter is of the hole in the lens, which is the aperture. And the mo more open it is, the more light comes in, the more closed it is, the less light comes in. But the more open it is, the more depth of field you get, the more blurriness you get in front and behind your subject. And the more closed it is, the more in focus everything is. So if you just want an eyeball in focus, you want to have your aperture completely open and then the rest of the face will be out of focus. But the aperture is open, so it's going to be bright because you're letting a lot of light in. So you need to lower your ISO down so it's not all blown out, but then your shutter speed might be slow enough that it's still letting too much light in. So you have to turn your shutter speed up so that it lets less light in. And then you get a nice sharp picture that doesn't have too much light, but then you have a lot of depth of field and everything's blurry. Or you go the opposite of that, where you have your aperture really closed down. So everything's really in focus and clear, but then it's closed down. So it's not letting much light in. So then you got to boost your ISO up. So it gets more light sensitivity on the sensor but then your shutter speed, depending on if you want it to be really sharp or if you want it to be really blurry, if they're moving, you got to move that up or down. So it's like, it's really those three things. It's shutter speed, it's ISO, and it's aperture or the, the openness of your lens. And those three settings already, even with two settings, you have pretty much infinite possibilities. But with three settings, it's like you have to marry those three things together and really find the really good combination, depending on what the picture that you want is. And... Um, a lot of times you can just leave it on automatic and it's fine. But if you really, ha if you really want to have that control, then you got you to gotta, you gotta get familiar with that stuff. But the, but the great thing is, once you get familiar with those three things, then at least you know what's going on. Like if, you, if, you take a, if, you're, in, if you're in manual mode, 
and you take a picture and it's completely blown out. You're like, okay, I need to up my shutter speed. And then you're like, okay, it's not blown out, but it's really grainy. Oh, okay, I need to turn my, down my ISO. It's like, oh, well, now it's not grainy, but it's really dark. Okay, I need to lower my shutter speed and maybe open up my aperture a little bit more. And like, oh, it's blown out again. And it's really blurry in the background. Okay, close the aperture down so it's more in focus. And then maybe up the shutter speed a little bit so it's a little crisp, but it's also not too bright. It's like, oh, there's the sweet picture. Yeah. And then, of course... If all those fills, just take off the lens cap and then you should be good. What is that? Studio Unknown coming in with 23 months. What is going on? Thank you so much for the continued support. Almost two complete rotations. Much appreciated indeed. What's happening, studio? What's, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing? Van Cruff, hello. Whittle Rain, what's happening? Uh, all right, let me see. I'm going to catch up. I'm still trying to catch up. This always happens. Oh my God, this is the stuff I'm reading up on at the moment as I'm switching from webcams to webcams. There you go. What's up, Hazel? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, once you get into it, it's like, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to go back. But like I said, don't let that discourage you. If you don't have the budget to get into like more serious cameras and like you want to start doing music streaming or any kind of streaming or anything with video, it's like webcams work. I used webcams for years and it was exclusively webcams and it worked. I was still able to build a channel out of it. I was still able to do what I wanted to do. And in many ways, it made it actually easier because not only was I able to get more cameras because the budget was lower to get them, but I was able to kind of move forward knowing what I was getting. Like I had eight C920s in that little box and the way that those C920s, the lenses are, first of all, I don't know if they still do it, but they had Zeiss glass in them and Zeiss is really good glass. So it's like, C920s themselves actually have pretty nice lenses in, them all, lenses in them already. And the focal length, I don't know what the POV on those are. I think, I can't remember what it is, but they're pretty wide. So like my little box room, the C920s were perfect. It made the room feel way bigger than it was. I remember Twitch came to do a uh, like a, a kind of, uh, what, what do you call it? Like a expose or a, uh, a they, they, what, what would you call it? Like just like an interview type deal for, for one of their videos for TwitchCon. And the guys were just totally surprised how small the box actually is or was it doesn't exist anymore, but how small it was because on, on the stream, it looked way bigger than it was because the C920s have a nice wide, have a nice wide, uh, wide focal length. I don't know what the focal length is though. See, that's the thing about the weird webcams. It's like the difference between focal length and POV. It's like, they never actually, it's hard to tell what's actually going on. Cause if like you say like the webcam up there on the mic, it says that it's two millimeters, but it's like, if it was two millimeters, I mean, you would see like, you would see 98% of the room, you know, it'd be, it'd be like, it'd be like all warped up and back on itself. So it's like, I know it's not two millimeters, but that's what it says it is. So I don't know exactly. I mean, I know that sometimes the number of millimeters, it's so much of, it's based on the sensor size, right? So the sensor size in those little webcams is so incredibly small that I guess a two millimeter lens at that size of a sensor completely changes like the actual crop factor that the sensor's picking up. So it, it doesn't even make sense to talk about it in terms of millimeters for lenses like that. So I guess you are just really talking about field of view and how much, how many degrees of view you actually see. 78 degrees, which that's great. I mean, 180 would be complete there. And then it's like 45 is like that. Because 90, 45, 90. So 90 is like that. So 75, yeah. Like, yeah, that's 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 great. It's like, it's expansive and open, but it's not warped out, warped or weird looking. Anyway, webcams are great. It's like, that's what, if that's what your option is to start it off with the deal. What is this? Is this bits on the jam? <laughs> Sorry. I meant to play the, the other one first. <laughs> Antivirus. Drop that 200 bits on the jam. One. Cow. Hey, antivirus, thank you very much for dropping the bits on the jam, but we do assure you, we will rebuild. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Is that bits on the jam? <laughs> uh. My dad and I are interested in photography. Do you have any suggestions on good for DSLR? Uh, it really depends. I mean, there's so much, especially now. Like, like my thing is I definitely want to at some point uh, subtract a, one of the webcams and get another mirrorless and probably either a G9 or the GH5S because 
They're such great cameras. Like that's the amazing thing. And they're years old now. So they've gotten so much cheaper than they were when they first came out. And like, that's the craziest thing is like, if you're just looking to get into it now, like you can go back several generations from what they've just released now. And you can get amazing cameras for sweet deals. I mean, relatively speaking. So it really depends on what you're looking for. I mean, if you're looking for something new and you want to get into it and you want the best of the best, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I would recommend. If you're looking to get into it because you just want to get your feet wet, I would say my, this is just my opinion. Cause I mean, there are, are so many opinions out there and there are people way more educated on this stuff than I am and way more qualified than I am to really give you a full answer to that question. But I would say from my experience, I'm really happy that I went with micro four thirds. It's a smaller sensor, but it, that means it's a smaller form factor. The camera itself is smaller and less heavy. The lenses are smaller and less heavy, but the pictures are still absolutely gorgeous. The resolution is absolutely gorgeous. And the, and the, the expense of each actual piece is way less expensive than you would have to pay if you were getting like a full frame camera. Cause the full frame camera, the sensors are bigger. They're hotter. Uh, their glass has to be larger because it's such a bigger sensor. There's more, you need more glass. Now, the thing that you get when you get a full frame camera compared to like a micro four thirds like I have, which is half the size. So micro four thirds is half the size of a full frame camera. The sensor is. The thing that changes, really the only real, from what I, from what I understand, the only actual technical change is you have a much shallower depth of field on full frame cameras. Uh, so at the same focal length or, or the same view distance, like say, so it's, it's a two times. So if you have a 12 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera, it's as if you have a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, it's double the focal length. So they would look the same. A 12 mil on a micro four thirds looks the same. As far as like your field of view, it looks the same as a 24 on a full frame. And then your focal length, meaning your depth of field and how much your lens opens and closes and how that affects your depth of field. That is also, I don't know if it's two times the difference. I think it's, it might be a smaller factor than that, but it is different. So you're going to get a more of a depth of field with that. And I was watching uh, the dude with the, the bushy hairdo. What's his name? He always says his name so fast in his YouTube videos, but you know who I'm talking about if you've seen him. And if you search for any camera stuff, you'll see immediately he's this dude with this big bushy hairdo. But uh, now I, all I can think of is him coming on and be like, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> he like, does this thing at the beginning of his videos. Uh, Jared, Jared Pullen, that's it, that's it, that's him. Uh, like he's like, Jared does video. <laughs> he does something like that. Fro, Frodo's photos. Frodo's photos. <laughs> that's what he does. Thank you. Thank you. That's him. Uh, <laughs> Frodo's photos. Uh, anyway, I saw him do a review of a 600 millimeter lens for, I think it was for an APS-C camera, which is like my Nikon over here. It's a little bit bigger than the micro four thirds, uh, but it's different. And, and then, um, and then a full frame, like a Sony a nine or a seven R four or something like that. And it was a 600 millimeter on both those cameras. And I mean, yeah, there was just something about like the Sony full frame because he, he was at a baseball game and he had the batter. He was taking pictures of the batter and on that 600 millimeter from Sony, it was the Sony 600 mil full frame. And I mean, it just looked like the cover of a magazine. Like it's just, you're just, it was so blurry behind him. Like, I mean, it, he was so sharp. His body was so sharp with him in the bat. And then just behind him, it was just, bleh, it was just complete blur. And it was like, you can't, it, you just, you wouldn't be able to get that uh, at 600 millimeters on a micro four thirds. You would be able to get, depending on your subject and your distance from your subject, you could get really good depth of field. But just that particular comparison of like portrait photography from a far distance with a really high focal length, it's just the depth of field is just incomparable on the full frame. But that's like the one big difference I think you get going from full frame to micro four thirds. But the price is immensely different and the weight is immensely different. And the actual, the, I'm getting a little bit into fuzzy territory now, but I think the variety of lenses is actually different too, because on full frame, it has to be a full frame lens. What's really cool about micro four thirds cameras or any small factor uh, censored camera is you can take full frame lenses or any lens and you can adapt it to that camera and you'll be able to see the full frame of the picture because the lens will be too big for it. So then it'll look just like it's zoomed in. Like it won't be the actual focal length of the lens, but it'll be like, if it's, if it's micro four thirds, it'll be double the focal length. If it's a, if it's a full frame and you adapt it, I'm, I'm getting way out in the weeds here. But the point is 
I'm really happy with going with micro four thirds. I, I, for me, it was a, it was a great decision. It's cheaper gear. It's lighter gear. There's a huge variety of lenses. And like I like to do, I really like Nikon glass and I adapt it to the micro four thirds and it's great. So it's like, I, I love that. If I was a professional photographer and I had a nice big budget and I was doing serious journalistic photography that was getting published in all kinds of stuff and that's what I did, then I think I would probably get like a Sony A7R. No, I wouldn't. I don't know what I'm talking about. See, this is where I don't know what I'm talking about because I know that there are professionals who would be like, no, no, the A7R4 is way too much resolution. The files are way too big. And besides with that much resolution on the sensor, there's not enough light coming in. So low light's not as good as like the a7 III and this, that, and the other thing. And there's a nature photographer that, I, that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, he has a YouTube that goes into, um, it's like safaris or something. Like they do a lot of like safaris all over the world, like in South, I think South America, Africa, a bunch of different exotic locations. And oh my God, he's such a brilliant photographer. His work is so good. But he uses a, uh, he uses a Canon, uh, Canon. <laughs> he uses a Canon APS-C, I think. It, he, I can't remember the model of his camera, but it's a small form factor, smaller sensor. And I mean, his images are just absolutely fantastic. And he's just such a brilliant photographer. So he would totally disagree with me. And he's an actual professional. So I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you're just getting into it now, all I can tell you is that I'm really happy with going with Micro Four Thirds. It's, it's a cheaper option, smaller form factor, and there's a huge variety of lenses to choose from and to get familiar with. And there are so many cameras that are like one or two generations back that are still fantastic cameras that are already at a discount because they're older. And it's amazing. It's just amazing. Like the fact that like a G9, you can get like a used G9 for like 800 bucks or 700 bucks right now. And it's like, I mean, it's still, it's, it's, it's such a fantastic camera. And it's like the fact that it's under a thousand dollars and it's like, you can get amazing quality images out of it. It's awesome. I have, a, I have a 5600 that I got off a friend who's a pro photographer. That's that's APS-C, right? I think the those the D series. That's the four numbers. That's those are APS-C. I mean the 7000 is. I know that, so I assume that that would be too. But yeah, I mean Nikon is so awesome. I love Nikon. I love the color science on Nikon. It's like my the G9 has better technically it has better resolution, and I have some better lenses for the G9. But man, when I take pictures with the 30 35 mil on the Nikon, it's just the color science on that is amazing. Grass is so green, like bark on trees is just the, it's just, it's all, it just looks so great. There's something about Nikon, I, I love Nikon. Canon's amazing too. I mean, it's just really interesting. All of the different manufacturers, everything's different. You know, when you have these packages that there's so many parts of the camera that are, are, are so technical, you know? So it's like you have these like teams of engineers working on this stuff. And so it's like, at the end of the day, the package that is released, it's gonna be so different from the other manufacturers. Sometimes that's just such a nightmare because one manufacturer will have like a great menu system. Another one will have like a great storage system or, you know, better color science or better features as far as like, um, like being able to like do, uh, like, what is it like blast blast shots? Is there, is there a better term than that blasting where it's like, you can do like nine shots in a second or 20 shots in a second or uh, buffering and like that. So sometimes they have like better features and like some, like, you know, there's pros and cons to each one, but I, I love all the cameras. Like I, when I see comparisons, like the Sony a seven, the Sony a seven three is such a, it, it takes such beautiful pictures. I, I saw it compared to the a seven R four because the a seven R series from Sony has really high resolution sensors. And you would think, Oh, that's better high resolution, but the higher resolution, the sensor gets, the sensor's not getting bigger. It's still the same sensor size. So you're, you're putting all these extra pixels for higher resolution on the same size sensor. So each pixel can't take in as much light as the other sensor of the same size with less pixels. So you may hear like, oh, it's more resolution, but that doesn't mean it's a better picture, especially in low light. So it's like, you gotta take all these, consider all these things into consideration. Like the Sony a7 III looks amazing. So it takes amazing pictures. Uh, the Canons take amazing pictures. Everything I hear about the Canon, whenever I see anything about Canon, people are like, I, it was a hard decision, but I went with the Canon because of the color science. Color science, color science, color science. Canon has like the most amazing color. Like you can, you can take a picture in a Canon, Canon camera and like you just look at the picture and it's like there's no filtering or Photoshop or anything. It's just beautiful, vibrant, full of color and gorgeous. It's like Canon, there's something about their color science. And then Nikon, I love the Nikon color science too. I mean, there's something about the Canon color science. There's just so, it's so gorgeous, but like I love the Nikon color science too. And like the, the Panasonic, which is the G9 that I have and the GH5, their video 
features are so great that it's like, I'm willing to like not have the exact color science of the Nikon or the Canon because the video features are so good. And then it's like, when you look at autofocus, if you're looking for something like that, like the Sony's have such amazing autofocus capabilities. Like apparently like the A9, I think it's the A9 has just the most amazing like autofocus features. And I think the, I think the A7R4 has that now too. I'm not sure if the three does, but I mean, it's been a while since I've watched any of this stuff. So I'm sure stuff has changed and developed since then. And I know that there's even more cameras. I think there's the A7S3. Is that what it is? And like, that's supposed to be like the end all be all of like the full frame options from Sony. It's like this new thing that covers all the bases for video and for video and photography. And then I know that Panasonic just released the S1 and the S1H like last year. And those are their full frame version of everything. So, I mean, everything just keeps getting bigger and better and more expensive. And it's just incredible, the development of like camera technology. But like I say, you can get such good stuff and, and stuff that's a couple years old now that maybe has a couple thousand pictures taken on it. And somebody just, they're upgrading like the newest thing and they want to get it off their hands. And eBay is just like, la, here's a gift. It's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing time to be into photography. So if you're, if you're looking to get into it, I highly recommend getting into it and just getting something and start messing with it. Cause as soon as you start to get that bug and you start to get, get familiar with what's going on, it's like this whole world opens up. A Canon SL3. I'm unfamiliar with the SL3 series, but I believe you when you say it's wonderful. I'm sure it is. So all the flies taken with macro are actually dead flies. Not the ones I take. All the flies, I, I never killed any of the flies I took pictures of. <clears throat> I was, uh, I happened to wake up and saw a moth. I'll, I'll have to show you guys this picture I took. I, I, I haven't shown anybody this picture. I, I woke up one morning and there was a moth, this beautiful bright white moth. Its whole body was white. Its wings were white. Its body was furry white. It had like a little bit of like a yellowish kind of tinge to like some of its features. It's been a while since I looked at it, but it's just, it was this beautiful bright moth and it was on this window. And so its body, you could see its body and the window was nice and clean. And so you could see its body and then its wings were spread out around its body. I got a couple of pictures of that. Oh my God. Macro photography is so awesome. So beautiful. What are some other ones I got recently? Uh, I'll just have to I'll just have to collect a couple of those and just show them to you guys because yeah they they're oh man I love it yeah I got a bunch I'll do that thanks for reminding me of that I'll do that I'll do that maybe maybe next week's Q and A I'll I'll show you guys some of my some of my macro stuff and CNOS yeah exactly the macro thing you're exactly right. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I should have uh seen Cenos, you're right. I I agree. Uh I should have specified that when I was talking about uh recommendations. I mean, the the micro four thirds, it's mirrorless. So DSLR is where it's like there's a mirror in the there's a mirror in the bottom, and like when you open up the shutter, like the mirror moves and then reflects what's coming through the lens onto the sensor. Like it's not directly to the sensor, it like mirrors it to the sensor. And um so it's more moving parts. I mean, I don't think it takes like the quality of the actual picture. I mean, some of the features change because some of those mechanical shutters can only go so fast. So if you're looking for like burst photos and stuff like that, like some of that changes. I'm not sure technically how much changes beyond that. But if you're looking for picture quality, I mean, I don't think that's really different. I mean, it's still, you can still get beautiful photos on a DSLR, but I feel like the mirrorless cameras, I feel like there was something about mirrorless cameras back in the day that they were at a disadvantage to DSLRs. And so DSLRs were still kind of on top and then mirrorless technology kept getting better and better and better. And now I feel like the general feeling from people that I've seen is that mirrorless has overtaken DSLR. And like, there's nothing about mirrorless now that should dissuade you from, from choosing DSLR over mirrorless like there used to be. At least that's sort of the vibe I have. I'm, I'm not, I can't tell you why that is though, but that's what I, what I think is the case. <clears throat> Last year, Monty smashed a spider on stream. Oh my God. Let me tell you, this summer, right before I broke down the studio, I was in there and I picked up the water silo to take a drink. And this giant house spider, we get giant house spiders here. And in the summer, in the late summer, the males come out to look for mates. 
And it's every year, it's the same thing. I see about three or four of them. And I saw about that many this year. But this time, I didn't just see him. I pulled, I picked up the water silo and he had been hanging out on the corner of the water silo. And when I picked it up, he ran across the floor in the studio. And I mean, the giant house spiders, man, they're so big. They're so big and they're so fast. I mean, they live up to their name and oh boy, are they fast. Now, the one positive thing or the one at least not totally terrifying thing about them is they're not aggressive because they're so big. I don't think anybody messes with them. So they don't really have that sort of like aggressive attacky vibe about them. They just want to get away from you. They don't, and, and I've never seen one, you know, I've never had one try to assault me, but, uh, I did watch a video where, uh, a dude picked one up and he was trying to get it to bite him and he was like pushing on it. He didn't hurt it. He didn't like damage it, but like he was kind of pushing on it, trying to get it to bite him and, stuff, and it wouldn't bite him. It wouldn't, it wouldn't mess with him. And I was like, okay, all right, they're cool. Like he, he made me feel better about it. And so I'm not, I'm not terrified by them, but it's still shocking and scary when you see this thing that is like, they're literally, they're humongous and they're a spider and that's all that, that's all that has to be said. And so, yes, I, I killed him. I had to kill him. I had to do it. I mean, I wasn't going to pick him up and take him outside. I, I do try to do that now. I try to, I try to, when I see spiders, I, I try not to murder them anymore. I try to, I try to let them live. I don't want to kill anybody. I just, I want live and let live, you know, but this guy, I mean, you know, he was, I, he, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And man, it was kind of sad. Cause like he didn't, he didn't even really try to get away. It's like, he kind of he knew he was like, yeah, I'm kind of stuck here and it's going to happen. So I did. Yeah, that was it. The sound. Oh man. The sound of the crunch. I mean, it was, you know, when you, when, when there's an, there's an exoskeleton that large, you know, it's going to make noise when it gets crushed. It was, it was loud. Oh, it was loud. Multiple cracks. Yeah. 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 Oh. Anyway, I remember that one from last year. I forgot about that. I'm catching up. Yes, I'm catching up now. Wait, what did you ask? Uh, antivirus asked something? I don't see it. If I, oh, wait. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess you're just saying, what's up? What's up? What's happening? <laughs> Okay, I cut up to the lens. Mount that on a gun and break the world record for sniping. <laughs> uh, who else thinks he redid studio colors to match all of his lenses? That's it. The lenses have to be incognito. That dude, uh, whoever posted, I can't remember, I think it was Gaflick, but it might not have been. But uh, that dude who did the, who did the, uh, the video it's in the discord if you want to find it. i think it's the link dump and it was uh about the audio to midi for the for the microphone his studio it reminded me of, it reminded me of the last dude and it was like but his was like next level like it was like it was like glossy white and he had like a couple plants in there and stuff and like a white keyword and it was like yeah it was like this is good old days it's a good look I, I like that look a lot Stayed up for this 3060 Ti launch, and apparently there is no location in the universe it could ship to. I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that. Man, did you guys see the WAN show? Did you see uh, Linus go DEFCON 1 on, uh, on NVIDIA? That was pretty serious. What's up, Van Cruff? How you doing? All right, you guys got to stop chatting so much because I, I got to catch up here. <laughs> Another thing to remember, at least for video work, shutter speed should be a multiple whatever frame rate recording. Otherwise, you'll get strange artifacts like tearing. Yes, exactly. Typically, I, I like to double. Somebody was asking about frame rate earlier on the stream too, and I definitely wanted to address that because it's a little bit more involved than just setting a frame rate. All right, I'm catching up, catching up. Lens might be two millimeters, but the coverage on the sens sensor is only the middle area. Yes, exactly, Eagle. That's exactly right. Why do you have a gun sound effect? Are you asking me? Yeah, I still haven't fixed that. I've had that gun sound effect on the bits since album unknown, since since PUBG, since I was playing PUBG. Like that's when I did that. 
was that win. That's it's from that first win that I ever got that I used for the template for album unknown. That's what that is. Uh, that was a good time. Do you remember that? Remember when I got pneumonia when I wasn't done with the album yet? Holy moly. Thank God for antibiotics. Can't believe I had walking pneumonia while I was finishing that album. It's crazy. Remember when I'd be recording vocals and I'd start coughing? <clears throat> I would wake up every morning and I would say, maybe I'll be better today. And then I'd feel good. I'd be like, okay, I think I'm better. And I'd get in the shower and then I'd start exhaling and I'd start feeling like a weirdness. And then I'd be like, well, let me test this. And I'd try to exhale really far. And then the, that deep, that deep cough would start deep. It's such a weird, walking pneumonia was the weirdest thing ever, man. Like I've never been so sick and then so normal at the same time. It's such a weird sickness. I wouldn't wish that on anybody because it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then finally I went to the doctor and she listened to me for two seconds and she could hear the crackle snap crackle pop in my lungs. And she's like, yeah, you have pneumonia. She's like, we need to get you on antibiotics for 10 days. And I did it. And then it went away. I was just like, man, what if we didn't have that? Like people used to die of that. Just like, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. I mean, people still die of pneumonia. People have been dying of pneumonia this year, but you know, from complications with COVID, but it's just crazy, man such a crazy thing i it's just crazy like i was able to sing vocal takes but then i would have like a coughing fit but then i could still talk and sing and it was weird god it's so so strange anyway yeah that was that that gunshot was from finishing that match i've used a large format film camera and that's when i first really grasped the depth of field it's relation between sensor size and f-stop not a universal yes exactly eagle yeah. <clears throat> go vintage shopping Use my dad old dad's old lenses with my micro four thirds. Yeah, there you go. It's awesome. It's so cool. It would usually have vignette or worse. Yeah, that's that's right. You can put you can put smaller lens on full frame, but yeah, sometimes it'll get weird. Do any cameras really suck? I have Sony and Olympus and a Nikon, and they're all pretty great to use. Do any cameras really suck? I feel like Gerald Undone was talking about that, and he was saying like, "Yes, this is a oh, what was it? What was it?" What was it? I don't think he was saying that the camera sucked. Okay, I don't want to put words in his mouth, and it was a while ago that I listened to this and watched this, but if I'm correct, which I could be wrong, so don't take this for being real truth, but I have a feeling that he did a review of Zcam and there was something up with it. Like there was something up with the firmware or the software. And this was like last year, maybe even a year and a half ago. Maybe, I think it was last year. I think it was in 2009 at some point, 2019. But it was a Z cam. It was, it was one of those, it was one of those block, uh, it was one of those block box cameras, like a Z cam box camera. And he, he was complaining something about that. So maybe that camera sucks, but I don't know. But it's, it, I think it might have been a software thing, which is probably fixed by now. Those cameras are kind of cool. Like the, there's the Blackmagic ones. Uh, Panasonic makes one now. And the Z cam was, I think, the start of it, where it's just basically like a box and the sensor's inside of it. And then it has a fitting for the, lane, for the lens housing. <clears throat> and uh, But yeah. They're, they're kind of expensive. And I, I feel like they're, a very, they're like a very particular solution. Like those box cameras. Like they're for a very specific use case. And I, I really like having like the handheld mirrorless camera. I, I like it just because I, yeah, I can use it for anything, you know? And it's like those box cameras, it seems like they're really made specifically. Like you mount them somewhere and then you kind of like leave them there. And I know that they used, uh, what was it? They used an Ari or an Ari? Is it Ari or Ari? Uh, for like 1917. I saw 1917 while I was gone. Have, has, have you guys seen that movie? Holy, holy moly. If not at least just being an interesting story about World War I, what a technical achievement. Making a whole feature-length war movie look like it was one take? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Roger Deakins is one of the most visionary cinematographers in like the history of time. Like The guy is so amazing. His use of practical lighting is just staggeringly amazing. Like Unreal. That movie is crazy. That movie's so crazy. That's oh, such a good movie. Uh, different cameras do certain things better than others. Yes, I do agree with that. Burst shots. Yes, that's what it is. A7s are nice. Yes, they are. I didn't stop looking at uh, A7 SR two or three videos. Didn't realize how long I was watching. I know, right? PJ, I've done the same thing. You just get lost in it. 
and yeah, it's some there's some really good content creators out there showing off some really nice stuff, and you're just like, you just can't stop. <clears throat> a lot of Nikon cameras prior to the latest models had Sony sensors. That's funny. I didn't I didn't know that. A7s have been a favorite of video arbors, I believe, because their low light performance is insane. Yes, the A7 is really great in low light. That's I was trying to decide that when I was getting the GH5. So the GH5S is the first one that I got out of this whole new era of like nice, nicer cameras that I have now. <clears throat> Did I start with that? No, I started with the PTZs, right? I think I started with one PTZ and then I got the GH5. But the GH5 is like the first mirrorless camera that I got. And uh, it was between that and the A7 III. And the reason I did it is because I happened to have a Nikon lens that I was going to adapt to micro four thirds. And I knew I could, that was literally, it, it was like a hundred dollar lens, a $100 lens made me choose between one complete solution and another. And I didn't really understand the gravity of that choice until much later. And I understand, I understood and do understand that I, I think I made the right choice, but if I would have chosen the a seven three, that's a full frame camera. So I would have been locked in to full frame lenses and i would have oh, i don't know how happy i'd be about that man full frame lenses are no joke i mean in terms of the money department and it's like i'd, ha I'd only have one camera that they work on i mean i guess i could adapt them technically to uh, other cameras but i'm glad i went with that but yes that was one of the things the a7 III has such amazing low light also the thing that got me about that too now that i remember it's coming back the a7 III only recorded i think eight bit uh eight bit internally and the GH5S records 10-bit internally, which that really hasn't been an issue for me because I don't really record video internally on the cameras, but I remember that being a thing where I was like, ooh, the a7 III only does 8-bit. As if I understand the difference, especially at the time, I had no idea what the difference was, but like, oh, 10-bit, that sounds better. I should probably go with 10-bit. Trying to do photography in my area is so hard because it's always overcast and miserable. Not to mention lockdown doesn't help either. So whenever I get my camera, I have to recharge the battery. Yeah, I had a battery die. I, I hadn't recharged it in the longest time. It just died. But yeah, that's why I recommend if you can do it, get a macro lens and then you don't even have to go anywhere. You can literally take pictures of wallpaper. You could take a picture of stucco on the side of a wall and it looks amazing in a macro lens. You're like, oh, look at all the detail. Look at all the little pebbles and the little dirt grime. It's amazing. PJ, it looks like PJ's out of here. If you're still listening, take it easy. Uh, the mirror causes some problems for astrophotography too. Oh, okay. Ant funny out of here as well. If you're still listening, take it easy, Ant. The chunk of the mirror throws the camera around. Yeah, I totally, I, I can see that. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Meyer sound or L acoustics? I don't even know how to say that second word because I don't think I've heard of that place. I have heard of Meyer. And at my last job, we had a couple mains. I think we had a couple mains that were Meyers, and they were very beloved to some of the other people that I worked with, but I really have no experience with them, but I very, I hear, I hear very good things about Meyer. Meyer is based in, is Meyer based in Berkeley, California? I think they are. Or Oakland. I think the electronic viewfinders and mirrorless used to be kind of mech quality and speed wise versus real time of a mirror. Yeah, exactly. I think that's exactly right. I'm up near Portland by coastal. Are there any brown recluse fires in the studio? Could you even see them in the darkness? No, no, I couldn't. But I don't get brown recluse up here. Think, think the gods. A buddy of mine said uh, he moved to uh, the Midwest, and he was he was from the West Coast, and he said he was in his house, and there was like some spiders hanging out, and like he was just he would just flick them, and he said uh, it got so bad there was enough of them that he called the exterminator, and uh, the exterminator came in and. and First thing he said was, "Oh man, you got a bunch of fiddlebacks," and I guess uh, grand recluses look like look look like they have fiddles on, the, on their backs. So he didn't realize it, but he had been flicking brown recluses away from him. I think I would retroactively have to have a panic attack in that in that situation. <clears throat> I knew a guy in high school that got bit by one of those and he had a whole gash out of his leg. Ugh. No joke, those brand recluses. Yeah, that's why the giant house spiders, it's like, I, you know, I'm not, not too, you know, they, they, they freak me out and they shock me, but it's like there's not that terror, you know? <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Same, same with microphones. Best one is the one you got with you. 
I've been diving into an NDI video lately ever since I got that 5G unlimited hotspot. Oh, snap. Nice. Tickle fight. What's going on, tickle fight? The advantage of mirrors, you get real-time exposure in a digital viewfinder. You can see. Oh, that's right. That's right. In mirrorless, you can see what the picture sees. That's a good point, too. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, in the Danielle, the hard thing about NDI is... Uh, especially when you're using multiple computers on the same network and then telling Windows to let the signal through. That was the biggest part, you know? And it's one of those things you don't know if you're doing it right. You don't know if it's right until you finally click the correct button that lets it through and then it works. And you're like, oh my gosh, I, I had no idea that's what was going on. And like, luckily I've to, I'm to the point now where I've like experienced that a few times. So it's not like a frustrating nightmare when I come across a video signal that's not coming in. I'm like, oh, it's probably the network's not set up right. And then I have to remember like, which one do I go into and then find the right menu and find the right checkbox? And I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. <clears throat> Mine like an hour behind chat. I know. That's just how, that's how I always go. I always think I'm going to catch up. Uh, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I just don't want to miss anything. Don't want to miss anything. And mine is not fun. I know, right? It's like 20 years ago from Halo. It's a dust cleaning old basement. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Last thing I need is another coffee. Yep. There goes some constraints. Stuff for old Max. Main Windows machine actually have an energy set with it once it's up and working. Right on. That's great. You ever shave your armpits? I have. I have. In my life, I have actually done that. Yes. Not regularly. Not now. Don't ask me why. I don't remember. I'm sure it was for a good reason. was that? CNOS dropping a hundred bits on the jam. We're we going right here. There it is. Bits hype. A hundred bits? Hey, CNOS, thanks very much for that. I really appreciate it, but I will assure you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for the bit droppage. Much appreciated indeed. How far is he from real-time chat? It looks like the scroll bar is almost to the bottom. Uh, it's getting closer. More we chat, the further it gets. <laughs> Director Sam Mendes, Cinematography, Roger Deakins. Budget, 90 to 100. Yeah, Academy for Best Cinematography and many others. Did they win more than that? I'm, well, I, I would hope that they did, but yeah. I think he definitely won Cinematography. But uh, Roger Deakins had been nominated like 14 times and never won or 17 times or something crazy. And then he finally won for... Um, Blade Runner, uh, what's the new Blade Runner? It's, it's a year, right? 2086 or something like that? Blade Runner 2096? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, he finally won 2049. Thank you, Switch. What's up, Switch? How you doing? He finally won for Blade Runner. And then now it's like, once he broke the seal, now it's like he's going to win every year. I'm sure he's going to get it for Dune. Him, him and Denis Villeneuve, if I'm saying his name right, have done a lot of stuff together. Uh, Arrival. Um... Have, have, has anybody in here, this is kind of random, have, has anyone in here seen Next Floor? Denis Villeneuve did Next Floor. It's a short film on YouTube, and it's the craziest film. It's, it's like a commentary on like the world society, I think, as it sits currently. Or, you know, it's really, honestly, it's a commentary on the world. It's a, a commentary on how the world is. Like, it's how societies build themselves and elites versus the poor and stuff like that. But it's like a literally like a 10-minute video, and it's, it's this group of people eating at this table and uh, it's just awesome. I really highly recommend it. It's really good. It's only like 10 minutes. It's called Next Floor. Anyway, Denis Villeneuve did that too, but I, I'm a huge fan of those two. Roger Deakins and, and Denis Villeneuve uh, working together do some great stuff. I know that Sam Mendes did 1917, and Sam Mendes did, uh, did was it Spectre or was it Skyfall? I think he did Sky, Skyfall. I think he did Skyfall because the Skyfall, the fire, when the mansion lights on fire, that was all practical lighting. They, they like did like a bunch of floodlights on that. And I think they did the same thing on 1917. It was all practical lighting. Tariel, Arrival is an incredible movie. So good. Oh, they, they also did Spectre. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I like Blade Runner too. I like Denis Villeneuve's movies. I like them. I think they also did Prisoners. That was a really tough movie. I mean, that was just one of those movies really tough. Everybody was really great in that and such wonderfully made. And what was interesting about that movie as well was it was made in 16.9. So it's like a, it was like a regular TV screen, full, full TV screen, which was interesting to watch 
them make a film like that because usually they do uh i don't know what the ratio is like what is it like two three five or whatever but uh they also did now that i'm thinking about it they did sicario as well and sicario cinematically is amazing i liked it just for the movie itself but the the cinematography in that movie like holy moly so good and that was also them <clears throat> i'm trying to think if there's any other one that i can think off right off the top of my head but uh yeah arrival was, arrival was great but yeah roger deacon scott he's so good Ryla dark star what's happening should i say good night now so by the time money gets to this comment i'll just be getting off are you getting off eagle see ya <laughs> Ladybugs with morning dew or rain. I got a ladybug. I'll I'll have to put that in the compilation. You're in the Netherlands. It's green white here too. Oh, I bet it's beautiful though. Don't don't Dan. What's happening? Or weavers and wolf spiders. Nothing scary, thankfully. I got a wolf. See, this is this is another example. I caught a wolf at my old spot in like 2016. I think it was a wolf. I I think that I think there's. Now, I could be wrong about this. I'm just going to say it because it could be true. Because <laughs> why not, right? No, I could be wrong about this, but I feel like it might be true. But you could correct me if I'm wrong because I might be wrong. Probably wrong. But I think we have an idea of what a wolf spider is, and I think we're wrong about that. I think wolf spiders are actually just house spiders. And you actually very rarely actually see a real wolf spider because they're very, very reclusive. And I caught one once. And I got a picture of it and I wish I would have had my macro lens back then because I took it with my iPhone and I actually had a uh, magnifying glass lens that I put on my iPhone. So it's, I got a couple okay pictures of it, but uh, it looked like, you know, the, uh, the, is it, is it from Lord of the Rings, the rock guys, or is that from, from uh, Noah that it's, there's the rock guys. There's a movie with like the guys made out of rocks. Anyway, that's what this spider looked like. And I tried to look it up online and I came across pictures of wolf spiders. And I think I saw like something about that where it was like, here's what, was it never ending story? Maybe it was never ending story that I'm thinking of. And uh, that's what it looked like. And I saw something about wolf spiders are actually that spider. And it, they're crazy looking. They look like rocks. Like they're made out of like rocks. They're really terrible. It's really terrifying looking actually. And uh, we, what we always think of as wolf spiders when we see them, they're actually like brown spiders. Like those fuzzy brown ones that you see that you think are wolf spiders that we call wolf spiders. Like that everybody always says, oh, that's a wolf spider. I think that's a house spider. And then the wolf spider is the one that's like, it looks like almost gravelly and, 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 and uh, like, um, like uh, almost like sandpapery. I mean, this thing looked freakish. It was freakish and it was big. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, I could be wrong about that though, but I, I feel like that's what I remember reading. Meyer Sound is based in Berkeley. Interesting that you haven't heard of L Acoustics, very popular company out of France. Rat Sound uses L Acoustics. Interesting. I mean, I the name looks familiar, but I'm not familiar with any of their stuff. Sounds like I should be, though. <laughs> Alan, what's going on? Oh, I'm catching up now. Oh, here we go. I'm back. We're back. Incendious? I haven't seen that one. What's up, Dominic? Thanks for the 45, Andy. Uh, what about the camera at the end of your guitar? Do you still use it? If so, how? Uh, what's the gear? Yeah, I actually use this thing right here. This is the camera. It's a C920. It's just a regular webcam. And then I've shortened down the, ca the cable. I soldered it, cut it down. And then the, the camera plugs into this little connector box here. And then uh, on the other side of the connector box is the antenna. The little box here goes in right there. And then it's powered by just a regular cell phone battery. And then all this whole thing goes on the headstock. And that's how I control it. And then uh, if I go to the uh, video PC right here, I hit connect on the little piece of software. It takes a minute to connect. It's connected. And then I go to the camera itself. It froze earlier. And if I deactivate it and then reactivate it, there you go. And here we are. And it's completely wireless. 
See the blue light there, and it's completely wireless. Yeah, y'all. And then that's just hooked up to the uh, to the headstock. It's called a USB to air. It's by a company called Huddlecam. And I got three of those now for each for each guitar. I have three guitars in the setup now. <clears throat> and I'm going to be making the uh, new album with the uh, LTD AJ7 Andy James seven string. Love that guitar. I made holding on with it, and it's sick. Super sick guitar. <clears throat> Should I get off? Probably. <laughs> I have a picture of a Spider-Man with a back full of babies. Not sure of the type, though. That is crazy. I did get a picture of a beetle. You just reminded me. I got a picture of a beetle. I thought I was just taking the picture of a beetle. And then upon inspection later, and I was able to zoom in, it had a baby like that was basically microscopic. Like You wouldn't have been able to see it with, the, uh, with your naked eye. And there was a baby right on its head. A little... A little translucent baby right on, its, right on its dome. And I mean, the beetle itself was tiny. It was a tiny little beetle. I got this lucky picture of it. It was lucky. It was one picture. I, I didn't have any time because it was walking. And then it disappeared underneath the grass. And then it, upon inspection, it was just right on its, right on its dome. It was this little tiny baby. It's awesome. I'll add, that to the, I'll add that to the list. I'll show you guys next week. All right, now I'm on this chat. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Could add just a bit of raid spray into the fog machine to spider proof the room. <laughs> oh man. Drilled a hole in my capo and bolted a tripod phone mount to it in using a small old iPhone for the headstock. That's a great idea. That's a really great idea. Use a capo. Drill a hole in it. That's that's a that's a great idea. I've been trying to think of ways to improve this setup because what I do now is I snap tight the c920 to the edge of the edge of the headstock right where it meets the neck and then uh use those um little velcro straps as like velcro ties to hold everything on i have some velcro on the actual guitars too and then i stick the battery to that so it stays on and it works well it's just long term i would prefer to have something that's a little bit a little bit better i mean it works but even last night if you if any of you guys were here you, you saw that like it was just it's definitely the weakest link right now. It's wireless and that's great. That's cool. But it's hard to it's hard to keep it running smooth the whole time. And it gets a little laggy and a little weird, so I'm always on the lookout for something something better, but you know, it's working. It's working as 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 buggy as it is, it is working at least. I had no idea uh I had no idea you were the person that did the posed fly photos. I saw those as well. Wait, who are you t who are you talking to? It's not me. I didn't do that. I didn't I didn't pose flies. I just luckily got pictures of flies. Using NDI with a tiny phone. That is awesome. How much battery life are you getting out of the phone? Or do you have it do you have a battery there too on your headstock? You have that plugged in too. That's great. That's a great idea. Using NDI on a phone. That's awesome. Is there much latency? Conclusion, what's happening? How you doing? Oh man, it's getting warm in here. Well, I have caught up to the chat and I am absolutely beat. It is, it is 2.40 in the morning. I, did, I had no idea this was going to last this long. I was thinking maybe we'd do like an hour or two, and then that, that'd be it, and we'd call it. But here we are. So um, I'm going to take tonight off Monday, and I'm going to do the things on the list and try to type any other loose ends that come to mind. And then I will be on tomorrow night, Tuesday, and we'll be kicking out some jams. Well, we will not be kicking out jams. We'll be creating jams. I'm not going to do a music show tomorrow. And I'm pretty sure, uh, let's see how tomorrow and Wednesday go. Cause I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stream on Wednesday as well. And we're going straight into production. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys, uh, if you're, if, if you, if you come by, uh, either way, I'll, I'll mention this too. Maybe I'll mention it in the discord. I'm not sure. I'm going to try, 
I'm going to treat, I'm going to treat the music streams, the production streams, at least in the meantime. And this is kind of how I've always kind of done it, but I'm just going to kind of make it official just so that it's just so that people are aware and just whatever. Uh, but like kind of the way that I have done it. So I'm just going to kind of continue, but just to mention it, I'll just talk about it a little bit is I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm going to treat, I'm going to try, this may change. Everything is always subject to change, but I'm going to try, um, treating the production streams a little bit more like kind of like a window into my process. I'm not going to be as interactive as I normally am. Like, and that's why, that's sort of why, like I'm starting these Q and a streams and these more like conversational streams and talking with everybody and stuff. Cause I definitely want to have that. I want to have that time, but I'm going to try just, just to see how it goes. I'm going to try treating the, the production streams a little bit more like sort of a window into my process and a window of what I'm doing. I'm not going to be looking at chat as much, which I always fell in that anyway, when I'm kind of in the zone of production, but just so it's out there. And I'm going to treat it more like kind of, you can come check it out and I will, there, there will be some interaction, of course, just obviously, cause I'll be live and stuff, but it won't, I, I won't be as, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking what, I'm just going to say this out loud. And then I'll see how it feels. But I'm thinking I might not do this because tonight was a good example of that it was fine and it worked. And it's probably better to do it how we did it last or how we did it tonight, which worked. And I was thinking, yeah, I think I'm, I'm not even going to say it because I don't think I would have done it. What I was going to say, just so you're not wondering, is I was probably going to hold off on giveaways. And like if subs come in, then we would just kind of hold it back. And if it went over 10 or whatever, then I would say like, we'll do the giveaway first thing on Thursday on the live show. But that was back with the old setup when like giveaways took quite a bit longer because I played like the videos before and after and all the stuff and everything. So the giveaways now that with how I did it last night and tonight, it's, it's actually really fast. So I think I'll probably just leave it. So if we get over 10 subs or whatever and production streams, I'll, I'll take a quick break and we'll do giveaways and stuff. I was just thinking I, if I was like in the middle of a flow or something like that, I didn't want to like break that flow. But tonight it was like, it was super fast and easy. So I think that we'll probably just continue that. So that's, the only thing the only thing that'll really change is I'll probably be more kind of in the zone and focused. So that's just kind of like one of the things to be, I don't know, that'll just kind of be like how the production streams go. But then of course, if there's any, like basically what I mean, I guess I should give a little context for that. What I mean is like, I probably, I'm, I'm going to try to refrain from like going into like tangents and stuff like that. Because what has happened in the past is I'll be doing production and then somebody will have a question or an inquiry about anything, whatever. And then I'll not only answer that question, but sometimes that gets me thinking. And then I start going off on a tangent about something for like 20 minutes. And then I've totally like lost what I was even doing. And like, it's fine. It's not a big deal, but it's like, I just totally get off on, off the rails for like 20 minutes, like thinking about something and talking about something, which like I said, it's fine. And sometimes it's really interesting and fun or whatever, but I'm going to try to really try to lock in and stay focused on production. And so if there are any questions that come up or anything like that, then I would be happy to like just keep it on the back burner and then in the next Q and a or whatever, then we can go way deep into anything really about any of that, any of that stuff via production or the hardware or setup or anything like that. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with that is that I want to, for the production streams, really try to stay focused and not really go off on too many tangents and uh, get too distracted. Cause that's kind of really the only one thing I love producing live. I love making the music live. I love having community involvement and I love having interaction during production and stuff like that. And that's not something that I would want to stop, but it's more the idea of like, I mean, there have been times in the past where I just, I just like get completely off the rails and it's my own doing, it's my own fault. I'm not blaming it on anybody but myself, but that's kind of what happens. So just that's where I'm coming from on that. It's like, I'm going to really try to stay really locked in. So if you have any questions or something like that, and I don't go too deep into it, uh, definitely don't take it personally and just come back and, for the Q and A or whatever, and just to ask again if I've forgotten or whatever, and I'd be happy to go into that stuff and all that jazz. But the thing is, the deal. What's up, fake? How's it going? Uh, would it be better to do giveaways on the hour of of the hours you pass ten subs, so people will kind of know when to focus their power on winning more, and you don't have to worry about it right then or something like that? That might be an idea. I'll have to think about that. That's not a bad idea. I'll think about that.
that's something to think about. My my immediate reaction is probably just going with the flow is probably the way I'll go with it just because it does seem the most natural rather than trying to schedule something. Because that's the thing I, I do want to try to avoid is like making anything set in stone. But I'll let's try let's try just going with what we've been doing, and then if that feels strange, then that is a, that is an interesting idea that we might want to try. That's a good idea. Yeah, we'll feel it out. We'll feel it out. We'll see how it goes. But but possibly. Uh, what what's the font on the strip at the bottom? Uh, that's Bebus Bebus uh, Nuriero. I think. Yeah, skeletons, right? Bebus Nuriero, Nuriero, something like that. Right on stage, yeah. Right on, Arcadius. Right on, right on. Three hours on that astronomy app? Are you talking about Space Engine? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I was giving, I was giving a presentation on uh, our, our galaxial neighborhood. I was showing everybody where our galax, galaxy is in relation to the other galaxies in the galaxial neighborhood. <laughs> so yeah um but yeah i mean was there anything else i don't think so hey thanks for hanging out tonight this is fun i'm i'm really glad we did this and I'm, and I'm glad to start doing this where having like one night a week of just like hanging out that's awesome it was super 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 fun um next week i'm thinking so we we kind of went over cams and maybe next week i will put this i think i will put this on youtube just for uh what's the word perpetuity sake anyway but uh i think maybe next week maybe i'll do like a quick recap posterity thank you swish gosh uh i think i'll do maybe like since tonight was so <laughs> discombobulated i'll probably do like a quick recap on the cams and then maybe go into maybe go into the maybe do dmx lighting because I'm trying to think how to keep stuff as separate as possible until we get into like how everything comes together. And if I talk about the audio stuff next week, we're already going to be getting kind of deep into how stuff all connects to each other. And so probably the lighting stuff is probably a good thing to go over. And that's not too crazy. That feels like it should just be about 30 minutes. So it'll probably only end up being like six hours as opposed to like 27 hours or something like that. So yeah, we'll do lighting next Sunday. How about that? Let's plan on that. Uh, today's the 14th. That's the 21st. Okay, cool. Yeah. Or wait, that'll be the 20th or whatever. It'll be something around there. So we'll do that, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be the next Q&A, a week from, a week from what was this Sunday evening. So if you want to hang out for that, or if, or if any questions come up this week that you're interested in knowing the, the things and the deals with, then definitely come by the Q&A, and we'll, we'll talk about that there. And as far as next stream, that'll be uh, tomorrow night, so Tuesday night. I'm going to be getting on, and we're going to be going start, starting to go with production again. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we're back to like Thursday, Friday, Saturday live shows. I was going to say, let's see how tomorrow and Wednesday go, because I definitely want to do production tomorrow night and Wednesday night. There, I, I don't think this will happen. It's certainly possible that Tuesday and Wednesday could, could go so incredibly well that I feel like I just have to keep working on it on Thursday. That's possible. I don't want to say that that's not possible. However, my intention is to get back on the regular schedule of like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I want to leave the option of Thursdays Thursdays might be production nights. That might end up happening, and maybe Fridays and Saturdays will be live shows. We'll, we'll play it by ear, but I think the intention right now is to go back to Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, doing the live shows just like regular, and then uh, producing in the weekdays other than that. I don't want to burn out. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, and so if we're doing Q&As on Sunday and I'm taking Mondays off, that only gives us Tuesday and Wednesday for production, and that just feels on the face of it like it's not enough in a week. It may be, though. So I don't know. We'll see. But it may end up that we are doing Q&As on Sundays, maybe doing taking Mondays off, and then doing like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday production, Friday, Saturday live shows. That feels like it could become a realistic uh, midterm schedule, at least for the next like month or month and a half or two months or something until I get this project done. And then 
uh, and then we'll go back into like regular shows and maybe I'll do a couple weeks of gaming or something like that. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself. That's that's weeks and weeks down the road. But basically, the the goal for now is for sure Friday and Saturday we're definitely doing live shows for sure. That's just a given. And then Thursday will be optional for live show or production, one of the two. And then tomorrow we'll start with production and continue that into Wednesday, and uh, and see how it goes from there. But I am I'm so hyped. I, I'm so hyped to get get going on uh, making some new jams. I mean. I haven't wanted to make new music this bad in a, in a long time. And I don't know where it's going to go. I have no idea what this album's going to sound like. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea. I do know that something's going to happen, though. It has to. It has to. We have to move. We have to go. Uh, all right. Anyway, I never know how to end these. So just, hey, thanks. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I really appreciate you guys hanging out, being part of the community. You, you guys are so awesome. This has been so awesome. I don't know why I just started the giveaway song. Whatever. I guess let's do a giveaway. Screw it. Computer, it's giveaway time. Computer, it's giveaway time. That was pretty anticlimactic. Is it still not started? Start again, giveaway song. Watch. Okay, that wasn't awkward at all. Awkward. Aquo. Aquo. That's great. Yeah, for sure. It can't get any more awkward than that. All right, anyway, let's do it. Let's do a, a giveaway, giveaway to end the night out. Definitely uh, type in Aquo if you went in on it. Circles, high poem, hope, high fire, album unknown, fine, piano feels volume two or three is what's on the docket. If you win, you'll be able to choose any one of those. It'll be signed, shipped anywhere in the world. Hey, while you're getting in on that, let's, uh, let me take a quick look at, uh, what we got going on here. Let's go raid somebody, huh? Thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. This is, this is really fun. I, I didn't know how the Q&A thing was going to go. Who knows? It's the first time I've done anything like this, and it was awesome. It was a really, really good time. Thanks for hanging out. You had some really, really great questions, and it was really fun to kind of go over some of the, some of the stuff that we do here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we got to get back. We got to get back to the OG raid. We got to raid this dude, man. Oh, yeah. Why isn't it muting? That's weird. It's like broken. Okay, there we go. It's muted now. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to go there. And ready to do this. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. Computer award. winner is congratulations to White Quill you just won yourself a signed copy of a CD of your choice shipped anywhere in the world congratulations White Quill can't win if you don't play can't play if you're not here so thanks for being here and congratulations let's see um I don't know if I typed something wrong hold on it looks like I typed it right so if you don't get this right now, let me know. If you did get it, let me know. If you didn't, if you did, I did send it, so let me know. I wonder if I can click your name and hit whisper. I can't. That's weird. Uh, if you didn't get it, just hit me with a whisper, and then I will send it to you that way. think you should have got but if not let me know you don't think so all right well hit me with a whisper and then i'll reply with it anyway uh let's uh all right let me just go back to this thing with the deal there where's the thing with the stuff it's right oh it's yeah it's right there and this i remember how to do this there it is hey what's up ninja you you're in perfect time to raid athos we're gonna go raid athos right now Wait, no, we're not rating Athos. We rated Athos last night. We're rating Stratus B. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, thank you all so, so very much for hanging out tonight. Uh, 
I will be on Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Um, I would like to be on earlier than 9 p.m. I think I will be, though, because the setup is not nearly as uh, entailed as setting everything up like I do for these streams. So we should be on before 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Hey, uh, the Discord. If you want to hang out in the Discord, come on by. I'll, I'll be announcing stuff there as well. Here's the Discord link. That should still work. I tested it yesterday. But uh, other than that, you can always go to the store if you want to pick up physicals. We got the band camp where I think pretty much all the stuff is on digital there. And then, of course, there's all your uh, favorite digital distributors has all the things with the deals. There's the Twitter link if you want to follow any of that. But Discord is definitely the place if you want to hang out with the community. And, uh, yeah, I'll be back on Tuesday night. And uh, I hope to see you there. A physical of circles? It's there. It's there. It's there. Hey, have a great night. Have a great day. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, whatever's happening, whatever's going down. Always remember, never be afraid. Yeah.